This should be good. Yes. Should I turn on image descriptions? Yes? Audio captions? Yes. Turn off screen shake? I'm... No. Contains death, violent content, and animal cruelty. And suicide, and suicide from tall place. I'm not a fan of the... Of the animal cruelty one, but okay, sure. I really don't like the sound of that. Okay. Okay, hold on. Um... Uh, text box. Ah, oh, should be good. No, I actually like this more. Text speed, max, yeah. Nope. Nope. Absolutely not. Uh, what is this? No, I'll keep it there. Typeface, Alice, hyperlegible, open dyslexic. Nah, just keep it as Alice. And audio. Okay, um, cool, no extras, all right, let's just start. I descended through a starry sky, my long blonde hair and red cape flew Wildly as I looked to the ground below me with my blue eyes Falling falling falling. I was falling Down this rabbit hole with no start nor end. I was falling Where had I gone? Where could I go? As if I were forgetting something important. I fell down Down and down through a sparkling shining darkness too bright to be dark too dark to be bright I must have been chasing after someone, after something. After someone, after something. Okay. Like a girl whose curiosity was piqued by a rabbit with a watch. I was falling, 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 down, 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 again, again, again. Okay, we get it, alright? You don't need to repeat yourself. Just, just, just talk like a normal human being, goddammit. This endless, well, this endless, well seemed to lead everywhere yet nowhere at once. Either the hole extended very deep, or I descended very slowly. I was truly, wait, was I truly going downward? Perhaps this was all a dream, a fever dream. Or, in more words, a fantasy that would be soon forgotten as it, as it was had. Yet, just one certainty. I was Alice. Alice was me. Now then, just how long was I supposed to keep falling? The air ambushed past my fingers, my cloak ruffling upwards. A quiet humming breeze caressed my neck. As if I could hear someone's voice. A pleasant voice. A woman's voice. I strained my ears for whispers in the wind. Alice, 
What a time for madness. Without a bit of fear or vertigo. Should you not have focused on topics more pressing? Like the darkness or the light? Or how you couldn't awake from the stream? But even now, you were just falling, falling, falling. What does it matter? With a thump, thump, I came upon soft grass, and the fall was over. Not a bit hurt. I forced, I forced myself to, I forced myself to my feet. Up above my head, the firmament whence I fell had not a tear in its blue canvas. Down about my eyes, only familiar, unfamiliar surrounded me. Oh my god, can this bitch start talking like a normal human being? Like, I swear to god, it's getting really annoying. I started on an exploratory stroll. Soon I stumbled upon a rabbit who looked like a girl, or a girl who looked like a rabbit. Perhaps, the correct answer was she was both a girl and a rabbit. She had white hair and, a f and floppy rabbit ears, pale skin and purple eyes. Her hair, her hair was tied, tied into two low ponytails by white, ri by white ribbons, a clock pin adorning her bangs. Kind of like Ame. She wore gloves, an oversized blue coat with golden accents and a red vest over a dress t sh over a dress shirt tied with black ribbon you know i have eyes you don't need to describe her she also had cocky pants tucked into boots she looked quite scared as she stood in the forest clearing she was even holding her hands to her chest not lingering much longer on the species of the rabbit of the rabbit before me, I called out to her. Excuse me. Calling out to her caused her to jump. Where was this place? Why was I here? How could I leave to return home? I thought of what to ask her, but she recognized me as soon as I spoke, so my questions were lost in my mouth and asked. She looked at me with troubled eyes. Alice? By a rabbit? Have you seen her majesty? Do you know where she's gone? Where she could go? Her majesty, the Red Queen. She must be taking a vacation of sorts. I only wish that she could have left this rabbit a note. This little rabbit a note. I'm in a bit of a panic, you see. The land can run without its queen. Then... She took on a distracted look. Please let me know if you catch sight of her. I nodded. Who is this? Who this Red Queen was, I had not a clue but a tingling deja vu. Still, my acceptance of the request let the White Rabbit breathe out a sigh of relief. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, what was this game called? Who is the Red Queen? Okay, um, I just realized. Okay. Just as I prepared to uh, pose my own questions, she straightened back in surprise. I'm afraid I have to go, I'm going to be late. The white rabbit dashed off. I wanted to ask some questions, never mind that, follow her, Alice. Although I chased after her with only a moment's pause, when I turned the corner, she was nowhere to be seen. There was only a forest path before me. I found myself in a garden meticulously kept. I'm already, like, getting tired of this. There was a large white 
gazebo in the center with a table and chairs for tea. Tailing the rabbit, I barely dashed a few pa a few paces. I hadn't realized such a place was so close by. Rather, I hadn't realized I had run this far. A conjecture tickled my mind that this world I fell into was a magical place. One with paths that pointed to one way but twisted to another. What an explanation. Much more far-fetched than me just not knowing where I was running. I took a moment to catch my breath. Glancing around, I began to walk about I began to walk about the garden. Flowers and greenery all around, but not a person in sight. This place was beautiful. I wanted to meet the person who made it. Not quite a gardening person myself. I still appreciated a pretty place and felt swelling excitement to explore what sights could be seen. A reminder of reality when then dampened my joyful curiosity. I wanted some answers, a way out and back home. As pleasant as dreams were, one had to be able to awaken from them before they turned into nightmares. Whether this was a dream or reality had still yet to be seen. Step, step. I walked around, hop, hop. I peered over the bushes. Soon enough, I discovered the heart of the garden where one might sit for tea. I spotted a white haired girl in the garden. To amend my previous thoughts, wouldn't it be right to say that I rather also. that I rather also appreciated a pretty person? Her hair was long and reached, her shoulders, her skin pale. Wait, her hair was long and reached her shoulders, there we go, that's better. Her skin pale, and her eyes are light purple. She was also adorned with regal blue and white dresses that was so long it hid her feet. Her expression, her expression was quite distant and calm. I noticed bandages wrapped upon her right hand which was gently collapsed over her left in front of her. Brevilous thoughts flew from my mind as our eyes met. Her gaze seemed to beckon me over. So over I went to speak with her. She opened her mouth to speak. Are you enjoying the garden? The garden is beautiful. The gardener will be happy to hear that from you. However, if you have however, if you have come here now, we should be searching for something. We should first introduce herself. She gave me a sad smile. I am the White Queen. Just like with the rabbit, for reasons unclear to me, I already knew who she was. Here, that should be as good as a name. Your Majesty, my name is Alice, she frowned. Don't stand on ceremony, Alice. I'm not someone you need to speak with particularly with particular Uh I'm I am not someone you need to speak per with particular respect. Is is that more correct? I don't think that was right. Welcome to my garden in Wonderland. That sad smile returned to her face. Wonderland. I tasted the word on my tongue. I... I can't remember why or how I'm here. Not this garden, but Wonderland. Once again, she frowned. I was falling, 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 and I couldn't remember why I was falling. I was simply falling, 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 falling until I fell no more. I'm sure I've forgotten something very important. That pain smile return. You didn't. You needn't force force yourself to remember. Some things are better left forgotten. Perhaps it was fated for you to come here. Perhaps something is missing that you must find. This world must appear appear like a place of dreams. You should find the Red Queen. 
The missing queen whom the white rabbit mentioned was the red queen. How long is this game? Depending on the length, I might just stop here because fucking hell. I'm getting tired already. <laughs> and then... It's three hours. It's three hours. I... I might, like, separate it then. Because I can finish it all, but I kind of don't want to. The missing queen, whom the white rabbit mentioned, was the red queen. Then came a troubled look. I waited for the white queen to continue. She hesitated to speak of the red queen as if the elusive royal would appear like a ghost behind her as she, as she spoke. I tried to imagine what sort, what sort of red person... Oh my god. I tried to imagine what sort of person the red queen was. She... She will let you return to your own reality. When you meet her... You should be able to find all of the answers you are seeking for. As for where she is, that is for you to discover. Do you dislike her? At first she pot she pursed her lips as if troubled again. Then came that same somber smile. That's a difficult question, Alice. So she's like that, hmm? I'll let you judge the Red Queen. You might learn something new about yourself. Shall I head off to find her now? Her face lit up lit up a bit. Why not stay for some tea? I feel like the twist is that we're the Red Queen, but that's kind of too obvious. But I feel like that's exactly what it is. Of course, I'd love to, but it's not quite afternoon tea time yet. She smiled, this time much happier. Speaking of tea, I should probably fill my cup. A later time then. <laughs> Certainly to have tea outside of tea time, wouldn't you? That smile softened to a fond one as she lowered her lids. I won't keep you for too much longer, Alice. I'm sure you will be able to find that person soon enough. Until later. Later. I waved goodbye to the White Queen and departed from her garden. Glancing back, I saw her gaze linger upon me. That, sm that poor smile of hers turned somber again. I stepped in onto a twisting path in the forest. I didn't know which way to go until the elusive Red Queen... To find the elusive Red Queen turning left and right. To find the Queen, I thought to, see the to seek a castle. However, the rabbit said that the queen was missing, so unless the rabbit had also forgotten something very important, the queen shouldn't have been at the castle. The red queen. She seemed like a troubling person. The way the white queen's face froze, tongue stuttering along, at the topic of the red queen made me wonder... Was the latter queen a tyrant or a fool? The tutor at home liked to talk about kingship of sorts. To me, either or neither were fine. After all, who were the peasantry to affect the mood of a high, high queen? I hummed and walked along with a skip in my step. Just as I reached the rhythm in my stride, I kicked, I kicked a little something. An animal? That threw me off my beat. I slowed to applaud. My mood, a note dampered. Oh my god, this is giving me a headache. Soon, I heard the chatter of a girl a few trees away. Seeing not much civilization here in the forest, I followed the voice of the girl. Although she was chattering, I heard a voice alone. I passed by a few bushes. 
and soon enough I found a tea party in the middle of nowhere. Uh, at a table set before a tree sat the girl. The white cloth table was, liter was littered with all sorts of tea time things. From a tower with cookies and cupcakes, a rubber duck, and a cake with knives in it. Pictures with dozens of tea tags and stacks of dishes. In the center, they even laid a green vase with a dead plucked, plucked apart red rose beside it. Some petals sat in the water. The girl had long pink hair with uneven side bangs. Pale skin, first eye red and second yellow. A smile was on her features that contrasted with her eye bangs. Her outfit was just as chaotic as the table. Under her black trench coat was a loose dress shirt tied, uh, tied with a large purple ribbon. She also wore a checkerboard, checkerboard purple pants and white lace-up shoes. On her gloved hands sat two hand puppets. A white hair with a yellow straw hat, like Luffy, and a red bow tie. And a grey dormouse with a little pink flower perched by her ear. The most glaring of all was her large, large black top hat, wrapped haphazardly in purple ribbons with a piece of paper ta tape to it. Hello there, Alice. What did you come here for? Her chatter ceased. Her mismatched eyes pierced through me in its place. I need to make tea. My fucking throat is hurting so bad. And like, this, like, language isn't helping. Hey, thanks for su <coughs> Sorry. Thanks for subscribing, uh... I'll just call you Mythos. Thank you for the sub. I... I I'm taking... A, I, I'm just not really... Uh... I, I'm making tea. My throat hurts, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Reading too much really fucked me up. But yeah, thank you for the sub. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'll be right back. Just... Really quick, gotta go and drink.
So I may have burned myself making tea. And I also may have made way too much tea. That might be a problem. Because I can't get it over here. But I also can't drink it because it's way too hot and my tongue burns. Um, well shit. I'll think of something, I'll be right back. Oh my god, that was painful. Ah. Just holding the fucking mug burned my fucking finger. Oh my god. Alright, let me put my hand in the fridge real quick. Anyway, back to the game, finally. Okay. Her chatter ceased. Her mismatched eyes pierced through me in its peace. I noticed a little fang in her mouth as she opened it. There's no room here at the table, so don't take a seat. No room, no room. The girl gave a wide grin as she was... As she was wont, as she was wont to do frequently. In fact, it was rare the smile was wiped off. It was rare the smile was wiped off her face. She moved her, the puppets on her hand, a sleepy mouse in the matched hair. Looking right to the left, I could barely see the ends of the table set for tea. One person in such a large space. Conversely, she almost seemed lonely. There's plenty of room, Hatter. Her smile shrunk a bit. To make my point, I took a seat in the large armchair. Across from the Hatter, the chair stunk of flowers, as if to clear away the shadow of an unpleasant previous sitter. 
I sank back into it com comfortably. Then I kept sinking, sinking, sinking before I joined, before I jolted back up with a shallow gasp. There's plenty of crowd. That's rude of you to say. Oh wait, three's plenty of crowd. That's rude of you to say, Alice. Not very civil of you to sit down without being without being invited either. She granted me a cheeky grin and a wink. But whatever. Let's just treat you as our extra guest for tomorrow. Not today. Aren't they the same? Yesterday, today, tomorrow, every day is never a day different. But since I'd rather not deal with it today, we just treat it as for tomorrow. Dormouse and March don't mind. You mentioned three, but I only see one. She wiggled the puppets on her hand as if to explain everything. One was herself, two was the first puppet, three was the second puppet. I'm scared Alice might be blind. Her mad smile became a mad grin once more. <laughs> That's a side effect of being Alice. Don't worry. Don't worry, it's just a side effect of being Alice. She sneered. The pitch of her voice warped. Don't mind the comments. She is Dormouse. And he... And he's March Hare. She paused as if waiting for me to greet the animal puppets. I waited. She waited. Her smile did not falter. In fact, it only widened in anticipation. The silence of the conversation bored me, so I relented to the Mad Hatter. Uh, to the Mad... Mad Hatter's wordless request. I was their guest for tomorrow, so a polite guest I decided to be. Well, hello there. Her smile became ordinary again. I was scared she was deaf as well. Hello there, Alice. It seemed whenever she made the puppets talk, she often took a more neutral expression and kept her mouth closed like a ventriloquist. Between the puppets, I much preferred the dormouse. If a puppet could fall asleep, she looked at she looks she looked as if she was about to do so. I felt some pity, as that meant the March Hare would speak more. What were we talking about before? A riddle? Maybe it was this one? Why is a raven Why is a raven like a writing desk? Do you have an answer to that riddle? You're no fun, Alice. Relax and have some wine. There is no wine. You were invited for tea tomorrow. Uh, you were invited for tea tomorrow, Alice. It's the obligation of the host to offer a guest a drink at tea time. Maybe she was an alcoholic. Hatter, I can't, I can't in good faith call this time of day tea time. Nor can I call it alcohol tea. Details, details. Add some butter! It'll be tea time eventually, so it's tea time now. We're having tea. So, it might as well be tea time, don't you think? I mean, it's been tea time for like the whole night, so like, yeah. What did you come here for anyways? Although I couldn't quite say that I had come to this tea party with a goal in mind, I figured I might as well tell her. I'm searching for the Red Queen. Her brow contorted as she took a sip of her tea. Puppet sat down just for that moment. Dumping the tea away and rinsing the cup, she poured herself another drink. Her mismatched eyes narrowed. Oh, her. The Hatter placed her lips to the rim of her teacup 
and stared at me. A minute passed, all 60 seconds consisting of staring before. She ducked down under the table as if to find an item and, and popped back up again. Her, <coughs> Her expression was back to its usual state. Stay and chat for a moment. I'll help you with a little something regarding Her Majesty. I swear, whenever I talk, like, my nose gets stuffy, but, like, not, like, not like in the usual sense. It gets stuffy, like, right in between, like, where my nose and mouth is. <laughs> the Hatter poured me a cup of tea and slid over a plate of sandwiches. The Hatter's smile became wide. The plate hurtled toward me, forcing me to hurriedly grab... Uh, hurriedly grab it, lest sandwiches spilled all over my lap. What? Luckily, the cup of tea arrived much more calmly. I took a taste, finding Earl Grey. Is it tomorrow already? At the very least, it wasn't time for afternoon tea. If I had known I would have tea now, I would have stayed a little longer to have some with the White Queen as well. It was not that people couldn't have tea outside of afternoon tea, but it was a principle of things. If people drank tea, anytime, drank tea at any time of day, they would drink it all day. I mean, that's what I'm doing. Because my throat fucking hurts. Especially with you talking like a fucking... Who knows? I sip some more, enjoying the citrusy flavor of this, of this black tea. Today is tomorrow for yesterday, don't you think? Unless she doesn't think. That would have been rude of you to ask. She's just normal. Oh, thank you for the sub. Uh, L Raider. L Raider 129. How, how are you doing? Thank you for the sub. Uh, orthogonal? I'm certainly si sitting up quite straight. Oh, I'm not. But regarding the, the Red Queen, do you have some news about her? I'd say I have some business with her instead. Something to do with... Meat and flesh. And all other red things that a Red Queen might have to do with. Aren't you a hatter? She grinned widely. Yes? Not a butcher. Unless your meat is made out of a hat. While talking about things unappetizing, I took a bite of a sandwich filled with filled with an ambiguous color. <sighs> a milky sweetness melted in my mouth. I tasted some sort of fruit inside. Maybe it was mango or kiwi or strawberry. Satisfied with the pleasant sweetness, I took another sip of tea. This tea and these sandwiches are delicious. Thank you, Alice. You made them? Compliments to you, then. The Hatter grinned with a wink. Wow, such flattery. Since you put me in a good mood, I guess we can go ahead with Her Majesty's matter. She smiled as if laughing. In fact... She's been sitting here with us the whole time. I sat up. I sat up, even straighter in confusion, glancing around. I saw no queens in sight. Not a human, nor. Not a human, nor animal besides the two of us here. The Hatter rolled a chair over and pulled a cloth off from over the chair's holding. 
Tada! Oh, nausea ran up my spine. On the chair sat a chunk of meat dressed up in tattered human clothes. Still dripping red, the flesh seemed to ripple. Undulating, whatever the fuck that means. Was it rotting? Or was it still alive? My head spun as I squinted at the thing. This meat. No. This thing resembles a human torso. With half a neck and chopped off limbs. Dolled up with what could have been fancy clothes. This was surely human flesh. I sense an odd familiarity to the torso. But also felt as if I was looking at it from an incorrect angle. This was the torso of a regal woman. This was raw human flesh. Is this the Red Queen? The Hatter's eyes narrowed again, brows furrowed but still smiling. An inappropriate question filtered, flitted across my mind. Could we consider it as sitting if it didn't have legs? I suppose yes. I thought you said you weren't a butcher, Hatter. We definitely couldn't consider this a hat. Having just eaten, the strawberry taste in my mouth turned to a meaty texture, like raw pork. I could almost taste the sweet, rotten fat. I swallowed. Her expression returned to normal. I wondered if the Hatter wanted, me wanted to make me sick. The Hatter gave a wide smile. Yes, I'm a Hatter. I closed my eyes and rubbed the bridge off my nose. Too distracted by the surprise. The feeling of my fingers almost felt like wet ground meat, even though I was sure that my digits were still attached to my palm. The image lingered uncomfortably behind my eyelids, not with disgust, but with another inexplic inexplicable emotion, a negative one for sure. I looked at the torso again and it seemed so still. I saw exposed bone and shattered uh, trachea. The cut must not have been well, must not have been wholly clean. Made of a blade sharpened not quite enough, yet also dulled not quite enough. Yes, this was the Red Queen. I knew, I knew not why I knew, but a voice in the back of my head told me that this was the Red Queen, a part of the Red Queen. I'm afraid Her Majesty can't speak right now. The Hatter steered her tea and popped a bite-sized sandwich into her mouth, munching happily. She sneered. <laughs> Don't look like that, Alice. The Hatter doesn't... The Hatter didn't dismember her majesty. Yes, yes, Hatter is innocent. Since only the Hatter spoke up in defense of herself, I wasn't particularly inclined to believe her. But whether or not she did kill the Red Queen, the end result sat before me. What should I do now? I murdered. I murmured my uncertainty at this dead end aloud. She smiled as if nothing was wrong. What do you mean? All you have to do is find uh, all of the other pieces. If you have anything you need her majesty for. If there's anything you need her majesty for, all you need to do is put her back together. Have you forgotten, Alice? That sounded mad. So mad I wanted to laugh. This is Wonderland after all. All I need to do was find the pieces. That was right, Alice. 
That was all you needed to do. It would either be terribly simple or terribly hard. I hope that no one had fed the Red Queen to the pigs or minced her up for a patty. Regardless, all I really needed was a head and a torso. And a torso if I wanted to talk to her. To at least to at least ask her about the secrets of returning home. May I take the body with me? The hatter narrowed her eyes. Alice? Alice, you were a civilized girl. Did you really want to lug around a piece of meat like you were some meat seller selling to cannibals? The hatter winked cheekily. No, no, no. That wouldn't be fair, don't you think? Once you find most of her parts, let's just say the limbs, I'll give you a special present and help you out again. She patted the box off to the side, off to the side of the table. The box was just big enough for a cat or a cake or maybe something like a hat. Of course, don't peek or try to find out what the present is. It wouldn't be a surprise like that. And I'll be very, very upset if you cheat. <sighs> With that smile on her face, I couldn't see her upset. Only modeled sincerity came through her voice. The Hatter mismatched eyes wondered, looking distracted as she did so. Now then, I've got to grab something off the stove before it burns. Wait. Okay, I thought I was muted. <laughs> the Hatter got up from her seat and walked away. Here I was alone with the Red Queen's flesh. And it was messing all four limbs and head. So to make her whole, I would need to find five parts. I hoped that my search would be easy. Seeing the Hatter was nowhere in sight, I contemplated the decision regarding that curious box on the table. Sneak around and peek, listen to the Hatter. Uh, let me save first. Quick save. Sneak around and peek. I tiptoed over to the other side of the table and surveyed what was around. I couldn't help but feel that headless slab of human watching me, but I ignored the Red Queen's body, knowing that I would be seeing it often enough. Looking over my shoulder, I ascertained that the Hatter had yet to return. I moved to find the present box on the cluttered table. The Hatter hadn't tied the box particularly at all. I could open it and close it as if I had never disturbed this mysterious price to begin with. I crack, I crack open a small gap so nothing could come flying out. It's gonna be her head. Nothing escaped from the box. Instead, I hear a strange strangled noise from whatever light inside. A gurgling, drowning voice that caused chills to settle on the back of my neck. In one go, I took the lid off the box. Inside was a head. A bloodied head. The head seemed so familiar, but I couldn't quite make out the face as if the box had been jostled. The hair had become so mat matted with blood. The exact hue of its light hair color was difficult to make heads or tails of. I squinted. Jump scare warning. Spinning. The world was spinning. A sharp pain burst through my temple. And I rested the palm on my head to stop a growing pulsing headache in my skull. I reached out a shaking hand to adjust the, the head in the box. 
Step, step, step. Footsteps interrupted me. I thought I only just said not to peek, Alice. The Hatter brandished a hammer in her in her hand. The head and face a glowing a glowing red as if it had been left on the stove. Cheaters get what cheaters deserve. I backed up, crashing into the table, nearly tripping on my own cloak. She raised her arm with the hammer in hand and crack. Dead end. Well, I guess I got a script scene 9%. Wow, I really don't care about seeing the other 91%. Blood. Listen to the Hatter. I shook my head. Instead of antagonizing the Hatter needlessly, I decided to take another sip of tea. I would see what was inside the box eventually. The Hatter returned soon enough. Her puppets were absent. Rather, in her hand was a hammer glowing bright with heat. She chucked it to the side with a thump and let the metal sizzle on the ground. What was the hammer for? She grinned. Does a hammer need a reason to be? I mean, <laughs> now I know what the hammer is for. Anyways, go ahead and try to find some of the Red Queen's body. An arm. Some of the Red Queen's body. An arm? A head? Or maybe two? I just... Just bring them back here for me to attach to this. She pointed to the torso. I mean, now we know she has the head. So we just need to find the arm somewhere. It'll still be tea time when you come back. Let's just count on you as, ex as an extra guest for... The next tomorrow as well. To be exact with time, now was not tea time. I suppose there's not much, there's not much else to do here. <laughs> the header's expression dampened, da dampened a bit as I responded. I looked at my empty, empty cup of Earl Grey and lifted myself up from the armchair. For what it was worth, I quite enjoyed this odd hour, this odd hour tea. Shaking my legs just to make sure they hadn't fallen asleep, I started to leave. Until later. Oh, I'm not even gonna say that. She leaned back into her chair and made a lazy wave my way. Somehow she looked lonely. Okay, I am. I'm just gonna save here and I'm gonna. Yes, I want to overwrite. Because there's no need to. So I don't need it anymore. I'm just gonna save it for another time. I guess I can save it for like a later stream. Like, because I. I mean. Not, not like there will be much I can do. I mean. That first part, I'm gonna say. Kind of sucked. <laughs> Maybe it gets better though. Because I, I, I was kind of intrigued by the whole like torso and head thing. So. I have faith that it does get better. I I have a feeling it does. Warning, I'm aware. I think I already went through all of these uh, load. Alright, so last time what I cannot hear the game. Wow, I really need to crank that boy up. That should be fine. I returned to another forest path, walking forward and forward. After moving for a while, I realized that I had no idea where I was going. In simpler words, I was lost. I walked around in a few circles before looking upward. Above I saw a cat. Well, that's not what I was expecting. A cat who resembled... 
Uh, a cat who resembled a girl, or a girl who resembled a cat, leisurely stood on the tall branch of a tree. She had a, a sharp green... She had a sharp green-yellow eyes, pale skin, a cat-like smile. Pale skin, a cat-like smile. Her brown hair was tied into a ponytail with an orange ribbon. Her two cat ears on top of her head look, looking quite fluffy. She wore an orange cape with three black stripes and a fluffy white collar. Wait, oh my god. You know what I just realized? It's almost 4 a.m. I know this is sounding like the same joke I already made, but this is not a joke. When the fuck did it get to 3 a.m.? I didn't even know it was 1 a.m., let alone 3. Anyway. She wore an orange cape with three black stripes and a fluffy white collar. A fluffy white collar with a tattered short black dress underneath. You know... I have eyes, you don't need to give me a description. Adorned around her neck was a collar with a bell. Her one visible arm had a shackle around the wrist for her clawed hands. There appeared to be something like stitches at the point at the point where arm and shoulder are connected. Unlike the white rabbit, this cat, the Chesh, Ch how do I say this again? Chesh, Cheshire. The Cheshire cat. I couldn't help but wonder if she was actually neither a cat nor a girl, and was just pretending to be either. I met her cat eyes nodding in silent greeting. Her grin stretched across her face as she started right back. As she stared right back. Sharp teeth filled her mouth and claws adorned. Sharp teeth filled her mouth and claws adorned her hands. What? This was... This was probably a cat. Cheshire. The flame that was her tail flick. Wait, why is her tail a flame? The flame that was her tail flickered, as she ho and she hopped down to meet me closer. I don't suppose you'd tell me which way I should go. Her eyes narrowed in amusement. I posed a silly question that I expected no answer for. After all, I was asking a cat for directions. Depends on where you want to go. To my surprise, I receive a response. To find the Red Queen. Ah, the crazy one. Are you sure you prefer not to go with the nice one? The one I'm for the one I'm searching for is the Red Queen. Alright, the Mad Queen. Then again, we're all mad around here. That is, except for Her Majesty and the White. For Her Majesty the White Queen. She's too sad to be mad. If you're looking for the Red Queen. Up, up, down, down, left, right. Of course. You know, I don't think the Konami, the Konami code works in... Uh, in whatever era this is. The cat jeered. Self-awareness, Alice. Self-awareness. The Cheshire cat vanished into thin air. Soon enough, she reappeared. Just go to the White Queen instead. Maybe you'll find something on the way. I've already been to the White Queen. She started to fade away again before popping back. Hold on. Am I playing as somebody playing this game? Like... Like, these dialogues don't make any sense. And not, like... Like, there's no reason to... 
there's no real reason to have these these dialogues here. I forgot to ask, how's the Hatter doing? She seems to be fine. It's still tea time over there. Me he 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 he. It's always tea time with that one. A third time she disappeared. A third time she disappeared, leaving a, a grin lingering in the air. Before that too vanished. This was a grin without a cat instead of a cat without a grin. I don't... I didn't see... What? The third time was the charm. The cat did not return. I can't say I've seen a cat quite like that one. Then again, Cheshire wasn't really a cat. Walking up a few three lengths more, I mulled over the odd advice she gave. Go up, up, down, down, left, right. Find the White Queen. I'm gonna save. I think this kills me, so I'm gonna go up, up, down, down, left, right. I tried to remember just what the Cheshire Cat had said. Speaking the patterns of directions allowed to a beat. Up, up, down, down, left, right. I felt as if I had missed a few items. But that was all the cat had given. I backtracked to the position where I met the cat and followed the recommended directions. Soon enough, I found myself at a crossroad. I saw no limbs nor heads in sight. Left was labeled right. Right was labeled left. With wrongly written signboards, I chose at random on where to go next. Every few meters, I found a new signboard with its own quaintly marked arrow. Whether or not they led to the right place was another issue. I slowed my pace to read the signs and follow them along. Today is a rainy day. I didn't know which genius thought to put a forecast onto a wooden sign on the side of the road, but I followed the direction to go right regardless. The sky had not a drop of rain in sight. Warning, cliff ahead. As it happened, n neither was there a cliff ahead. Watch out for dragons. I looked for dragons, but the dragons did not arrive. I'm... Let me get a coke. My throat hurts. My throat is getting dry. Where's my headphones? There they are. Shameful. At some point, the text on the signs turned to insults. Fool. You, you don't even know who you are. Stop following these signs. How many of these will you read? All of them. I walked and walked and walked. At the end of the final sign is... At the end of the final sign in the chain, I reached the clearing in the forest where I spotted the white rabbit talking with a limb. She appeared a little frightened, or perhaps more concerned. Your Majesty. Your Majesty's left arm. Please. I blinked. Then I blinked again. Rubbing my eyes, I saw the same image. The white rabbit seemed just 
about to uh, prostrate herself to a living modern, to a living moving arm. <laughs> what? The arm, despite being an arm, no shit, had taken the higher position. The ground here is dirty. You needn't crawl here. You needn't crawl here. Shall I take you back to the palace? Or would you prefer to go to the garden to the garden or the courtroom? In fact, do you happen to know where her majesty is? The arm smacked the white rabbit. She frowned, brows furrowed. Although I silently observed the arm wait, although I suddenly observed, the arm noticed me and began to crawl over. One hand of grass at a time. One handful of grass at a time. God, this is so difficult to read. And I don't know if it's just the game text or if, it, if I'm just blind. It moved like a snake. Like a worm. Like a piece of flesh and bone. That wouldn't have been able to move. That wouldn't have been able to move. Its writhing struggle sent a shiver up my spine. The white rabbit looked scared. I didn't know if I should pick it up or kick it away. I did neither, and it reached my feet. The arm proceeded to climb up my leg, up my cloak, clinging like some sort of dirty parasite, making its slow way up until I pushed past my building. Until I pushed back my building disgust to hold it in my hand instead. The flesh felt cold in my palm. I sensed no heartbeat at the wrist. I mean, you can't feel a heartbeat if there's no heart to begin with. That seems like a no-brainer, girl. Alice, Her Majesty's arm seems to have taken a liking to you. If you find Her Majesty, please return the limb to her and tell her that her rabbit did her best. I pray she hasn't met any trouble. A limb coming off isn't an everyday occurrence. She made quite the understatement. Yes, of course. How did you know it was the Red Queen's arm? The rabbit took on a happy, excited expression. I would recognize Her Majesty's limbs anywhere. Do you admire her very much? Yes, of course. I respect Her Majesty very much. She united Wonderland into this ki into this kingdom and kept uh, peace with a watchful gaze on her criminal populace. Populace. She is a decisive ruler and holds a agreeable world view. Wait, I just realized I should probably. I keep forgetting to change the OBS chat window to to live chat instead of top chat. I don't know why it like it doesn't just have live chat to, by default like normal YouTube does, but I don't know. This should be her divine right to rule Wonderland. I've heard a cat like I've heard a cat call her mad. A dangerous expression flashed through the white rabbit's eyes for barely a second. Her smile quickly became a frown. The Cheshire Cat is a known problem. Is a known problem element here. A, a known problem element here. That's. Her expression became increasingly stressed. Um, if Her Majesty is mad, then such madness is, in essence, brilliance.
Although I may not always be fated to be favored, to be a favored courtier, to be an aide to her is my greatest honor. I cannot be White Rabbit without Her Majesty. Her smile returned. Yes, that should be how I view Her Majesty. I gave the rabbits. I gave the rabbits impromptu speech a short round of applause, balancing the detached arm in the crook of my elbow. The rabbit became flustered. She must also like you very much. All rulers had their dissidents and supporters. A certain man once said that a ruler was better feared than loved if she could not be if she could not be both. Oh, uh, hello everyone. Hey Ever, how you doing? Despite all that the white rabbit said, I knew I knew a little more about the Red Queen. The Red Queen is the ruler of all of all this land. What's your job, White Rabbit? Guess what? What? Yes, she is the highest ruler of Wonderland. I dealt with a little bit of everything. Administrative matters, legal matters, and the personal matters of important people. <laughs> Since we've met a few times, I could say that I'm important, couldn't I? Yu-Gi-Oh cards? Oh, nice. That's right, Alice. To my tepid jest, I received a response that made me pause. The white rabbit took out a watch and jumped in surprise upon looking at the time, quickly returning, uh, returning the watch to her pocket. Is it this time already? I'm afraid I must be off again. If that will be all, thank you, Alice. Hurriedly bowing a few times, she dashed off back to work. Bowing. I said bowing, like... Bowing. I, 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 I forgot the difference between the two, but now I remember it. Bowing. Having obtained one limb, I searched around for another. Before I knew it, the day passed. I looked towards the sky where the sun had begun to set. Letting out a yawn, I realized I needed a place to sleep. Uh, I think that's what it said. Can I check? History. Letting out a yawn, I realized I needed a place to sleep for the night. I thought back to the parties who had helped me on onto my adventure to gather the Red Queen's dis dismembered parts. Surely I could surely I could find one of them. I'm gonna save real quick. And Hatter. Which is the only option, but still. I headed back to the Hatter's place. Uh, where's my... The moonlight filtered through the trees and lit the table. The tea and cakes were all put away. As before, I found that... Um, as before, I found her at a table full of tea stuffs. She nursed a cup of tea and waved at me upon spotting me. Just in time for tea, Alice. From the sky, tea time should have already passed. Perhaps this was more like supper time. So, I only flashed her a smile without saying anything. I've returned with a limb. Congratulations. She grinned. I handed her the Red Queen's limb, which began to move upon entering the Hatter's hand. Holding it away from herself, she, the Hatter seemed to think... The Hatter seemed to think of what to do with it next. Sorry, I had to burp there. 
She kicked a dog cage out from under a chair. Clicking the metal hatch open, she tossed the limb into it and quickly flicked the cage shut again. The Hatter sneered. Excuse you? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> excuse me? No, excuse you! The Mad Hatter looks pretty fine. Hey, stop being horny. Sit down. It'd be a... I'd be a poor host if I didn't let you sit. <laughs> she kind of reminds me of Coyote from Hollow Life, a little bit. At least the, at least the hair. Yeah, and just the hair, really. <laughs> I plopped down into the armchair. This was my chair now. I glanced around. And found I didn't see the two uh, puppets that the Hatter wore on her hands earlier in the, earlier in the day. Uh, where are your friends? I just I gestured with my hands. Did you pass out on the floor again or no? No, not again. She looks crazy. Yeah. They're gone home for a bit. March lives all the way out there in a, in a house with ears. As for whose ears they are, I haven't a clue. Are you hungry for Rodan, Alice? No. If you say so, Alice. Oh, we're literally in a place called Wonderland. Are we are we just playing as Alice in Wonderland? Is that what's going on here? She poured me a cup of tea and slid the teacup and saucer over to me. Nearly spilling over my lap so soon after came another pl Oh my god. She poured a cup of tea and slid the tea cup and saucer over to me. Nearly spilling it over my lap. Soon after came another plate. There we go. On the plate was a steak and vegetables. For a brief moment, the Hatter appeared lonely. I should hope this isn't rodent, is it? You're legit just reading a version of Alice in Wonderland? Yeah. Pretty much. She winked with a grin. It's something else. The Hatter didn't continue, but glanced over at the Red Queen's flesh. My eyes followed the path of her gaze, not spotting any steak-sized slabs of meat sliced off from the torso of the Queen, I saw it. I let out a sigh. Her eyes were narrowed. Wait, what does this say? Currently playing Duel Links? Oh, it's because I forgot to change it. You're right. I for I was playing Duel Links for like for so long that I forgot I actually had something there. Wait. Uh, wait. Cool. There you go, fixed. Her eyes were narrowed. Taking a knife and fork, I cut the steak and moved a piece of my mouth. It tasted like beef. Compliments to the chef. She smiled. Why, thank you. We ate together for... We ate together. For I had her, her table manners with the fork and knives were impeccable. But each time, I thought to compliment them. She went and said something odd again. Now it's much better, yeah. The Hatter was a mystery to unravel. I don't have a place to stay for, for the night, so I wanted to ask 
if you would put up with me for the night. I put up with you all the time. What's, what difference does it make? What difference does night make? Where I come from, people sleep at night. Sleep? You can sleep underneath the table or spread or spread a blanket on the ground. Or just sleep on that armchair you're sitting in now. Isn't sleep just when you pretend to be dead like everyone else? Exactly. Is this why you don't sleep? <laughs> See guys, I told you. Sleep is for the weak. You're just pretending to be dead. Oh, the other other stream. What is this? One. Oh, the others. On the other stream, why does it say, "Why the hell am I here"? What? What? Huh? Anyway. The Hatter had terrible bags under her eyes. As I doubted she slept too much, she could only have been sleeping too little. She frowned upset. It was probably his mood at the time. I don't even... When did I say, why the hell am I here? On what other stream? <laughs> She frowned upset. Look at the time. Is it really time to sleep? Napping at tea time will destroy your inner clock, don't you know? On the other stream. What other stream? What's the title? What game was I playing? Was it this 24 hour stream? When did I say, the, why the hell am I here? Go ahead. Sweeter, oh, sweeter yesterday? What, hold on. Wait, oh my god. This, oh! No, in the thumbnail? No, no, that... That was just, like, I literally just made that thumbnail in two seconds. And then to justify the fact that my face was literally in, the, in like, a mirror, I just put the text, why the hell am I here? And... I, I, I get lazy with my thumbnails I because I never really want to make them. So I just... I just like... I just make them in like five minutes. Or, or less. So I, I tend to just put random stuff in there. It doesn't mean anything. Morning, afternoon, evening. Since it's all tea time, it's better not to sleep. I thought you didn't care about time. The Hatter sneered. Time doesn't care about me. Are you perhaps afraid of sleeping? She gave me a somber smile. What do you think, Alice? She poured, us, she poured herself a drink from a bottle into her teacup. I turned to look at the bottle, which was in no way for which was in no way for tea i couldn't read the jumbled words scrawled across its label so i so i couldn't help but ask what era are we in are we supposed to be in like the fucking i don't know the 1300s or are we in 2012 what the fuck Isn't that actually alcohol? Tea. Isn't that alcohol? Tea. She drank her tea and I did mine. The conversation turned to silence. I shouldn't have pushed and upset my dear host. I wanted to pet her head and apologized for she could drink or sleep at, as she wanted. As I reached out, that had a recoiled. There was a frown on her face. She pulled. Pu she pushed her chair back from the table, taking the chance to move away. Then she dipped underneath the tablecloth, rummaging through her stuff with a rustling noise. 
I feel like the Mad Hatter might be a little depressed. Uh, yeah, same. <laughs> She's just like me, for real, for real. When she popped back out, she held a blanket, which she tossed my way. Her expression turned even more distraught. Her frowny... Her frown wobbly. Then you want to pretend to be dead right now? Go, go, play dead. Catching it in my arms, I smelled a sweet scent from the soft blanket. The sky was dark. I started to feel sleepy, hugging the blanket a little tighter. I had experienced a long day after all, so perhaps it was time to go to bed. Good night, Hatter. I wonder if she was mad. If she would respond. I wonder if she was mad. If she would respond, but she did. What? Good night, Alice. I have no idea what half these words say. I leaned back comfortably in the armchair and began to sink. Sinking, sinking, sinking. On the contrary to my earliest expectation, I didn't keep sinking forever. The moment I looked up at the sky, I found I couldn't fall asleep anymore. I didn't recognize the stars in the... I didn't recognize the stars, the constellations, the ad that adorned the dark heavens. Tracing their infinite sparkles, I wonder who they stood for. I wanted to understand what was hidden past those mismatched eyes of the Hatter. While counting the stars, I eventually fell asleep. I dreamed of falling. Of course. The next day, and the day after, god damn it, Rachie, and the day after, I continued my search for the Red Queen's parts. Once again, I was walking down the forest path. Remembering that the Cheshire Cat mentioned the White Queen, I decided to give the Queen a second visit. I thought that I could easily replicate the route to her garden, having only recently been there. However, the more I walked, the more apparent it became that I was lost. I passed the tree to the right a handful of times already. I was going in circles, getting nowhere closer to that beautiful garden. And it's equally pretty owner. The jungle, it's more of a forest, I think. I let out a sigh and chose a bush at random to walk through instead of following a path. My cloak saved me from being scratched by the leaves and branches of the bushes. I came out on the other side to a particularly tall tree and a large birdcage. Why is she in a cage? I can make a really easy joke right now, but I'm not going to. I spotted- oh my god, my head. I spotted the white queen inside the birdcage. Behind her was a limb, a leg. She sat with a distressed expression, and she looked up at my looming figure. Hello? We meet again, Alice. I hadn't expected that I would be trapped here again. I'm a little embarrassed that you're seeing me like this. I contemplated just asking for the leg and leaving. No, that would be terribly f that would be a terribly foul thing to do, especially to, to a pretty person like her. Although in a way, it almost seemed like a good idea to leave a a pretty bird locked up in a cage all for oneself. After all, how would you catch her if you let her go free? Is that is that the Red Queen's right leg? So it would appear. To find the Red Queen, you may have to find her parts as well. Even so... Wait, I, I just now realized... We can actually see Alice's... Like, the back head of... The, the back of Alice's head. For a second, I, I didn't even know if... If Alice was, like, the person in, like, the cover of... of of this game because like I, I genuinely I, I i was i was wondering if that was alice or the red queen but yeah i guess that is alice because it matches like they, they seem to be matching unless she's both 
To find the right queen, you may have to find her parts as well. Even so, she will be able to help you find your way back home. I'm sorry, Alice. Don't apologize. The key to my prison is atop the towering tree. Would you help me open this cage, Alice? Yes, of course. Agreeing to the request, I walked over to the tall, tall tree that the White Queen gestured towards. How tall it was, I couldn't say. If I angled my head and squinted, I could see the glimmering of a silver key at a high branch above. Confused? I'm confused. Is it who is the White Queen or who is the Red Queen? It's who is the Red Queen. We're trying to... I mean, we've seen the, we've seen the White Queen. She's the one in the cage. But who is the Red Queen? We haven't seen her yet. We only have her, her arm and a leg. I circled the tree. The front and the back. The sides left... The sides left and right. They all looked equally hard to climb. As I pondered on how to scale the tree, a little bird approached. Wasn't the Red Queen the villain of the story? Why are we trying to put together the Red Queen? I guess we don't know she's a villain. Because I think, I, I think the Red Queen is like the one that... Because we're not from this world. We, we are quite literally Alice in Wonderland. Oh my god, this is Alice in Wonderland. Because I get, because we're not from here, right? We're from a different world. I'm like the Red Queen has the answer on how to get back home. I think. Not actually. Yeah, I'm starting to doubt what I just said. Um. Anyway, as I pon as I pondered on how to scale the tree, a little bird approached. It was fat and pink, with beady eyes and a tiny black beak. Chip chip. With all the talking animals and not quite animals in Wonderland, I had an inkling that this one might speak as well. Perhaps it spoke French like a French bird. Bonjour. Bonjour. Unfortunately, I knew little French. My practice had grown rusty. So, so much that the tutors would be ashamed. But I tried to pull out at least one more phrase. I'm not even... You can read that for yourself. Cheer. I must have said the... I must have said the wrong words as the poor bird began to tremble. Uh... Yes, yes. Chirp, chirp. Cats, no cats, please. What are you doing? What are you doing, chirp, chirp? I'm trying to get that key up there. What are you doing, little bird? You're just having lots of fun every day. Not doing anything in particular. Not doing anything in particular. Why do they keep repeating? All right, I can read. Now that the Red Queen, I mean, Her Majesty is missing... Wonderland is so much more wonderful. Probably played four or five different ass in Wonderland visual novel, but I don't remember the original story very well. So I'm not about I'm not I'm not sure about the Red Queen and how it went. I I'm gonna be completely honest, I don't even know if I ever read the original as Wonderland story. <laughs> I've never even seen like the Disney version. Cause I barely watch films. We can play and frolic as we want, Chip Chip. I tapped out. Auntie Bird got in trouble for breaking Her Majesty's laws. And now there's no more Auntie Bird, Chip Chip. I was so sad, so sad. Her Majesty was so scary, so scary. You won't tell on me, right, Chip? Chip Chip. You look like a nice person, Chip. Much nicer than her. Much nicer than her. Oh, I see. I'll help you with the key, Chirp. Uh, puffing out its little chest, the bird flapped its wings and took off upward into the sky. It flew and flew, but soon enough became tired. 
not reaching the key on the tree, the bird faltered and fluttered back down. It dipped its head in disappointment. Sorry, sorry. I couldn't do it, chirp. Kill the bird. Wait, no. No, I want to save. I'm not killing the bird. Pet the bird. Don't worry about it. I rubbed the little bird's head, causing it to peek up at me with its large round eyes glittering with surprise. Oh god, that's one of the options where I, I don't think I can take back. I think I just have to like reset if I ever if I ever need to like go back to it. After the failed first attempt at the key, I returned to the White Queen's side. She looked fitting in the cage, pretty like a flower preserved forever in glass. Again, I thought that she was beautiful. Really, she was beautiful. That's true, Alice. Even so, I couldn't let... I couldn't let her stay trapped, not to mention the Red Queen's leg. I wasn't able to find a way up. Do you have any idea for what I should do, White Queen? Over there are some mushrooms. If you eat the ones to the left, you will grow. If you eat the ones to the right, you will shrink. I think they will be helpful. Magic mushrooms? Oh god. <laughs> now this became Mario. I was hesitant to eat mushroom to pick from an unknown wilderness, but I felt like... But I felt that I could trust the White Queen. Why? I didn't know. Haha. <laughs> Well, this is Wonderland, isn't it? I had forgotten something important. The feeling of forgetting tingled in the back of my mind uh, whenever I saw the White Queen. Finding the mushrooms she pointed out, I faced a choice. Facing a yellow one with black spots and, and stem and a large purple one with white spots and stem. Hold on, let me take a drink. <sighs> uh, shrink. Eat the purple one. I ate a ripe mushroom and immediately began to shrink. The world around me swelled in size. I was afraid I would shrink to nothing, but I soon stopped shrinking. I must have been the size of a doll. Looking upward, I found that the key upon the tree was even further away. I hadn't quite thought my decision through. A gust of wind blew past. Another bird appeared towering over me. The bird who previously... Help me also looked large, but this new arrival outsized my little friend. It was too... Wait, it too was fat and pink, with beady eyes and a small black beak. Hello, chirp. I heard you need some help. I hadn't thought you were going to be this small, but whatever, but whatever works. Never know what dumb humans around here, chirp. I paused for a moment to take... This, to take in this new bird. <laughs> I shouldn't have been surprised anymore when the bird spoke. <laughs> so I decided to take it in stride and enjoy the offer of aid we're given. I need to, de I need to get to the key up there. Well, it's probably a bit hard for you, ain't it? Since you're so chirping tiny. But, you were a nice birdie over there, so I'll let you ride my back and we can get to that key of yours together, Chirp. How about that? Good. I climbed onto the black bird. The black bird? What is this, Crow Hogan? 
Uh, I climbed onto the bird's back, admiring the look of its feathers up close. I made myself comfortable and grabbed onto its neck. Hold on tight, buddy. I got the chirp. With a flap of its wings, the bird began to fly. Whoosh! The wind blew past me, throwing my hair into disarray. My cloak fluttered behind me wildly. We were so high in the sky, the sun be became closer. In a few moments, we reached the key at the top of the tree. I grabbed it, placing my arm through the loop to hold it. While riding the bird, the key was heavy. While riding the bird, the key was heavy. A silver thing almost as big as me. We descended and I dropped the key onto the ground. Thank you for the assistance. Welcome, Chirp. Don't expect a free ride again. I'm going to grab Birdie and go, so have fun with your own thing, you tiny human. The bird left of its smaller friend. I, lu I lugged the key over. Ludged? I lugged the key. Lugged or lugged? I lugged the key over to where the White Queen sat, breathing heavily when I finally walked the full distance with the weight in my hands. You know you can just eat the big mushroom and go back to normal size, I, I assume? The key I now had. The key I now had, but the cage I could not open. I was much too small. The magic will wear off. In the meanwhile, would you accompany me to chat, Alice? That may be for the best. I would have to wait till I reverted back to my original size to open the door. Well, let me save just in case there's any dialogue I don't have. Or that I'm... That I might miss. Or that... It, the, any multiple choice. And the game is not responding. Fantastic. Well, we're stuck here now. Oh. No. Okay. I would have to wait until I revert back to my original size to open the door. Is the invitation for some tea still open? Yes, always. Then shall I ask about what sorts of food and tea you like to drink, to see what I might expect? What's your favorite tea? White tea. Do you prefer... Do you prefer black tea still? What's white tea? How did you know? Is it like tea with milk? Is that what it is? We chatted for a while about tea and at some point the conversation turned to flowers. Perhaps... It was that she felt... Am... Um, ambivalent, uh, ambivalent, len, um, on floral teas. You are welcome to visit the garden anytime. I couldn't find the way to the garden today. Perhaps getting lost had been for the better as I found her in the end. Yes, that happens when I'm not there. But Wonderland should lead you my way if you think of me at least for you alice i had nowhere to be but the garden she paused looking at something in the distance that i could not see would you believe me if i told you i can see the future i looked at her in the eyes and a certain a calm surety. I didn't feel that she would lie, yet I couldn't quite believe her words either. I wonder what I what I had forgotten, what I was doubting. Rather the Rather the answers I decided to play along. Wait, rather than answer I decided to play along. Can you change the future you see? Why do you ask? Otherwise isn't it lonesome? 
I don't believe that the future is predestined, but the solitude of such a power would also be the fate of a queen in this world. Her words sounded contradictory. Even for the right queen? Especially for the right queen. White tea is when you make tea using harvest herbs that aren't ready to be harvested. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that actually. I don't think I had white tea yet. Or ever. Especially for the especially for the right queen. The white queen spoke of fate as if it's still trapped trapped by something. Uh still trapped by something more than just this bird cage. I couldn't understand. We talked a little longer. I felt a tingling up my arms and began to revert to my usual size. The world warped and finally popped back into its proper place. I twirled around to uh, check that all was well. Identifying no issues, I picked up the key that I dropped uh, to the ground. And identifying no issues, I picked up the key that I dropped to the ground at some point and inserted it into the lock of the White Queen's birdcage. With a smooth click, the cage unlocked. I opened the door. The White Queen stumbled out of the birdcage, her legs still wobbly from uh, sitting in the cage for so long. She let me hold her steady, steady till she rebalance herself thank you you're welcome i ought to return to the garden now but my invitation is always open alice i'll see you later if you're willing she handed me the red queen's leg it was dressed in a black tight the shoe red and tied to the ankle with a ribbon Free from the birdcage, the White Queen departed to return to her garden. After wandering around some more, I returned to the Hatter's place with the second limb in hand. The day came to an end, but the Hatter's clock remained at tea time. Obviously, as always. She was arguing with her own hand puppet about some sort of song, some rendition of Twinkle Twinkle. The hair on her hand was flung back and forth. I witted it out, seeing as she started laughing by herself halfway through. Apparently she couldn't sing. Her expression was a bit lonely. Once her shoulders stopped shaking, the Hatter turned to me. She gave me an awkward smile. Alice, you voyeur. You voyeur. I see you've brought a second one. That one is... That one is one and this one is two. Good work. The Hatter clapped her wrist half a dozen times. Alice, when you join us for some tea again today, Hatter, ma Hatter made scones. It has butter. What? Tea with butter? Oh no, scones. Wait, no, scones. I... I forgot. that. I already forgot what I just read. Alright. Thank you for the invitation, Dormouse. Another lonely but happy expression briefly flashed on the Hatter's face. Upon my response to the Dormouse, she immediately brightened up. If it would make the Hatter happy, I didn't see why not just play along. Leg. Setting aside her puppet friends, she extended an open palm towards me. 
I proceeded to commit. Huh? I proceeded to commit less much instead by throwing the limb over to the hatter's tea table to her. I took a seat in my armchair, seeing her clumsily catch it in her arms. At my seat, there was already a cup of tea prepared. With her free hand, the hatter opened up the, do the dog cage and retrieved the, the other limb. Do you need any help with that? She winked. I have everything under control. With another pause, the hatter stuck the limbs onto the Red Queen's torso. The flesh sounded with a squelch as the muscle, skin, and bone began, began to knit into place. Still a red line remained where the limbs connected. I took a bite of a scone. As the hatter said, it had butter. The Red Queen's incomplete body twitched, something squirming under her skin. I spread some clotted cream and jam onto the scone. The perfect blend of sweetness made me wonder where she got the jam. It was very red. That's not jam. <laughs> Ow. The Hatter became disgruntled, frowning. The single arm grabbed at the hatter, smacking as it squirmed. The hatter kicked the incomplete Red Queen, rendering the limb a hunk of meat, paralyzed with shock. The hatter forced its limbs off. A bit of blood and something else dripped onto the ground. Gripping the writhing limbs, Writhing? Speak like a fucking human. Jesus Christ, Alice. <laughs> Alice is becoming accountable slowly? Oh, surely. I bet, like, if there... I don't know if there's multiple endings, but if there is, one of them is gonna be, like, everyone dies, we just eat them alive. Gripping the writhing limbs in her hands, the Hatter popped open the dog cage door with her feet and chucked them in. With a thud onto the cage, the arm and leg went. Good scones. Thank you. You mentioned you also had some business with the Red Queen ha Hatter, but what was it? Something to do with bread? Something to do with flesh? I realized that I didn't quite know. She gave me a white smile. A personal matter, Alice. I'd prefer you don't pry. Uh, I was the one gathering the pieces, so of course I wanted to know. <laughs> then again, the Hatter could just as well put the corpse together herself. A better question was how she obtained that first chunk of meat, but I doubted she would answer. I was curious. After all, not every hatter keeps the Red Queen's dismembered body at their table, much less treats it like you do. The White Rabbit is searching for the Red Queen right now, you see. And the Red Queen is right here. At least part of her was. No one likes the White Rabbit. Why didn't you tell her, Alice? Well, I didn't feel like it. The White Rabbit was boring. I had a feeling that telling her anything about the corpse sitting with us wouldn't help me much. You've saved me from the dungeon. Did I just say dungeon? What the fuck am I? You saved me from the dungeon. In that dark, dank place. A hat's not enough for the cold. Dungeons are here aren't for keeping, but for killing. I see. Uh, I just realized this coat kind of has like a dent in it. I don't know why. This is the second one that has a dent in it. Well, let's commit less majesty together. Surely the Red Queen will forgive us for 
piecing her together. I much prefer this Mad Hatter. No, no, Alice. This is much closer to blasphemy. We have no choice but to beg the uh, wrathful God for forgiveness, don't you know? I couldn't help but think of Osiris, the judge of the dead, cut to pieces by his own brother. Even a god king, rather... Even a god king, rather a god queen, could be chopped up and rendered helpless. The tutors would be proud of me for remembering. <laughs> Is that so? It'll be with it'll be good working with you, Hatter. I offered a hand to shake. Seeing her destination, I expected her to reject my out outstretched hand, but she instead grabbed my finger with an expression filled with uncertainty. I thought that she would try to pull my finger off. However, she only grip gripped me weakly and shook it up and down before letting go once more. She was a bit gloomier for the time after. Night fell and another day ended. What did I dream of? I must have forgotten. Only two more limbs and a head remained. I think we know what the head is. I continue my adventure to collect the Red Queen, so that I could finally meet her and find a way back home. Step, step, step. I walked around this upside down world. In between my explorations of Wonderland, I chatted with the Hatter. And she made a certain inquiry. What do you want to go back to at home? What indeed? I don't- that did not make any sense. Alice, Alice. What was waiting for you at home? I counted- I just did like a weird- my jaw just did like a weird movement? Oh my god. Ah. Uh. I counted off my fingers. Two sisters, two cats, a large empty home, books and tutors. With my sisters, Lori and Eddie. Eddie? That's the girl name? I was not particularly close. The older Lorena and the younger Edith. Intelligent intelligent Lorena and precious precious Edith oh, can you speak like a normal person what the fuck they seem to live in their town wait no they seem to live in their own world apart from Alice I feel like there's probably an ending where the Mad Hatter stops you from leaving there might be I preferred the cats, a white cat and a black cat. The former was cute, a little beauty, and the white queen had... What? The former was cute, a little beauty like the white, like the white queen. And the latter, a little devil. As for the books, our, libra our library seemed endless. We had so many books that I could drown. Maybe a pile had collapsed on me and I was... And I was dying, suffocating under the pages so terribly that I fell into Wonderland. Imagine that ends up being the ending. It's just... <laughs> it's just... She's just dead under a pile of books, suffocated. The tutors would be so mad that the books were ruined. <laughs> I went inside a phantom sting to the back of my... A phantom stinging the back of my legs. 
the poor ruler. I couldn't already see it go red. Wait, I could already see it go red. That was my world. A boring, normal, plain world where animals didn't talk and corpses didn't move. Where I hadn't needed to think of much at all. I, I was Alice. And that place was Alice's place. I fiddled with my fingers, grasping for the correct expression to wear. A smile. A smile was always safe. I'll be off then. Step, step, step. Yeah, let me just... I traversed about this place, which was not Alice's place, my place. What? Once again, I was in the forest at daytime. I think there's might be something to save here. I was walking around. Searching for the clues for where the next limbs or even head could be when I heard the sound of conversation. We know where the head is, or at least I know where the head is. Because <laughs> we kind of already saw it. I followed the noise and found the oddest pair. A rabbit and a cat. The rabbit seemed upset. On the contrary, the cat was grinning deviously. Asked the Hatter. The rabbit made an... The rabbit made an indignant smile. What, whatever the fuck that means. Hatter? That Mad Hatter? She's more cuckoo than... She's more... <laughs> she's more cuckoo than the bird. A real nuisance. The only silver lining is... Is how now that rat and hare are out of the way. She's become more of a recluse. My ears are still ringing from that time we had to pull peasants off the streets to sing for royal guests. She sneered. The courts have stopped working. The kingdom's falling into anarchy. We've got filth on the ground left and right. Up and down too. The rabbit became angry. Shut up, you damn cat. You fucking criminal pretending to be a cat. If you weren't so busy, I'd send the cards to chain... I'd send the cards to chain you up and throw you back into the dungeons where you belong. Wait, I'd send the cards? Isn't... Wait. Isn't... Doesn't Alice in Wonderland, at least the film, have like these... These card knights? That's her for the, the queen. Like, isn't it the queen of hearts? And there's like these card knights. Right? Or am I rem or am I thinking of something else? I probably am, aren't I? I'm probably just thinking of something else and I'm just completely stupid. Huh. The cat grinned as she taunted the rabbit. Yeah, it's card knights. Okay, I was right. Me he 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 he. Scary threats from a rabbit. Listen up. Your name is still on top of the list of execution, cat. Don't think you can do whatever you want. Ah. Now I've got to Alice. Uh. The white rabbit made a puking sound. The blood drained from her face when she met my eyes. She looked terrified. The Cheshire jeered. Hello. Did I interrupt a conversation? N no, not at all. I Hello, Alice. I hope we weren't too loud. The cat and I were just making some small talk. How have you been? Well enough. And you? Well enough as well. Well, well, well. What about me? Well, are you well? It depends, I'm a cat. Oh wait, it depends, I'm cat. The cat's punchline met silence. Are you two friends? The rabbit frowned. 
No. The cat grinned. Yes. Our circles rarely overlap. We only happen to meet and talk today by coincidence. The cat made a mock frown. I'm hurt, Bunny. I thought we were friends. Cheshire Cat, please refrain from giving me unsolicited nicknames. The cat smiled. Bunny? You two seem to get along. No, not really. They didn't seem to get along at all. I just liked how the white rabbit thought that she could lie straight to my face about what they were talking about before. You wanna play Sayonara or I have fun? Lie, lie, lie. That was what the Queen's courtiers ought to do. Hilarious. After a short three-way chat, the White Rabbit pulled me to the side for a private conversation. Ah, I have an invitation for you, Alice. The White Rabbit reached into her coat, retrieving an envelope from the inner pocket. She held it out to me. The Duchess was invited... Wait, the Duchess has invited you to her endless party. If you're interested in attending, it is and will always be held at her manor. <laughs> okay. I took the outstretched invitation. When is it? She gave a smile. On and on, indefinitely. Ever since Her Majesty has gone missing, the Duchess has been holed up in their manor, owning a grand ball every day and night. If I didn't know better, I would think that she was celebrating. The rabbit frowned as she looked into the distance. But she wouldn't be so foolish. I see, thank you for the invitation. Placing an oddly familiar wax seal upon the envelope, I fiddled with the invitation in my hand. I wondered where I had seen it before. The rabbit smiled. I live to serve, Alice. What a relief. A burden has lifted off my shoulders now. And uh, this invitation is delivered. If it pleases you to attend, I hope you have an enjoyable time. The Duchess certainly knows how to throw parties. And the novel, and the novelty of Wonderland have, what? And the nobility of Wonder. <coughs> mm. Um, and the nobility of Wonderland. How to? What is? Is this grammatically correct? Am I just stupid? Quick question. Genuine question. I've I've no idea. I tucked the invitation away. The rabbit smiled, a distant look in her eyes. Hold on. Was I... The rabbit smiled, a distant look in her eyes. I don't think that's correct. Is there anything else? Her attention returned to me. No, that is all. I won't bother you any further. Please excuse me, Alice. And have a nice day. Bowing her head a few times, she made her way away and soon was out of sight. And off she goes. The cat's eyes narrowed with a grin. We were talking about something too. That white rabbit. She only cares about the Mad Queen. Her grin became mischievous. I've got a little secret about the Red Queen. Just a bit of gossip. Do you want to hear? Certainly. Wow, we don't even get a choice. I will kill. Yes, but still. I was in a bit of a stump trying to find the rest of the Red Queen. The first two pieces came along quite easily. As if delivered on the silver platter. But now, I had to find some more clues. I waited for the cat to speak again. Glancing at her flickering tail. She gestured for me to come closer. Alice is speaking in a hybrid of Old English and Modern English. In Old English format. Yeah, but I 
don't even know if Where was it? I don't remember. I can't find it anymore. I don't remember what it said. She gestured for me to come closer. When I moved in, she flicked me sharply on the forehead. Causing me to recall and surprise and stumble back. I never said I would say. Me he 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 he. Try finding me later, Alice. Before I could respond to her provocation, she disappeared into thin air, leaving a grin floating before me. Wait. I just re wait. Her face is there. <laughs> just her face. Before I could respond to her provocation, she disappeared into thin air, leaving a grin floating before me for a short moment more. What? I feel like... I feel like this game is literally just... Someone playing a game, and we're playing as that person who is playing this game. Did that make sense? Like, because... This... How... How, how would this work? Just, how would this work? I don't think it would. Also, the cur- I just realized the stream isn't capturing the cursor, even though the cursor is different, so... Let me, like... On, uh... Ah. Does it show up now? Yes, it does. Okay. Or I could respond to yeah, so how, how would this face work? How? Just how? Before I could respond to her provocation, she disappeared into thin air, blah blah blah. That's, that is, if you can. I don't even remember what she said anymore. With a flicker, the grin too vanished. What did the rabbit call her again, Alice? Why am I talking to myself in the third person? I ran my... Th I ran my fingers through my bangs and sighed. Looking around, I was alone on my search again. Search for- wait, no. I wanna save. I wanna fucking save. Let me save. Oh! I can save. Okay. It was that easy? I just needed to- To right- uh, to- yeah, to right click. And, oh, uh, okay. Search for Sh Cheshire. I returned to the path. I couldn't leave the cat's matter alone. Think of her ta taunting flip on. Uh, I'm not a professional in Old English, but I do know some that sometimes Old English is awkward. So I have no idea if the creator of this game looked up Old English or they're, they're guessing. I really... Uh... Honestly... I... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there's like an Old English translator. Like just like... There's a translator convert modern English into Old English. <laughs> can, can, someone, can someone check if that's real? I'm curious. Think of her taunting flick, I had no idea where she could be. For she always appeared and disappeared as she pleased. I returned to the endless tea party. I had a quick chat with the Hatter to find out. Hold on. Can I... Wait, wait, wait. Never mind. Are you acquainted with the Cheshire Cat? The uh, Hatter's eyes narrowed. Cheshire? The Hatter moved Dormouse as if she were upset. She's scary. The Hatter- oh wait, because it, it's a mouse and a cat. 
The Hatter moved the march Hera as if he were exasperated. Always stays up in the trees. The Hatter smiled as she spoke. She's usually around the northern end of the forest. The cat always says she has business so she can't stay for tea. Even though I never invited her. Even though I never invited her? The Hatter grinned. Yes, we're acquainted, but definitely not friends. If you're looking for that cat, don't bring her back here. We're low on seats as is. And then she sneered. Next thing you know, you'll have to be chopped up to fit in a teapot. Ta-ta. The trio of one gave me a Johnny wave. Jaunty wave. Taking the Hatter's words, I st started off to explore the forest north. I walked down many twists and turns, stumbling across the uneven ground. The path was rougher here, and the foliage thicker. I found not another living being in sight, no cats nor others. After a while, I reached a place with two signs pointing the opposite directions. One read cliff, and the other not a cliff. <laughs> I let out a chuckle that they were straightforward enough signs, but I couldn't see where they led past where they led past bushes blocking beyond their net. <sighs> But I couldn't see where they led past bushes blocking beyond their arrows. Dingling. Dingling, dingling, ling, dingling, ling, ling, dingling, dingling, ling. There's a couple of old English translator websites on Google. Oh, damn. No, tell me that. They actually exist? Jesus Christ. The ring of a small bell entered my ears. Followed by the clatter of metal shackles. Cheshire Cat? I received no response. Accompanying me was only a breeze that would sometimes hit the leaves of the trees around me. Sometimes? I hear a soft rustling noise, but when I looked towards the sound, I saw nothing. I tilted my head to look for further upward and... The world shifted. The air was pushed out. The air was pushed out my lungs. A black and orange, an orange blur crashed down on me with great momentum from the sky, slamming me to the ground. If my head had had hit a different way, my skull would have been a cracked egg on the ground. I moved just in time to harshly bang my shoulder instead. I thought I'd get it done in one shot. The blur, the Cheshire Cat, filled my spinning view field of view. She wrapped both hands around my neck, digging in with her sharp nails. Her left arm flickered in, uh, flickered in and out of existence as if it wasn't really there, creating an unbalanced pressure in my about in my throat. Her grip tightened, drawing blood. I couldn't breathe. She squeezed even tighter. I tried to pry her fingers off of my own. My twitching hands clawed at her constricting grip and even scratched my own neck. More than more than the pain of the flesh wounds. Wait, more than the pain of the flesh wounds, I was going lightheaded from the lack of air. I just barely forced her off my neck, I wheezed, coughing to catch a breath. She grabbed my collar, grip on the left. She grabbed my collar, grip on the left, flickering in and out, and slammed me back to the ground after lifting me up a little. What? I couldn't even ask why she was doing this as vertigo, as vertigo overwhelmed me. Kicking and flailing randomly, I managed to push her off for a moment. Had to 
reorient myself to get my feet just to roll away from her somehow. Which way? This is important. Um, if they use a translator program to make this game, I hope they use a good one because if not, it would have been super tedious. The one website looked at the one website I looked at did not did did one oh one word at a time. Which way? Um, cliff. I tumbled through the bushes in the direction labeled as Cliff. The signs around here had nonsense written on the many. The signs around them, wait. The signs around here had nonsense written on them many times more than not. As I expected, my chosen direction had no cliff in sight. I had a feeling. I shakily got to my feet and watched the cat do so as well. She immediately lunged at me again. This time, I was more prepared. I kneed at her in the stomach as she approached me, grabbing as she approached, grabbing her right shoulder and twisting while hooking my foot on hers. Forcing her arm down, I heard a slight crack noise and made her fall to the ground with a thump. Just in case, I kicked her away a bit. Her body was light like a cat. I'm waiting for an explanation. She started to fade away, but I stepped on her before she could get away. After a quick struggle, she relented and got up to her feet without any further fading. The cat snarled, dusting off her body. The Cheshire Cat frowned. I hadn't realized who you were before. My cloak may have a hood, but you've seen my face many times already, Cheshire Cat. She scowled. Wonderland's twisted up in time. She jeered. That sort of logic doesn't work here. It's mad, all mad. You might be Alice, but who is Alice? Now that's the question we have to ask. I feel like... You know what? No, I won't say anything. Her lips cur curled into a mocking smile. To start with, you don't know anything. Do you even know who you are, Alice? I'm Alice, that's all. That was my sole truth. She returned to her frown, deep in thought. Deep... Did, wait, did that say... on. Deep in thought, for some reason I read it at, I read the TH as an S for some reason. I don't know how I managed to do that. But who in the world is Alice? An outsider? A temporary visitor? I've just about figured out the most important part. If you figured it out, I don't suppose you'd tell me. You are... She grimaced in pain. She pressed her hand against her head. Then she took on the jeer. Somehow you're much too similar to the Mad Queen. Uh, are you the first Alice, or has there been many of them? I don't know. Probably many of them, considering everyone knows me. Oh, about that Mad Queen. You've been looking for her, but let me tell you this. She's been dead for a while now. Although, I think you should already know. She scowled. I can't put it into words for some reason. Maybe it's just the way you look at the world, but you're definitely the same type of person. In which way? Are you just trusting some gut feeling, some delusion that I might be the same as someone whom I've, I've never met? 
Or as you say, someone who is long dead. She stared at me with determination. This world can't afford another Red Queen. Not even the chance of one. She vanished, taking the chance in our conversation. Criminals needed to be locked up. I looked all around, hearing the faintest sound of her shackles, telling me that she was nearby, but I couldn't... I could not see her actual presence. So why don't you do me a favor, Alice? Just go ahead and die. Her voice danced through the air for formlessly. You have no qualification to an actor form of justice, Cat. That really is just like her to say. She appeared behind me and attacked it again. We fell to the ground to tussle once more. She clawed at me a few times, but I gradually gained the advantage. The cat favored her right arm rather than her left arm. Uh, wait. The kit. Fuck. The cat favored her right arm. Rather, her left arm acted transient. What the fuck does that mean? I don't know. Coming in and out of existence, forcing her to avoid relying on it. Uh. What? Wait. Her handicap forced me to falter more than, than now. Wait, more than now my numb shoulder did me. She felt like an animal. To be fair, she was a, to be fair, she was an animal. Biting, clawing, and all the likes. She came at me with the intent to kill. We continued till we were both bloodied and bruised. I punched her straight in the face, causing her to bite her tongue and choke up a mouthful of red. Her head bounced on the ground, throwing her next moves into disarray. I hit the cat again, and again. Doing this with my bare hands wasn't exhilarating as much as it was just a matter of fact. I had decided that I preferred this nuisance out of my hair. I noticed that her right arm was stitched on. The arm felt familiar, as if it didn't belong to the Cheshire Cat. Alice, that cat was also a thief. I wanted that arm. Oh, and the game is responding. Okay, yeah, we'll, 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 just, we'll just wait. Oh, there we go. And you know what? Since, uh, if we ask for it, she'll probably attack, so tear it off. I grabbed hold of the Cheshire cat's arm and pulled. The cat screamed. The arm creaked. Be quiet for a bit, won't you? As I pulled, I heard a myriad of tearing and ripping noises. Sounds that human flesh do not make. She screamed herself hoarse, shaking under me. Feeling her erratic gasp, I figured that she could barely breathe. Her eyes dilated, di dilated, crying. From the grueling I heard from her, from the grueling I heard from her throat, I guess that she must have been, she must have bitten fully through, she must have bitten fully through her tongue. Okay, now I get it. Okay. Also, my phone is dying. Let me go charge it real quick.
Oh, okay, I'm back. I dug my fingers into the arm even more harshly to wrench it off. But s slowly but steadily, I removed the arm from the cat. Uh, through brute force. With a final squelch, the arm popped off from where it had been attached. The cat also stopped making noise around that time. I don't think she's alive anymore. I think she just... I think she lost too much blood. Blood splattered all over me, dirty my clothes and the limb I sought to retrieve. Really, a little annoying. The red dripped all over the grass around us. I sat her on her prone body for a moment to rest, looking at my handiwork. I wondered if perhaps I had gone a little far. However, it was better to trouble it was better to get trouble out of the way. I wobbled to my feet. I kicked the body, asserting that she was unconscious or dead. Holding the arm in one hand, I dragged the cat along the ground. I left two trails of red behind me, one from the cat and one from the recently detached limb. In the direction labeled not a cliff was a cliff. What a convenient garbage disposal spot. Oh. I hauled the cat's body as close to the cliff's edge as I could. Placing the arm on the ground to free up my hands, I lifted I lifted her and flung and flung her off the cliff. Maybe you are like the Red Queen. Honestly, I think we are the Red Queen. An issue was disposed of. Now there was no Cheshire Cat. No more Cheshire Cat. I picked up the severed right arm. The limb appeared different. Now that it was detached from the cat. It was more resembled... It more resembled its fellow limbs. Sans a regal torn sleeve. The broken shackle of about it, its wrist fell off without me having to do a thing. Alice, Alice, did you recognize this arm? We're talking- No, hold on. We're talking to ourselves in the third person. I'm pretty sure that either we are the Red Queen or we have like the Red Queen as like a- like a- like a- like a second personality. Like she's just in our heads. Because there's no reason for us to call ourselves Alice. Like to refer to ourselves as Alice. Yes, I answered. This was the Red Queen's arm. A jolt of pain burst through my head. I did not know why I knew. And amidst my agony, I did not have the heart to care. I stumbled, clutching my head. The world warped and blurred around me. I felt dizzy looking at the distorted landscape, or perhaps my dizziness itself distorted the landscape into an un undulating thing that made me want to vomit. You're so right, somehow we are the Red Queen? Yeah. Like, I kind of had a feeling that was the case right from the start, but I didn't think it was, like, this blatant. Like, because at first, it was, like, I just thought of it as a joke. Now it's just like, no, I think that's actually what it is. I felt dizzy looking at the stories. Oh, wait, I already read that. As my adrenaline drained the results of the... Of the wait, as my adrenaline dra drained, the results of the fight began to show themselves. My whole body felt sore. The raging headache pounding at my skull would not be su would not subside. That would make sense though, that's why there's so many Alice's for some reason. The Red Queen needs Alice's. Yeah. Black and red began to fill my vision. Oh. The ground shifted beneath my feet. Maybe. Falling, falling, falling. Alice was falling. My world turned to darkness 
And all I heard was laughter. Thump. I slowly opened my bleary eyes to the sky. It was a starry night sky. A terrible headache battered my skull. I felt as if I had forgotten something very important. So disoriented I was. I had no idea where I was. I pattered around me and noticed that I still had the limb I just retrieved with me. My head hurts. Hold on. Hearing footste footsteps, I foot I put. Hearing footsteps, I pushed myself up to sit to a sitting position and saw her. Who? Uh. Actually, it's probably more likely there's only one Alice, but Alice can't remember the truth, but everyone else knows the truth. I think that's it. I think that's like another, yeah, I think that's, that's probably it. What am I trying to say again? <laughs> but yeah. I think, um, yeah. I mean, everyone knows who we are, so, can I, uh, thank you. Uh, hmm. I feel like if we choose the the white queen, she'll just see us with, like covered in blood, probably. At her. Looking around, I found that I was at the Hatter's place. Ah, I started to talk, only for my throat to feel like sandpaper. Oh, that's just that's like me every single stream. <laughs> Each time I blinked, my eyelids grew heavy again. A chill ran through my whole body. Uncomfortable. That was all I could say I felt. Although I had no experience quite a bit. Wait. Although I had experienced quite a bit since coming to Wonderland, I had not thought I would catch a cold. Certainly, that fight with the cat had battered me up. Don't speak, Alice. You're Don't speak, Alice. You're burning up, so no tea for you today. It must have been tea time for it. Wait, it must have been tea time for it was always tea time. However, today, the Hatter decided to put the tea aside, even at tea time for the sick me. She brought a cup of water to my lips, tilting, tilting it for me to drink. I drank and choked. Coughing and spluttering and sputtering. I felt her wipe away the water that had spilled. If you drink too quickly, you'll drown. Hmm? She handed me a cup directly. Fingers just barely avoiding mine, but also grasping the cup firmly till she knew that I wouldn't drop it. Drink water slowly, Alice. I've got to get something off the stove. Seeing that I had the cup in hand, she hopped off in the direction of the stove. I thought back to when we first met. At that time, the thing on the stove had been a hammer. So I hoped that she would bring back something more pleasant. I sipped from the water cup and waited, and waited, setting it aside once I finished. She returned with a bowl of porridge in my hand. In hand. Sitting down next to me, she scooped up a spoonful of porridge and blew it likely 
lightly to cool down. As the porridge temperature settled, she moved a spoon towards my mouth. I instinctively opened my mouth like a baby bird. I can eat it myself. I would rather you not cannibalize yourself. She fed me porridge. Spoonful by spoonful. Once the porridge was finished, she put the bowl away and gave me another cup of water. While letting me sip the water, she wiped away the sweat on my forehead. You're good at taking care of people. Really? I've never quite had... My words drifted off into silence as I thought back to what little I had to say about taking care of others and being taken care of. Hatter, the limb. I'll put it away for you. You know me so well, Hatter. And, um... I could barely keep my eyes open. Rest well. The Hatter placed a cool, trembling hand on my forehead. Then, into the realm of Hypnos I fell. Oh god, no. I don't want to go to that realm. After a few days of good rest under the Hatter's care, I recovered to full health. Hadn't been so sick in years. Thank you, Hatter. What for? Don't linger too long in this crowd. Don't linger too long at this crowded place. Off you go. Don't you have some body parts left to find, Alice? Ahaha, <laughs> so I do. Seeing me once more healthy, she shooed me away. I was back on that forest path. The Red Queen was nearly assembled, missing only her head and, for and fourth limb. Onward, I continued with my search so that she could send me home. I took out the invitation that the White Rabbit had delivered to me. Running my fingers against the paper of the envelope and that imprint on the wax seal, some sort of animal. I tore the invitation open. What? Inside, I found a card and read it to myself. Alice. The Duchess requests the honor of your presence at her ball. Today, tomorrow, time eternal. The Duchess's estate, the manor. You are required to bring a companion. Required. Flipping the card over, I noticed something of a crude. I noticed something of a crudely drawn map. I followed the lines on the map and somehow pinpointed where I was in relation to the manor. I held nothing to bring it to bring to a party, nor did I have a readily available guest. I pondered about whether I should go or not, seeing that I could put it off indefinitely, but with the Red Queen's part still missing, perhaps someone there would know? A Duchess uh, would have been close to the Queen, for example. That at least the tutor had the tutors had mentioned. All right, save. Uh, you'll save one day. Um. Oh my god, wait. Oh, okay, it's only 10 hours, 45 minutes. I'm gonna have to end the stream soon enough. Like, Duel Links, I can cut a few... Like, I can afford to have... I can afford to, like, go past 12 hours, but... This, like, a story-based game, I cannot do that. Oh, fine. It's about fucking time. Uh... No, I don't want to overwrite. Okay. Um, as for the plus one, my mind wandered to my few human acquaintances in Wonderland, White Queen. I invited the White Queen, 
feeling that she would be most fitting a guest to a noble's ball. I found her in her garden. She gave me a pleasant smile. White Queen, when you accompany to a ball? She appeared contemplative. Hmm? A small frown adorned her features. I will attend it if you like me to. I'm not much for parties, but... This is once... This is once with you. Wait, but just this once with you would be alright. How am I reading... How am I reading this wrong? <laughs> to whose ball and when? The Duchess's ball. I need... To, I... S Hold on. Ugh. My throat is not getting better with each drink. I need to make something hot, I think. The Duchess's Ball. The White Rabbit gave me an invitation to what she claimed to be an endless party. I dug out the invitation and let the White Queen see. The White Queen smiled. The Duchess's Ball. Then we should be in no hurry. Alice, would you like to try on a dress? It seems fitting for... We are going to a ball. But you might not have one as you aren't from around these parts. She seems excited. Hmm? At my nod, she had a whole wardrobe of dresses and accessories brought out. And let me try them on. Lace and frills. Silk and cotton. Ribbons of various colors. And glittering gems. What a variety. Not a single thing had been touched or worn before... Or worn before as if unwanted gifts. They were pretty, but not quite... But not quite... Like her, I think it means. The White Queen looked a bit shy, a bit amused. Got to go to bed, see you tomorrow, I have a good night. I might understand why children like to doll up pretty girls. I'm not particularly... <laughs> we tried a number of different outfits. I changed into the next dress, a red. Red dress. Feeling the comfortable fabric on my skin, I twirled around to feel the dress. Uh, the White Queen appeared hesitant. Sad, even. <laughs> right. Red suits you, Alice. It does, doesn't it? Doesn't suit me as much as green, though. Fun fact. I know, like, in real life, I actually do look pretty good in green. Like, it, like green just suits me. It was just meant to be, I guess. <laughs> For a moment, her gaze went far, far away. But perhaps not today. Must I wear a dress? I did not plan to be... To be here for long enough to deal with the consequences, even if I particularly offended anyone. My plan was and continue to be gather the Red Queen to leave. Therefore, if I could realign her gaze, then I prefer to wear a dress. No, then I prefer not to wear a dress. No, you need not worry about a dress. If you would prefer not to, the Duchess won't be bothered. She smiled. <laughs> I did say that I could see the future, did I not? Let me reassure you of that, Alice. She too seemed seemed relieved that I chose not to wear this dress. The dress must have been tailored for someone special, as it didn't match the White Queen at all. I changed back to my own clothes, feeling my cloak snug around me. This suits me best. In exchange for that fun, I will allow you to do... Uh, will you allow me to do your makeup? I don't see why not. 
fairy servants lugged over a makeup kit, bowing to me and her as they set it down. I looked at her face, the curve of her jawline, the shape of her lips. Seeing her up close, I felt a little flustered because she was so pretty. With the tools given, I traced over her features. Alice, was she not already perfect? What's there to even cover up and make more beautiful? Truly, this is my... Truly, this is my white bird. This is the Red Queen, 100%. The person who just talked here, that's the Red Queen. The, no, no way it isn't. Who's? Like, we're literally talking to ourselves. Like, I'm pretty sure... Like, I'm pretty sure the White Queen is just... the no, Not the White Queen, the Red Queen. The Red Queen is like a... Like a second... She's in our heads, or she's like a second personality. Not wanting to ruin her features, I drew very little on. Only dusting a light layer of brush on her cheeks, my hand hesitated. My whole while... Wait, the whole while she smiled. Hmm? She shifted when the brush tickled her. Fiddling with the make <laughs> fiddling with the makeup tools I retreated. That should be all. I didn't poke you, did I? I felt not a thing at all, Alice. Alice, you are in fact a very gentle person. A fairy servant brought her mirror, called with a simple gesture from the White Queen. Looking upon my handiwork, I found that she looked no different from before. Pretty and white. Still, she seemed pleased. As I decided not to dress up, the White Queen chose to do the same. Shall we go? I think this is just the game makers not wanting to make not wanting to make different outfits. I extended my hand towards her. The White Queen looked steep looked sheepish. Certainly. She called a carriage. A pretty crystal thing whose coachman sat invisibly. Uh, invisibly with, but a shadow. Invisibly with, but a shadow. What the fuck? She called a carriage. A pretty crystal thing whose coachman sat invisibly with, but a shadow. That doesn't make any sense. The horses too were nowhere to be seen like fairies. We entered the carriage, and off it went. I looked outside the window, seeing familiar yet unfamiliar scenery. Some places I had never passed by, even when coming to her garden. Our ride stopped amongst a number of other carriages. I alighted, helping her down, and we walked up the Duchess's Manor. It resembled a large white castle, towering against the the day sky with pointed roofing a guard stopped us at the entrance halt please show your invitation card i handled the guard the guard the card what the f <laughs> i handled i handed the guard the card can you not phrase that correctly like can you, like can you at least phrase that like, like it doesn't sound like the same word? Alice, please. He looked at it over, glancing at me and the White Queen before stiffening in surprise. Your Majesty the White Queen? Making eyes towards another guard, the guard gestured and led us inward uh, a few steps through the entranceway. The guard's fellow quickly darted inside as if to report the appearance of a rare visitor. To enter, guests must provide an arm. The arm will be returned to you whenever you wish to leave the party. An arm? A limb? The guard nodded. 
Yes, I'm afraid I cannot make an exception for anyone. Offer your own arm. Offer the Red Queen's arm. An arm. A, a limb. Certainly I had one I could obtain from the Mad Hatter. I glanced towards the White Queen, thinking of how I never mentioned the Hatter's and my agreement. That agreement of blasphemy and les majeste. Or however the fuck you say that. For reasons unknown, I felt strongly that the White Queen knew more about the Red Queen's dismemberment than I did. Perhaps she did not lie about knowing the future. Alice, of course she did. Let's go ask the Hatter. The Hatter? The one who lives in the woods and cannot sing? Ahaha, ah, there are many Hatters in Wonder... Oh wait, ha ah, ha, are there many Hatters in Wonderland? Perhaps there were, just not many satisfactory enough. Without asking any further questions, she followed my lead to go find the Hatter. Arriving at the Hatter's place, at the Hatter's place, I found the Hatter having her usual tea time chatting with the puppets on her hand. She spotted the, she spotted us sit, sitting up straighter than her seat, seeming surprised at the, at seeing the White Queen. A darkness stared in her mismatched eyes. As she saw my guest, the Hatter seemed to sneer. Your Majesty, the Queen? No room. Three, four, five? Five's enough for all the people in this world. The White Queen appeared trouble, troubled as the Hatter continued to sneer. Don't be so rude to Her Majesty, the White Queen. You wouldn't want your head to go flying again. I didn't bother to take a, sit, a seat this visit. Knowing that if I were to lounge on my armchair, I would stay there with the Hatter for much too long. We aren't here for tea, Hatter. The White Queen smiled a little. The Hatter, too, gave me a friendly and pleasant expression as I spoke. A real shame. But rather, an arm. Preferably detached from anything else. Yes. The Hatter looked down at her own limbs. The White Queen looked hesitant. Once of that pers- uh, One of that persons would suffice. We only need to borrow one for a bit. The White Queen gave the Hatter a shy smile. An arm would be appreciated, Hatter. The Hatter gave a wide grin. Is that so? Then she gave a cheeky wink. Your Majesty, would you like to borrow a limb? I'm surprised after all. You were the one who did that. Did you lose it? What I mean to ask is, did you lose your trash? The White Queen frowned at the Hatter's words. Her brows furrowed in anger. I have no- I have no idea what you're talking about. The Hatter grinned again. I forgot that it was supposed to be a secret. I suppose I shouldn't show my gratitude and instead reflect on my rudeness. My sincerest apologies. The White Queen appeared troubled as the Hatter sneered. Sorry ma'am, didn't mean to mention the choppity chop. Our heads haven't been the same since they fell off the first time. A bit of an open secret, don't you think? The White Queen looked disgusted. I ask you not to speak of that matter. I understand. Our lips are sealed. Zipped tighter than tight. A sad expression adored, adorned the White Queen's features. Regarding that arm, Hatter, she finally smiled a little when I spoke. The Hatter grinned. 
Of course, of course. Alice, you were the one who found it. The Hatter hopped over to the dog cage and kicked it open, pulling an arm out like a bear fishing from a stream. She looked quite devilish. She held it far from, she held it far from her as, uh, as it began to flail and chucked it my way over the table. The white queen looked troubled. The limb flew an uneven arc through the air, forcing me to dash towards the piece of meat. I just barely caught it with my arms, nearly stumbling into the white queen who stood near me. Her arm. The white queen's eyes uh, bored into the severed arm with distorted intensity. There was a smile on her face. The Hatter grinned with her brows still knit in a devilish manner. Manner. Bring it back later, Alice. I will. The White Queen frowned. Saying goodbye to the Hatter, we, we returned to the Duchess's manor. The guard greeted us, and we handed over the arm we retrieved. His gaze lingered on the White Queen after a cert ascertaining the validity of the arm as an entry as an entrance fee. Even he must have noticed that she seemed reluctant to part with the limb. The guard handed our entrance fee off to a servant who put it into a sealed box and took it away for safekeeping nonetheless. Please enter, esteemed guests. We arrived at the Duchess's ballroom. It's pretty empty. The floor was wide open and remarkably, remarkably polished. Golden chandeliers hung above, the light reflecting against the floor. A few chairs sat between the large round windows. A painting sat on the far, on the farthest wall. Although the hostess was nowhere to be found, servants uh, milled around the floor with refreshments for the guests. A quartet, a, a, a quarte. Yeah, is it? I think it's quarte, right? A quartet. A quartet performed in the front. Food set at the tables to the sides of of the, to the sides of the room. All around were faceless people dressed up like clowns. The moment the white queen stepped foot into the room, all heads turned towards her. A horde approached us, circling around the White Queen so that she could not easily escape. Yet, they kept their distance as if gazing upon a rare zoo animal. Greetings to your majesty, the White Queen. How have, have you been well? We have nothing but gratitude for, for all you have done for this kingdom in the face of tyranny. Her majesty was... Oh no... Was this still a difficult topic to speak of? You'll jinx it. If you speak of the devil, the devil will appear. Your, Maj your majesty, when you come visit the Mar Marquisdom, your white hair is as beautiful as snow today. No wonder you are so adored. Your beauty was such... That even she was so enamored with your presence. She was... Ah, we shouldn't speak of her. I wish I could touch your skin. You did us a good deed. A paragon of virtue. The heavens must sing your, pra must sing your praises. You are truly the queen with the divine right to watch over Wonderland. It must weigh heavily on you to... Have had to take such drastic measures. But what are your plans now on the empty throne? The rabbit. An animal still thinks that she can be found. This is what we get for letting vermin rise up to the ranks. But no one else wanted to be in that position. <sighs> Oh, 
You say that because you're incompetent. Truly, this kingdom might fall into disarray, your majesty. Do you have any intention for who should be delegated to rebuild Wonderland? You've worked so hard, so why not take a good rest and let others do the dirty work? My husband has always... Your husband isn't exactly here right now. Wasn't he banned from making a ruckus? Your majesty, please don't make... Please don't take offense. But I know a wonderful place. Brilliant volcanic springs to re recuperate from being locked away for so long. If you would consider my brother... The White Queen appeared quite bothered. White Queen. My hand brushing against hers. I was sick of hearing all the driv all, all the drivel leaking from the faceless crowd's mouth like a half-chewed slop. She nodded. She took on a professional expression. We must go and see the Duchess now to talk about matters of the Red Queen. Upon mention of the Red Queen from the White Queen's mouth, the pigs surrounding the White Queen collectively gasped and took a few steps back. Could it be? Hmm? She nodded ambiguously, causing them to scatter with one excuse or another. There was a smile on her face. Soon, a servant approached, telling us that the Duchess was ready to meet us in the parlor, and that we could head over as soon as we wanted. Her smile turned troubled. I spoke too soon. Was that simply a bluff to make them back away? Yes. It may be just as well as... It may be just as well that we meet with the Duchess because you are searching for the Red Queen to find your way back home. Shall we, Alice? Mm-hmm. I followed the White Queen through the manor hallways. Glancing left and right at familiar, unfamiliar. The long hallways were just as regal as the ballroom. Red carpets rolled out along their lengths. Alice, the Duchess must have redecorated. What unspoken good deed? Had you done that? Had you, had you done that? The had you done what unspoken good deed? Had you done that? The swine, I mean, those novelty would not leave you alone, White Queen. What the fuck did I just read? She made a sad smile. Absolutely nothing. She stopped. I stopped. <laughs> the Duchess welcomes you. The guard before a room bowed and opened the door, letting us into the Duchess's parlor. It was quite open, with two brown sofas on either end of a coffee table for guests. Tasteful and subtle art pieces, uh... Hug on the walls, one of an angel on the wall, and another of a devil on the opposite. Lit by the natural lighting streaming in from the windows was a desk that sat before the guests, the guests sitting area. Inside sat a featureless woman who hid her face. Instinct told me that, uh, instinct told me that she was ugly. Yet I could not see anything, not. Disfigurement, nor beauty. I perceived her. She was the Duchess. Welcome, Your Majesty, the White Queen, and... What name did you go by now? Yes, yes, Alice. There's no way we're not the Red Queen. The Duchess looked at the, at the White Queen before glancing towards me. Returning a sense of pity towards us. Your heart is still entangled. The White Queen made a troubled face. You didn't come... 
You didn't come to me for that advice, beloved White Queen. I believe you wanted to speak to me about our dearest majesty, the missing Red Queen. Yes, it's Alice's matter. We told the Duchess about my circumstances. I fell into this world unknown and was seeking out the Red Queen in order to find a way home. We left out the part where the Red Queen was dismembered, but the Duchess already knew. You are searching for the Red Queen, but the Red Queen has been dis dismembered. To even request aid from her, you must assemble all of her pieces. As the Duchess spoke, the White Queen had a distant gaze. As it so happens, I never... As it so happens, I have her left leg in my possession. The White Queen's lids lifted in surprise. She smiled diplomatically. In that case, would you give it to us? <laughs> I'll be giving it to a pair of guests at today's ball. It would be unfair for me to hand it off to you when another pair uh, would have to show their prowess to earn the limb. The White Queen frowned. I will offer something in exchange. You have nothing to offer? N you have nothing to offer, nor you have a true desire to meet our dearest majesty again in this form or another. Of course, these are only my own thoughts. Forgive me for assuming, but I cannot give you the limb like this. Rather than letting her offer something in exchange, would it not be better for me to do so as the person searching? What could convince you to give up the limb, Duchess? I will hold a little game today, and if you win, the limb will be yours. A game. Yes, a game. Our dearest majesty loved her games, even if they were much too, oft much too often cruel. Cruel games with no winner. Not even herself. The White Queen looked angry. I'm sure that Her Majesty, the White Queen, remembers. The White Queen's expression quickly shifted to an upset one. Will you do me a favor, Duchess? No, not even for you, dear Majesty. Dear Majest no, not even for you, Her Majesty's most beloved. The White Queen looked away. Again, she was smiling. Finding a little more we could say to convince the Duchess, we left the Duchess's parlor as seen off to the door by her. We returned to the ballroom to wait. The quartet continued playing. The previous crowd saw troubled saw the troubled look on the White Queen's face and decided not to approach, only watching her from afar. Uh, dancing pairs filled the, filled the floor. The White Queen eyed me as if she wanted to request something. When I returned to question her, she pretended to look at the refreshments. Do I look like dancing? Wait. <laughs> Why did I read it like that? Do you like dancing? Is the real question here. She looked hesitant. Just a normal amount. You wouldn't feel restricted by me. Oh wait, you needn't feel restricted by me. I'll be fine by myself if, if you would prefer to have a dance or a few now that you're here. She smiled. Alice, what is it now? May I invite you to a dance? Hmm? I took her hand. And she went towards the dance floor. The next, the next song started. Tap, 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 step, step, step. Uh... A, practic a, a practiced sequence of footwork moving across the room at the rhythm of the music. We danced while gazing into each other's eyes. Without even saying what we should dance... Without even saying what we should dance to... Wait. Without even saying what we should dance... What? We just danced. I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know this language anymore. I took Alice's part. Shh. Huh? Wait, I took Alice's part. She took the White Queen's part. There was nothing. Excuse me? What?
Feeling ambitious, I twirled her around, chuckling as she grew a little flustered when I caught her. I saw a strange expression as if she had expected something different. But the smile that floated to her eyes reassured me that I hadn't done wrong. The White Queen was always looking somewhere else, perhaps to the future, perhaps to the past, perhaps to a person who wasn't there, even though we were here right now. This was our dance alone. Thank you. No, I enjoyed that. Can we dance again one day? Wait, can we dance together again one day? Perhaps one day we should. The music stopped along with the dancing. It was at this time that the Duchess made her appearance behind... Uh, made her appearance. Behind her was a servant carrying the severed leg under a red cloth. Tonight we have a special gift to be given to a single guest. Uh, a hushed whispering ran through the ballroom as all the guests... All the guests guessed at what the White Queen and I already knew. We are holding a chess tournament. The usual game that ends when the king has fallen. Even here where the king has long gone. Of course, the winner will receive the prize. Please tell me there, like we, we can do like a chess mini game. Where like, where like we actually get to play chess against an AI. I would love that. The servant removed the cloth. All around, the guests let out let out a collective gasp. What you may ask? What you what you may ask? Why? It could only be our dearest majesty's leg. May the best strategist win. The duchess clapped. The servants began to move out, setting up tables and chess sets. In a matter of minutes, with a matchup, with a matchup list created, the tournament started. Uh, here was an exercise left to the reader. If given a name and a player, wait. If giving a game and a player terribly good at a game, what would happen? Naturally, that player would win, win and win again. To my surprise. For this game, that was chess. The player who was terribly good was the White Queen, even with the handicap of Alice as a teammate. She was smiling all the while. We made our way to the final where we met with the last opponent. Not at a table in our cleared out space in the ballroom. With a large chessboard over overlaid. The White Queen made a troubled expression. The last opponent was the Duchess. Wait. Please don't tell me we just skipped the whole... We just skipped every, like, part of the chess thing. Around her lined up... Stood one... And a third dozen soldiers dressed up in, uh, in black like chess pieces. The White Queen looked disgusted. Human chess, Duchess? Our dearest Majesty enjoyed watching games like this. One of you two have to take care of the role of a piece. And otherwise, I will provide the other pieces for you to play with. Please, take your time to the side. Those blades that the Duchess's black pieces wielded looked heavy and sharp. Looked heavy and sharp. Dangerous. The White Queen looked troubled. She looked at me and gave me a worried smile. Alice, let me. You could get hurt, White Queen. She frowned at my words. I would say the same to you. At the very least, the Duchess would 
hesitate to hurt me, for I am the White Queen. However, you... You are Alice. I know. In that case... We stood at a standstill for so long that the Duchess has set a white... Had a set of white pieces... Shuffle in and take their spots on the board. One of us had to be the human chess piece. Um, save. Alright. Okay. Uh, game, can you please save? Ah, my neck. There we fucking go, it's about damn time. Um, Alice. Let me. The White Queen looked worried. I would... I was at best mediocre at chess, even if the tutor had smacked basic strategy into me. So I preferred to trust the White Queen instead of... instead to command the board. I actually only played chess like a few days ago, I was on call with someone. Be I whooped their ass multiple times. Um... <laughs> I like chess. Uh, she equi equi uh, equ whatever the fuck that is, making me take on the pawn's position as I obtained a sword for my role. I speculated about what strategy she would formulate. The White Queen started with the first move. She made a hesitant smile. Directing the piece here and there, moving me carefully, moving me carefully as well. The White Queen captured the Duchess's black piece with ease. Coming here with this girl who so resembles her, Your Majesty, the White Queen. I wonder what you intend to do. The White Queen frowned. In a way, un I understand. She was so terribly, terribly bright. So bright that she would burn away. A brilliant and terrifying person that I could not help but watch. The White Queen looked increasingly upset as she listened to the Duchess. However, regardless of this girl, of who this girl is, you were still unable to look away from that person. The White Queen stumbled, sacrificing a bishop in a position she had not meant to order him towards. She looked disgusted. No. Is that so? The White Queen frowned. Not very good sportsmanship to say such things during a match, Duchess. The White Queen gave me a relieved smile. Fair. Then, let us say nothing unrelated to the match. Of course, you are a piece on the board. So, you too must stay silent as chess pieces do not talk to their players. Hmm? Thank you, Alice. I nod an acknowledgement, keeping my mouth shut as per the Duchess's rules. She moved me all the way to the other side. As a pawn, one of the most disposable pieces on the board, I was oddly enough kept perfectly safe. She smiled. I promote Alice to Queen. Promotion from Pawn to Queen consisted of handing me a flimsy white crown and a new sword. Within a handful of moves, the White Queen 
desolated the Duchess's black chess army, rendering the Duchess's sides nearly empty. The White Queen maneuvered me to the Duchess's black king. With one last move, we would win the game and obtain the Red Queen's leg. The White Queen grinned triumphantly. Checkmate, Duchess. I cut down the Black King, wondering why the sensation of my blade hitting flesh felt familiar. The Duchess clapped her hands. The White Queen was smiling. Congratulations, this is my loss. Even facing my challenge fair and square, you have ultimately obtained the Red Queen's limb. I wish you the best of luck gathering her parts for better or for worse. I am in no position to stop you. Not when even your majesty the White Queen approves. The White Queen made a troubled smile. She doesn't approve, I don't think. If our dearest majesty is to return, then we must accept the... and end the party. The White Queen's smile disappeared. Would you like to take your prize now? Yes. The White Queen make it, made a distant, happy expression. The Duchess gestured over the servant with the prize and handed the leg to me. I hope you enjoy the rest of the ball. And Your Majesty the White Queen, do visit whenever you would like to talk with me again. The Duchess departed with her servant following after her, just as quickly as she left. The chest setups were cleared away. I looked towards the White Queen, touching her to gain her attention. Her hand felt cold. She seemed surprised at my touch. Do you want to stay for longer? The White Queen shook her head. She smiled. I've had enough excitement for the day. Thank you for inviting me, Alice. Although, that last game of chess was, was nerve-wracking. I, uh, I enjoyed spending today with you. No. Thank you for coming with me. I feel the same. Her smile became sad. We made our way to the hall. We found a servant to leave uh, and, we're, and we're redirected outward. He retrieved the sealed box with our entrance fee and handed it over. I will leave you with the limb. Do you want to meet with the Red Queen again? She made a sheepish, avoidant smile. And that's a difficult question, Alice. Ah, I see. I already understood that she had a complicated relationship with the Red Queen, but I wanted her to look at me instead. Alice was right in front of her. No, at the very least, I wanted her to smile without looking at something so far away. Because surely the person she was looking towards was the Red Queen. Who had already been dismembered. We parted ways. Okay. I am going to save and I'm actually going to end the stream because uh, we're getting very close to uh, 12 hours and after that the VOD cuts off. No, wait, hold on. No, 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 no. Wait. Uh, shit. Hold on. I was supposed to load, not start. Hopefully that didn't just wipe out all of my saves. Okay. Okay. Taking the wrong turn, I exited to a garden. And at the far end of the garden was an exit. It was an elegant garden. With plenty of flowers and triangular hedges. In the center was a fountain. I turned back to ask the White Queen to find that she had already gone. 
Oh, I turned back to ask the White Queen to find that she had already gone. This must have been the Duchess's garden, seeing as I had come from her manor. I strolled through the garden, appreciating the flowers and greenery, yet couldn't help but compare it to the White Queen's garden. Perhaps I would go visit the White Queen again. Without much further ado, I made my way through the garden exit. I was back on the forest path. Not taking even five steps out, I stumbled. A sudden vertigo, vertigo struck me. I must have had a long day. I reasoned as I held my hand to my forehead while trying to steady myself. My brain spun like a sloshed up pit of mud. I must have forgotten something very important. I leaned back against a tree to take a break, looking upward, eyelids flickering. I wonder if the sky had always looked so far away. The sun was beginning to set, orange hues beginning to enter the picture. Also, let me check if, uh... Yeah, okay. I just wanted to see if the game could be heard. Also, I just realized how, like, you can see the normal mouse cor cursor if I go just up here. That's kind of annoying. But here it changes to this blood one. I wonder if you can see it, like, down here, too. Doesn't seem like it. Oh, you can. Oh, that is also annoying. Okay, the sun was beginning to set. Orange hues beginning to enter the picture. My free hand, propped against the bark, slid downward unconsciously. I closed my eyes for a moment. Darkness. At some point, I made my way back to the Hatter's place. Hello, Hatter. I handed over the limb I just obtained. At least from what I could tell for- What the fuck, why did the screen just flicker? At least from, from what I could tell, the passage of time. It should have been only recently that I had taken this limb uh, from its past owner. I didn't know. The Hatter took the limb and threw it uh, on, into the dog cage with all the others. She grinned. With, with this, you've gathered all of Her Majesty's limbs. Oh, so I have. <laughs> you look terrible right now, Alice. Her eyes narrowed. Like us. Like us. I'm tired. The Hatter smiled. Take a nap. Tea time isn't going anywhere. Not unless time grows back its severed head and walks away. Don't you think we can always talk a little later? Hmm, thank you. I slumped back into my armchair, sinking into the oddly sentenced cushion. She sneered. Good night, Alice. This may be the last. Then she looked a little lonely. I almost feel a little sorry, but Dor Dormouse, March, I, I won't stop. I didn't hear what Hatter said afterwards over the raging white noise of my headache. My vision blurred, eyes becoming watery, eyelids heavy. I fell asleep. Then I was dreaming, falling, falling, falling into the dream. Tick tock, tick tock. I dreamt of a throne, a dark and terrible throne, so horribly cold. It was such a lonely throne, but the eye on the throne was arrogant and happy to be alone. No, I even thought she had someone she loved. A beautiful person. Yes, that person she loved was a beautiful person. So fragile and beautiful that she wanted to slowly tear off that person's wings. But her love was wrong. If she wasn't happy... Then she would lose everything. Alice. Alice. You were exactly this person. No, I wasn't, was I? As I opened my mouth to speak, blood began to leak through my lips. 
the only sound that came out was an empty gurgle. Were you happy? No. I could not talk. I could not taste. Even the red dripped down my chin. I felt as if my tongue had been sniped at, had been snipped out. Blood choked me. Gasping in nothing but liquid, I grasped up grasped at my throat. Ellis. I was drowning in this dream. You were never happy. Never. My god, that did a number on my eyes. When I awoke, I forgot all that I dreamt of. Oh my... Yo, looking at just... Just red for that whole time, and then just flickering to black, and now looking at color, that hurts. I opened my eyes to find an empty feeling in my mind. I disoriented. Wait, I opened my eyes to an empty feeling in my mind. Disoriented, I nearly rolled off my armchair in which I had gone to sleep. I sat up. Uh, I sat up and stifled a yawn, rubbing the bridge of my nose. I blinked. I blinked again, chasing away a haze. I felt as if I had forgotten something very important. In the meantime, uh, in the meanwhile, the Hatter brought over a uh, decorated cake, much more elaborate than the usual snacks at the Eternal Tea Time. It was a cake with cream, fruit. Uh, it was a cake with cream and fruits, two layered, two layered even, with flowers and pictures carved up with the food ingredients. I could only call it a pretty cake. She grinned cheekily, winking. Just in time for tea, Alice. As I got up my arm, as I got up from my armchair, the Hatter lightly pushed me back down. My behind landed on the cushion with a soft bounce. It seemed that, it seemed I could not but sit. She stared at me before sticking a handful of candies into the cake. Lighting them with a match. Oh, candles with a cake. Into the cake. Lighting them with a match. The Hatter made a devilish, devilish wide grin. Flick. The flame glowed on the head of the match for just a few seconds. After settling the candle, she began clapping her hands to an unsteady rhythm. Happy unbirthday to you. Happy unbirthday to you. Happy unbirthday, dear Alice. A terribly offbeat, off-balance song she sang, and her voice warped as, as she said my name today. A certain darkness flickered in her mismatched eyes. I don't see it. She sneered. Happy unbirthday to you. I didn't understand. I couldn't understand. I simply watched as she finished the song with a small clap and pushed the cake a bit closer to me. What is this for, Hatter? Certainly today was not my birthday. No, but it's your unbirthday. Didn't I tell you? Don't you remember? You get a special prize for bringing me all four limbs, Alice. Since it's not your birthday, it must be your unbirthday. All 364 days of the year. Picking up a knife, she cut out a slice of cake and slid it over to me. I caught it in a hurry and soon enough she poured me a cup of tea. That too came rushing over. Also, why did the screen flicker? I noticed a hammer on the table right next to the cake knife. She gestured, urging me to have a taste. The calming scent of the tea wafted to my nose and mixed with sweets, milky cream. 
with sweet milky cream. The celebratory cake slice looked so charming I almost felt it a shame to eat. I picked up the cup of tea and took a sip. This is my favorite. <sighs> After enjoying some tea, I started on the cake. Hmm. As I ate, the Hatter placed a box before me. She was still sneering. Open your present, Alice. Chop it open. Smash it open. Any way you'd like to. There it is. We already opened it once, but uh... We don't know what's inside. I surveyed the box. An odd and plain box, just big enough to store an animal. From the outside, I could not tell what might lie inside. I, crack I cracked open a small gap, afraid to disturb what could be hidden inside. Shadows blocked my vision. I saw nothing, but I heard a low, gurgling, drowning sound. A strange and strangled voice, one that sent a chill rolling up my neck. Throbbing headache hit me again. In one go, I flung the lid off. Inside was a head, a bloodied head. Huh? A head of... A head. A woman's head. A girl's head. A head that should have been dead. A much too familiar face. A much too foreign face. I didn't quite understand what I was looking at, even as the world seems to shift around me. Her matted hair was blonde. Her bloody skin was pale. But her unfocused eyes were not blue. Rather, they were red. Alice, you knew who that face belonged to. Alice. Whose head is this? I stumbled to my feet to back away only to fall back onto the armchair from my loss of equilibrium. This wasn't right. The face looked just like mine. Just almost. Almost. I clutched my neck and touched my face to make sure I was still here. This was the Red Queen. This was Alice. I literally called it. I called it. So fucking badly. <laughs> I literally said this was the case. Oh my god. This was a severed head, Alice. Whose head is this? I wanted to ask, but instead, a strangled cry escaped my throat. I couldn't move my eyes. I couldn't move my eyes away from the so-called prize that the Hatter had given me. Blood pulled at the bottom of the box, sticky and dark. How terrible. I reached a trembling hand to touch it, but I wasn't but it wasn't my place to try to close her eyes or put her to peace. The head was still moving, twisting with a squelch and squish. Its wet, ragged sounds of raspy breathing echoed in my skull. I jerked my hand back and covered my ears. I couldn't look away. Now aren't you glad you needed to find Her Majesty's head? As if laughing at me, as if she didn't truly mean that. With an odd tilt of her voice, as she spoke of the Red Queen, the Hatter confirmed the head's owner. She walked over to the Red Queen, flinging the dog cage open, and popped the limbs onto the torso one by one. As they reattached, they began to flail and grab at the Hatter. This time she was prepared and grabbed her hammer. Hatter? 
With a pair of loud bangs, she hammered nails through the corpse, through her corpse's hands, into the Red Queen's chair. Red dripped to the ground. The hands twitched. The body writhed. Or writhed. Writhed, I think. A ghostly pain ran up my arms as my stomach churned. I feel diz I felt dizzy. What? What? Hatter? I discovered that I had nothing to say. Even though I always had thoughts racing through my mind, I had nothing to say. And I was lost in the nothingness inside of me. Alice. That was why you were worthless. Ask something. Anything. I touched my face to see if my lips had curled up without me thinking to. Did you want to... Didn't you want to leave this place? <laughs> now you found the Red Queen. If you have something you'd like to talk with her about, I'll let you take care of that before I proceed with my own business. She pushed the Red Queen over. Chair scraping on the ground with a hideous squeal and stopped only when I sat face to face with the headless shifting body. Taking the head out of the box, the Hatter put it onto the body. The skin and meat deformed, contorting till the pieces of neck met exactly where they should. Then, it all knitted together with something unnatural crawling under the skin. I shuddered at the hollow sound made from the corpse as her throat connected. The Red Queen looked at me with dead red eyes. I didn't know what she went through, but she looked terrible. Uh, I realized that I had never asked who killed her like this, nor had ever stumbled upon an answer the same way I had found all the limbs. This was the Red Queen. Alice. This was me. The requests I had been pondering on. The wishes to go back. The wishes to go back home. The want to ask her for help. They all flew out of my mind. Because this wasn't right. The face I was looking at. Battered and bloodied as it appeared. Was not right. I couldn't speak but she did. Mouthing words, yet making no sound besides the hollow whistle of a crushed throat. The queen, the Red Queen began to talk without saying a thing. Her tongue was missing. And we had to do something about that. Her Alice's tongue, where's her tongue? Let's save. Cut Alice's tongue. I grabbed the cake knife from the other side of the table. I know. Without hesitation, I thrust the knife into my mouth. I began to cut, ignoring how the men the mental choked my airway and blood pooled up and dripped out from between my lips. I sawed back and forth with a slightly serrated knife. Much too dull, tearing through my tongue. I cut and ripped and saw. Ugh. Connected by one little string of flesh, the tongue, I ripped it off by force. I didn't want to sp swallow the piece of meat lingering in my mouth. Coughing and choking, I brought a hand up to my lips and blood spilled right past my fingers. God, this hurts to imagine. Oof. The knife clattered to the ground. My head hurt more than my mouth. Temples throbbing. Alice belonged to the Red Queen. I spit the bloodied lump of tongue into my hands. 
and gave it to the Red Queen with shaking hands that doubled and then tripled in my contorting vision. She seemed to swallow it. I heard a crunch from inside her mouth, a disgusting sound. Alice! Alice. She smiled, and I mirrored with a shaky smile. What a time for madness. With her hands still nailed to the chair, she shifted, crossing her left legs as if to make herself a tad more comfortable, while she laughed silently at me. I heard the Hatter call out, but only the Red Queen's voice reached my ears. Red, 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 wouldn't stop flowing from my mouth, dribbling past my lips, pouring down my throat wrote in a viscous metallic flow. How have you enjoyed my domain? Everything was spinning. I spouted out a few wordless responses as I grew lightheaded, drowning in my own blood. The red was spilling all over my armchair. No, I certainly have to clean up all the vermin that gathered when I was gone. And all the thoughts that mine shouldn't... That mine should never have had. She lifted her hands and tore out the nails lodged through her flesh. Quickly, the skin and muscle knitted together, leaving but a faint pinkish color on her skin. Picking up the nails, she threw them like darts towards the hatter. Although I couldn't look towards the Hatter, I heard an ugly piercing sound. For example, my little white bird. The Red Queen gave me a hand of applause. Alice, your job is done. Well done. Myself from another world. This is the best that you have accomplished with your life. You have my comment. You have my commendation. I couldn't breathe. Each time I gasped and wheezed, only liquid flowed down my airway. Red, red, red painted my lungs red. They already are red, but okay. I slumped over, trying to hold myself up even as I continued to bleed. So much red that I couldn't bleed any further. Breathe so much red that I couldn't breathe any further. This was it for Alice. Thump. Dead end. F6. Fifth, only 51% of the script I've seen. Where is her tongue? I tried to find my own tongue, stumbling with a pulsing pressure in the back of my head before I could articulate my next inquiry. Hatter, where's the Red Queen's tongue? I didn't want to hear her voice, so I tore it out and fed it to the dogs. The Red Queen wasn't complete without a tongue. Although she squirmed in the chair, causing the nails to creak, it seemed like she didn't truly have her soul. Alice, you were so close. The corpse looked upon us with stagnant eyes. That should mean I needn't bother searching for it then. What were your intentions, Hatter? Am I the Red Queen? At this point, I still knew nothing about the Red Queen. But that she shared my face. And, uh... uh but that she shared my face. And of the various gossips I overheard on the ruler. Alice. Oh my god. Yeah, this is... Oh god. Going from like a blood red to just... Just normal bright colors. God, really hurts your eyes. Like it disorient... It, like it doesn't hurt them, but it disorient... It disorientates you. Like it's... Like it, it's weird to just look at. Like you try it. <laughs> 
looking at the Hatter's mismatched eyes, I could see what she thought for the first time. She was sneering. What do you think? She frowned at my silence. Let me tell you a story, your majesty. So I was your majesty now. As the Hatter spoke, she appeared frustrated. She appeared frustrated, angry. A long time ago, in this corner of Wonderland, there lived a group of three friends. A mouse, a hare, and a hatter. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. We lived far away from bustling society, usually just coming together for tea. I made hats and and they did mouse and hair things. Once we had been dragged to perform like clowns for visitors to this kingdom, but only that once for her majesty hadn't quite appreciated our lack of skills. Her majesty ran the court of law, a strict queen. Some called her a mad queen. Some whispered, a tyrant. Most could not even dare to say. I think this story should be predictable, don't you? We were called into the court one day. The reason? Maybe only to be judged. She proclaimed us guilty and had us sentenced. I, for no reason, received the lightest sentence of the day. I came away with my neck still intact, not knowing a thing. Thrown into prison and starved, only just that much. When I came out, the streets were filled with newly spilled blood and two very familiar heads rolled my way. Crows feasted on carrion, only for even them to be swept away by the queen's cards. Do I need to explain further? Perhaps you really are blind and deaf. <laughs> Dormouse and March here. Oh, Dormouse and March Hare are dead. For what? For the sole crime of offending our world's tyrant. And so, Hatter, has been all alone for a long, long, long time. I can never forgive the Red Queen. The Hatter's smile disappeared. She looked disappointed. But she went and up and died. So I let her get away. S Wait, but she went and up and died. Who let her get away like that so easily? She sneered again. You who are the same entity as the Red Queen. I can't let you go. Don't you understand? She glared at me. Hatter, I... For the sake of my revenge, you have to die, Alice. She spun the hammer in her hands, her face devoid of mirth as she stepped closer to me, meeting my eyes with her mismatched pair. This is my justice, Alice. Goodbye, Alice. Goodbye. She raised that hammer in her hand above my head. Why did she look like she was about to cry? Crack. Then I was falling. Falling, falling, falling. I was falling. Down this rabbit hole with no start nor end. I was falling. My skull and brain pieced itself together, twisting as if going back in time. I re-experienced the pain of having my head caved in with a hammer. I was going mad. A wetness, perhaps. A wetness, perhaps tears, perhaps brain matter, rolled down my face as I tried to comprehend. I should have died. I felt as if I was remembering something very important. I landed in Wonderland once more. Alice? The first person to greet me was once more the White Rabbit. I grabbed up my head only to find no injuries, no red. No longer able 
to differentiate between dream and reality. I question if I had merely been hallucinating the whole time. Then, I was falling again. I died again. Alice? Each time I fell, I came back down. Alice! It became a hazy world. A distorted world. A world that was beginning to lose its colors. Time and time and time again, falling, 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 I seemed to revert the hourglass and turn back the hands of the clock, each time going into another past. Before I knew it, the rabbit had changed. Your Majesty? She was a bit more polite. Your Majesty? Perhaps a bit more cruel in her eyes. A bit less restrained with the darkness in her gut. She called out to me each and every time. Your Majesty! The rabbit was my starting point. My saving point. Falling, falling, falling. I kept falling uncontrollably. Falling, landing, dying, falling. I no longer felt as if I had control of even my own body anymore. My world flickered on and off. It hurt. Dying hurt. I... Didn't want to deal with this anymore. Alice, you had to deal with this. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I really didn't want to. I didn't want to deal with this anymore. Again, I fell. I felt my body on the ground. With hazy eyes, I saw a familiar figure and heard it speak with a familiar voice as murmurs reached my ears from all around. Her face, her her face and her words, not a single thing could I make out. Before I even got the chance to see the rabbit, a growingly familiar sensation struck me. Pain. A sharp agony burned in my arms till I suddenly could not feel my fingers. Then, the same came to my legs. Chop chop. There they went. A limb or two, or three, or four, off. They went until suddenly I had none of, I had none for myself. Soon a blade cut through my neck, sawing as I got stuck and stabbed again and again. Till the head finally came off and I was falling again, drowning through the flesh, clogging my throat as I reattached. I came to a realization. Oh, I understood. Alice what had you understood? I was done. I'd certainly gone mad. I couldn't handle this anymore. Even if I still wanted to go home. It wouldn't do me any good anyhow. Maybe this was a dream. An illusion. Just how long was I supposed to keep falling? Alice. You would never awaken from this dream. Then I was falling again. I decided to stop thinking and only keep falling. Tick tock. Tick tock. I opened my eyes to a courtroom with an air of fear. Watching, I was simply watching through another's eyes, sitting in the back of her head. Without a single meaningful thing in my mind, I was watching. Hold on, let me, um... I just want to appreciate this image. Looks good. like it. Um, what was the button to... There we go. She stood in the courtroom, arm thrust before her commandingly. A wild smile on her face. She wore a regal red dress, adorned with gold and a black and red... With gold and black and red. Red ribbon. Her hair was blonde, her skin was pale. But her eyes were red, and certainly not blue. Behind her stood the white rabbit. Ears quite straight. A mad grin on her face, with mad papers, with mad scrawl on her head, and, Your Majesty. 
the body moved without me thinking to do anything. I no longer cared to do anything. The body talked without me thinking to say anything. I no longer cared to say anything. It didn't matter. If I could have, I would have stopped watching. It was not because the sights were horrific, but because I no longer wanted to deal with anything and everything. Anything and everything. Not even the matters of the Red Queen. A dog, a cat, a bird, a girl, a boy, a person who was neither a mother, a father, an elderly. One by one, they came to be judged. Some begged, some cried. Some fought, some silently accepted their fates. The rabbit read out their accused crimes for show, allowing for the Red Queen to proceed. However, there existed only one result, guilty. At some point, she began to laugh. At some point, I began to laugh. <laughs> As ruler, I have survey sever over my citizen, and at the same time, a responsibility to make this kingdom pr prosper. A prosperous kingdom must have a law, must have law and order. Do you understand? But oh, you forgot the the you. Oh wait, or do understand? Off to the gallows. Be glad for mercy, criminal. Glory to her majesty for her benevolence. Cards! Bring the next one in for her majesty. The accused was reported by her brother-in-law for engaging in gossip and planning treason against the crown by speaking ill of her majesty. A simple sentence. A simple beheading. For this bird, bring her away. Cards? The accused was caught evading taxes. I mean, who doesn't? She was also seen stealing from upright citizens, assaulting merchants and spreading rumors about your majesty's state of mind. She was only apprehended recently as the cards <laughs> She was only apprehended recently as the cards were unable to capture her previously. Break her legs. Your majesty is truly Your Majesty is truly brilliant. As for her sentence, cut off her arm so that she can't commit crimes any longer. When she reaches the afterlife and throw her into prison to await execution by skinning. What will a cat rug like what will a cat rug like look like without arms? A criminal skin is much too rough for a good rug. Off with the cat. She seemed to think for a moment and snapped her fingers, rendering the cat's arms from her body in an instant. In an instance. And execute the cards who failed to catch her before. We have no need for worthless cards. Next. Next. The Red Queen. I did not know if she was happy. While she convinced the, ac the accused... The accuseds... Is that how you sp What? Accused... Uh, sure. While well, she convinced the accused, I inadvertently began to lose track of my surroundings, only to be jolted back by a particularly interesting sentence. The accused... Before the rabbit finished speaking, the accused rushed at the Red Queen. The Red Queen gestured with her hand, an unseen power slammed the criminal down to the ground, creating a, a crack on the marble flooring of the courtroom. Presumptuous. The force 
tore fingertips sized meat pieces by piece. Wait. The force tore fingertip sized meat piece by piece from the criminal, leaving it writhing on the floor as it rolled around trying to get her to stop. Have you forgotten who you belong to? The Red Queen finished once the criminal was ripped into a pile of red pulp on the ground to be swept away by the cards. I was smiling. The Red Queen was smiling. Next! The day in court continued until the courtroom was devoid of life. She worked on paperwork after court. Between stacks, she conversed with ministers who sweat nervously each time she met in their beady eyes. Finishing up her important documents, she proceeded to go for a brisk for a brisk walk and practice swinging a sword here and there. Bringing the Red Queen a towel and water, the rabbit asked if she wanted to visit the White Queen today. Which the Red Queen decided against. Dinner time arrived soon enough. She sat in a large dining room at the head of a long table, all alone. A sumptuous meal was served with red wine before her, but she had no one to share it with. Mm. Mm. The food tasted alright. More importantly, it had been poisoned. The chef used just a little too much so that the meat began to lose its charm and turn into mediocrity. The Red Queen called the chef over. His eyes darted around the room wildly, knowing that he had nowhere to escape. His legs shook, and he fell to his knees, beginning to beg. The Red Queen took a sword from a decorative suit of armor in the room off his head for daring to poison the queen. Watching as the servants cleaned away the chef's remains, she returned to her meal, which had been quickly replaced. I... She drank a sip of wine. Poisoned wine. The next day, she returned to the courtroom. One by one, the numbers diminished again. Even those in the jury were not spared if they made the slightest, sl the slightest slight. The rabbit smiled with glee, writing down the names of criminals who were to be executed. Not a few times she took the job herself, an axe in hand and boots squelching in blood. The Red Queen enjoyed her judgment court. Wonderland was her domain. And its people. Her pieces. They became disobedient. Then she would never let them throw her possessions into this array. Someday she didn't go. Working on governance. Other days she did. Working on the world's peace. These times continued until one day the Red Queen fell asleep. When I was still awake. Curling my fingers, I discovered I was in control. I walked over to the balcony, seeing the ground terribly far away. I lifted myself over the balustrade and threw myself off. Air rushed past my face. Splat. Falling, falling, falling. I was falling again, back through time. The, intersti the interstice between the different times and different worlds was still incomprehensible as before. My body knitted together from its mangled form and I returned to Wonderland. Falling, I fell straight onto the table. Bam. I had returned to an iteration of the Hatter's Place, sprawled out on the table. 
I glanced upward and saw that familiar pair of mismatched eyes unfamiliar. She jumped, looking surprised. Do I know you? No, not quite. Could you get off the table? I do need to put down the teas and snacks at some point, if you understand. She smiled. The hatter seemed different, as if a heavy weight had yet to settle on her shoulders. I got off the table and stood awkwardly around the familiar, unfamiliar place. The hatter sat down in her teapot. She was preparing a tea party of sorts, causing me to realize that I had never seen her do set up as things were always already on the table. What's your name? Alice. I'm Alice. You should be Hatter. Mm-hmm. She f formed her lips into an O. Looks more like a zero to me. Is there somewhere you need to go so badly that you nearly broke my table? No, I have nowhere. Well, why don't you take a seat? No one uses that armchair over there. Much too armchair, they said. You know how armchairs are, right? She made a wide smile. I hesitantly approached my armchair. The chair looked newer than in, uh, than in my before. When I sat on it, I sank into the soft cushions. Even though it reminded me of a hammer through my skull, the chair did nothing wrong. I clutched my chest. Aren't you having tea? What time is it? This person hated me. Perhaps she did not hate me yet. In the moment that she were, that we were meeting now, but she hated me all the same in the future and present. I shouldn't have cared, but my heart hurt. The clock says 15 minutes before 4. It's almost tea time. Maybe it already is. I'm waiting for March and Dormel, so it's surely not yet tea time. Tea time, after all, is just a state of mind. I see. You look sad, Alice. Do I? I raised my hand to my face, touching my cheek. I certainly was not smiling. What's your favorite tea? She retrieved the tea, a tea set up to place on the table, bringing not three cups but four. One cup and saucer was put up was put before me. I enjoy black tea. Recently, I've grown fond of Earl Grey. What about you, Hatter? She winked. I like any tea, but I, but I also uh, rather like Earl Grey. I'm not sure why it's an Earl rather than a Count or a Duke, but I'm sure the tea tastes best as best an Earl. I've heard it's named after a minister, or perhaps the minister was named after a tea. Fancy that. Your name is Grey. So Her Majesty tells you become Earl Grey. The Hatter looked happier. A film of water built up of my vision. Blurring, turning it blurry, I must have forgotten something in my eyes. A hiccup bubbled up in my throat. The water wouldn't stop. Though still smiling, she started to look worried. Why are you crying? Tears rolled down my cheeks as I hurriedly tried to wipe them away with my hands. The Hatter looked completely concerned now. Kick, kick, kick. I really cannot explain. <laughs> this is so odd. Awkwardly, she smiled. Eat cake. Do you like cake? Would you rather a sandwich or maybe something salty? If you're lacking in salt and sugar, you'll go a little crazy like that. Hmm? She poured me a cup of tea and passed me some cake with a set of utensils she was just getting out. She gave a caring look. It tastes good, Hick. 
drinking the tea and eating the cake, I noticed a much more amateurish flavor than my ha than my hatter, the future hatter, would make. However, it tasted good, and maybe it tasted happier. My shoulders shook up and down for a while. I cried for the longest time. I had cried since I was a toddler, rubbing my eyes pink. Once my tears stopped, I cleared my throat and averted my eyes from the Hatter. Compliments to you, Hatter. The Hatter beamed. Why, thank you. We sat together in a peaceful silence for a while afterward. Before she turned her head and exclaimed, There they are. Oh. So they're actually... So they're not puppets this time, they're the real thing. A sleepy little mouse and a hare with a straw hat approached from the forest path. They looked like they were just like little puppets my hatter wore. Uh, wore often on their hands. Looking at me in curiosity, they took their seats at the table. A guest? Looks like a pest. Don't be rude, March. Three's already a crowd. No room, no room. There's a crowd, but four's a party. If we get five, then... Well, we can think about that later. Don't make a girl cry, March. This is Alice. This is March Hare. This is Dormouse. Hatter poured some tea for both of them and they began to chat, glancing towards me and tugging me into the conversation even as their rambling devoted into nonsense. Halfway through each topic, the dormouse seemed to snooze off and dip her little nose into her tea by accident. Did Hatter make you cry, Alice? She's a lady killer, she is. I've always known it. Dormouse, Dormouse, wake up for the gossip. I'm right here, March. She looks like a butt. She looks like butter. It's yellow hair. Butter. She looks like a silly little... She looks a little silly, silly like her brain's been all churned up. But it looks like good butter. Well, we, we did... Get our heads bashed by a hammer, but yeah. I couldn't help but crack a smile at their antics. More sunny than buttery. Do you want bad do you want butter, Alice? No, thank you, I'm quite alright. That aside, pss, 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 Alice, Alice. The March Hare and Dormouse pulled me to the side for a private conversation. Hatter seems to fancy you. Not so directly. Haha, <laughs> don't raise your voice, Dormouse. Dormouse, shh. That's usually my line, March. You can't own lines now, can you? March is right. That... March is right. That, ha that Hatter looks fondly upon you. You do seem nice. Kind of dumb. She seems nice. I still approve. I'm just saying, alright? Be kind to Hatter. Be good to our Hatter. We can't be around her forever, so... You just have to promise this. Alice, I have a feeling that this is very important. Swear it on a stick of holy butter. I am... I won't be here for very long, but... No, I'll promise it. I swear on everything that I could ever be... On everything that could ever be precious to me that I'll treat her well if we meet again. And she's back to bed. Dormouse, Dormouse. We returned to the Hatter. The four of us continued chatting over tea. I enjoyed tea time today. I really did. Yeah. I didn't belong here, and I didn't deserve here either. I knew that my presence would just throw everything into disarray. 
finishing my tea, I stopped the Hatter from refilling my cup. The Hatter shaped her mouth in surprise. Oh, like the surprise Pikachu face. I had a wonderful time today. I have to leave. This place isn't mine, but thank you for the tea again, Hatter. Thank you too, March and Dormouse. The Hatter smiled. It was nice to be <laughs> <sighs> it was nice meeting you, Alice. I need to go make coffee. Okay, you know what? We're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna be right back.
I'm back. Got myself some more coffee. You wanna know uh, a really sad thing? Um, earlier I made like a coffee and I was pouring milk into it and then the milk was expired three days early, which is really annoying. So not only did I have to throw away the milk, I also had to throw away the coffee because the milk that I just poured in it was expired. <sighs> That's my life in a nutshell. I already knew you from... I already knew you from the future. But I was also happy to see you, Hatter. It was a shame that my Hatter didn't feel the same way. Alice... What did you feel for the Hatter? Something precious. The Hatter winked with her cheeky grin. See you later. I wanted her to be happy. Uh, I won't even attempt to say that. Giving her a weak wave, I left the happier Hatter. I left the happier Hatter. I didn't particularly have a place to go. Home, that was no longer my goal. Walking away, I wiped away the tears that welled up, that welled up again. Eventually, I was falling again. I died. That much I understood. However, I seem to have forgotten how I died this time, this last time. In a way, I knew that I couldn't keep doing this. Alice, this was a, this was your last iteration. The power letting you keep falling had already run out. The next time, you wouldn't come back to Wonderland in any time. As my body pieced itself back into place, I awaited for myself to stop falling. I burst back into my relative present and hit the ground softly. Laying back flat on the ground, I grasped at the grass below, below me and cut my fingers on their blades. Above me, the sky was terribly blue. No matter who I was, the world would, would move on without me. However, people could not so simply move on, be it a matter of hate or a matter of love or just a matter of apathy. The connections people had were difficult to sever. Before I realized that a certain person had settled into my heart. I want to see Hatter. My Hatter. Alice, you really are no good. No, it's better to say that I, that I really am no good. I had already fallen for that mad Hatter. She wormed her way into my heart. Unintentionally as she threw me on a wild duck chase for the Red Queen's dismembered, pe dismembered parts in her revenge. Also, ow, I just burned myself with the coffee. I wondered how she felt now that uh, she had her goal fulfilled. The final look on her face that I saw before I died was painful. It was painful, not because of the crushing of my skull, but because of the constriction of my heart as I looked at her. A strange girl, a lovely girl. Ultimately, a terribly kind girl who was stumbling along a bloody path. That was who the Hatter was. I'm sorry. I pushed myself up. Useless Alice had a want. Not one of obligation. Not one of what should be. Because really... Had I really wanted to go home? Not one that tutors... Not one that tutors or anyone forced upon her. What? I went to find the Hatter. I started walking. I started running. 
down that forest path once more. There she was, all by her lone, all by her lonesome. The bags under her eyes had not lightened at all, and she listlessly played with the rim of a teacup until she suddenly saw me. She frowned deeply. Why? She harshly stood up. Why did you come back? She became enraged. Why can't you just disappear? Grabbing a plate off the table, ignoring the pastry atop, atop it, she chucked it at me. Smash. The plate uh, brushed me and shattered on the ground, leaving a mangled lump of sweets and porcelain. Alice. Alice! She slammed the table, originally forcing her hands down with great momentum before suddenly slowing down as she smacked it. Hello, Lifestyle Harmony. How are you doing? Ouch. I felt... Tyndall? Tyndall? Uh, I don't know who Tyndall is. Hi, how are you doing? Wincing, the Hatter let out a pained, uh, guttural noise. Why are you like this? Sorry, I can't type properly? Ah. I hate you, Alice. Ugh. She clashed her chest and glared at me with murky, watery eyes. Why are you like this? I had no answer. She had a conflicted, wobbly frown. Your contradiction, you're, you're contradictorily cruel and kind. You're messed up, Alice. I chose one thing to be. You're a heartless, you heartless woman. I like you, but I also hate you. I also liked her. I loved her. She became enraged. You're a useless freeloader who just comes to bother me. A waste of space. She became flustered. You're Alice, who always accompanies me and extends a hand to me. The Hatter began to cry. You're the Red Queen. Monster. Killer. I hate you. She yelled as she cried, furious tears running down her cheeks. Why couldn't you have properly just died? I killed you. You're the same thing as the Red Queen. You shouldn't have come back. You... She picked up a teacup and threw it at me, smashing me right in the forehead. I stumbled back. Hot tea spilled down me, mixing with the blood that came from the simple flesh wound. The cup itself shattered into tiny pieces on the ground. Go away. She grabbed the... A bloody hammer off the table and flung it, missing me by a far margin. It whooshed through the air, spinning and lodged itself deeply into a tree behind me. My blood was still on the metal face. Tell me who you're supposed to be. Wow, I have a lot of choices here. I'm Alice. The Hatter raised her brows. The Red Queen and I are one and the same, but I am Alice. Her essence is intertwined with mine. But I am me, and me alone. I'm scared of the idea that we could become the same. I never want to become someone like her. An empty heart, an empty life. Even as she lashes out to the rest of the world, she's still empty. Admittedly, I'm also no good. I'm a heartless person who hurts others as well, but I hold just two certainties. I am Alice. Alice is me. And for the I who am Alice, you are the person who took my heart. <laughs> is it okay to say I'm Alice? Yes, you've said that like 30 times already. 
I nervously fiddled with my fingers behind my back. Uh, hello, Sheila. How you doing? I nervously fiddled with my fingers behind my back, looking at the hatter as my heart raced. I couldn't read her expression behind those mismatched eyes. I'm good, you? I'm doing alright. I'm tired as hell. But I got coffee with me. She wiped her eyes with her sleeves, opening her mouth time and time again. She seemed to have trouble finding her words. I like that Alice who is Alice. The Red Queen scares me, but I... If you would let me believe it, I want to believe that you are Alice. She made a tired frown, brows furred upset. Ever since March and Dormouse left, every time has stopped at tea time like a curse. I'm tired of tea. She cried out. Is my life just for revenge on the Red Queen? She looked up at the sky as if lost. The Red Queen is dead. Deliberately mouthing the words slowly again. She seemed to convince herself on of that reality. Then she looked back towards me. She gave me a somber smile. Alice, you are Alice. That smile disappeared as quickly as it came. She looked flustered now. Her voice grew small and she gazed downwards to her feet. I hurt you. I know. I extended a hand toward her. She who was all alone. She who stood so close yet so far. I wanted, to, I wanted her to take my hand. We were both problem children. Perhaps I was a little mad. She slowly walked before me, looking at my hand as if something foreign. She raised her brows a bit. Lifting her arm up, she reached out her hand shakingly. Her fingers trembled and hovered over my hands. For a moment, she retracted, she retracted her hand. And then, she placed her hand in mine. Let me drink my coffee because my throat is starting to give in. I love you, Hatter. Alice. She stared at me, trying to ascertain the truth of my words with a deep, shaky breath. She gave me her response. She smiled. I love you too. Would you accompany me for a dance? Give me a kiss and make me happy? She asked of me just three things. I can't make you happy. I wish I could fulfill all three of her requests. A physical item or a physical deed. Those I could easily accomplish. One of, but one of the heart I knew not if I could. I don't know if we can make each other happy. But... Place a kiss upon her lips. She frowned. That's fine. Even if I have no ability to promise such things. I want to let you be happy. You are my dearest precious... My dearest precious person. The Hatter smiled somberly. I want you to be happy, Alice. That makes me happy. She looked at me fondly. Not just like this. More so... Is it just me or is, does this style, this art style look like different from everything else we've seen so far? I don't know, the, the art style just looks different. Might just be like a perspective thing. I guess we've never seen these characters to like looking at the side. I took her hand and we danced upon the table. Spinning about our feet tangled with the tablecloth. Uh, and tea set strewn about. She pulled her hat off. She, pull she pulled her hat off for a moment. We looked at each other with sad smiles. 
Potter. Not that I think, but does she not even have a name? Her name is just Hatter. If the world were to end tomorrow, what would you do? I have nothing left here for me, Alice. So I suppose I, I suppose I would do nothing. You're still right here with me, aren't you? Hmm. She was so light. I wish I could show you my world. But I'm not a particularly spectacular world. Rather, it's utterly unfantastical. Yet, there were things that I liked. Maybe my siblings, or better, the two cats. Do you care for cats at all? I would have liked that. I pulled her along, leading a mad dance, leading the mad dance with no music. We moved to the erratic tempo of our hearts together. Alice, hmm? Why did you fall in love with me? Maybe it was just fate. Maybe it was just luck. Meeting you time and time again here, I grew fonder and fonder of you. At first, I simply thought you were lonely, but eventually I fell in love with, you, with your heart. Of, I've never known about love before. I'm not sure if I can truly explain why my heart beats as it does for you, Hatter. Even that aside, you're cute, you can cook and sew and brew good tea. You're warm. You're actually rather kind. What about me? I should ask that to you instead. Happiness. Probably we had no such fate, but we wished for it. Finally, we fell. Falling, falling, falling. We're falling. Down this rabbit hole. With no start nor end. We were falling together. I knew not where we would fall, for, th for there were no more wonderlands for us to fall to. That world we just fell from had been the very last interac- in I iteration. Never mind, I thought I said interaction. Iteration. I embraced the Hatter and closed my eyes. How warm she was. The person who I treasured. I only asked for a world where we could be happy together. Surely we would meet again in a land much more wonderful than this. Somewhere, sometime, surely. Oh. That's it? Oh. Well, that was the game. Oh, and this is bothering me. Let me... Okay, the credits are still rolling. Let me just really quickly remove capture cursor. Alice ending. Thank you for playing. What? There's multiple endings? Hold on. Wait. Alice ending? Does that mean that there's a... That there's a... That there's also a Red Queen ending? Hold on. Who is the Red Queen? All endings. Yep. Oh my god, hold on. The White Queen ending, Alice ending, Red Queen ending, and all of the dead ends that... Yeah, there's a... Uh... Um... Alright, let me try and go back and experiment a little bit. Here I have to... Did I fuck up on, the, on this? Um. 
Uh, can you go a little faster? Oh, skip. Yep, skip, 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 skip. Thank you. There we go. Alright. That's what I needed. Okay, um... Alright, let's try killing the bird. The more it chirped, the worse its voice grated on my ears. I picked up the bird in my hand, thinking I should shut it up. You shouldn't offer things you can't accomplish. Chirp. Without thinking, I squeezed the bird in my hand. It let out a strangled cry. Hold on, really quick. Uh, there we go. I let out a strangled cry and pecked at my skin. And pecked at my skin it could hit. Squirming and wriggling before it went still between my fingers. Now my palm was dirty, dripping with bird. I shook my hands as if that would help get rid of some of the filth and wiped the rest off of a handkerchief that I surely had to throw away. After the failed first attempt at the key, I returned to the White Queen's side. She looked fitting in the cage. Pretty, like a flower preserved, forever in glass. Again, I thought that she was beautiful. Really, she was beautiful. That's true, Alice. Even so, I couldn't let her stay trapped, not to mention the Red Queen's leg. I wasn't able to find a way out. Honestly, I've, I've read this. Let's... Uh, let me... Alright. Wait, no. Maybe not here. Um... I can never write this. I don't need that anymore. I don't think. Let me shrink. Eating a mushroom from the right, I immediately began to shrink. The world around me swelled in size. I became tiny, so tiny I could disappear. Before I could look around, a gust of strong wind blew from my feet. Picked myself up. My feet and saw a monstrous bird before me, lo looming over a my body with a great shadow. No. I had been the one who shrunk. So the bird was not monstrous. I was simply diminished. The ground trembled as, I, as it stepped towards me. As if to step on me. I rolled just out of the way. Chirp, you killed her. Who again? Cheap. My unintentionally voiced question was a mistake. The bird lunged at me. I made a mad dash out of the way, just barely avoiding the hurting mass that came at me. That came my way. Just as I gasped to catch my breath, its clawed foot slammed down on me. A talon pierced through my shoulder. I heard bone crack. The bird grabbed me and threw me like a rag doll to the ground. Again, forcing the air out of my lungs, pushing down on the screaming pain in my body. I focused on my racing heart and tried to get away, only to be hit by the bird again. I bit through my tongue in shock and choked out a mouthful of spit and blood. Its beak snapped around one arm and tore. Rip. The bird crushed down on my leg and pulled. Next one another next one the other leg. This is what you get. It screamed with a mouthful with a mouthful of my blood, chucking my limbs across the grass. My remaining arm extended forward to grab the ground and try to get away. My consciousness spun. I didn't know which way I was going. I just needed to get away. I just needed to drag this body away somewhere. Everything turned so cold already. I was going to die. I was going to die. I... The bird stepped on me. With all of its weight. And with one... No. Two. Three vicious stabs. Chopped off the last arm into a pulp. Crack. Squelch. The bird was a mon- This bird was a monster. I twisted my neck to look at the thing that would kill me. 
I was going to kill this thing if I had a chance. With one thrust, its beak gored through my head. Splat. There you go, dead end. 86% of the script. Alright, load. Okay. Yeah, that's why I saved. Um, really quick, right? I want to see what happens. Pet the bird. And then... Grow. I would left mushroom and immediately began to grow. My line of sight rose higher and higher as if I were a bean sprout. Once I stopped growing, I could reach the top of the towering tree if I reached out my arm. Fantastically, my clothes grew with me. I cautiously pinched the silver key and removed it from the tree, holding it lightly as to not break it with my now giant hands. The key I now had... The key I now had, but the cage I could not open. I was much too big. Okay. Let me load this. And it's the same, okay. I was curious if, like, there was a difference with, um... Alright, check out the party. Took out the invitation that the white rabbit had delivered to me. Oh, okay, never mind, this is the same. You know what? Bring the hatter. I returned to the hatter who was having her usual tea time and invited her. Hatter, when you accompany me to accompany me to the ball? She sneered. I'd rather not. She glared at me with that displeased smile. Oh this did you have any re any did you have to request it that way? I'll trade you a favor. A favor for a favor. If you'll come to the ball with me, I can do something for you. Take some pity. Alice has no friends. No friends, no pets, no siblings, no one. None. Do favors, have favors like butter. Wait, do favors have flavor like butter? Okay. I would say I have at least one of the above. What sort of flavor... What No, what sort of favor would you offer me, Alice? A limb? A tongue? A heart? Alice, you don't have anything that I want that I can't get myself. She momentarily grinned ordinarily. A cup for your sandwich, Alice. Here's the salt. I passed her the pepper as she slid the salt and a cup of tea over to me. Fiddling with the salt container, I tasted a spoonful of humiliation atop my tongue. I have no friends. She says she has no friends. She really has no friends. The hatter pouted. You have no friends? What am I? March's favorite old butter stick? Her glare bored into me. Well, if you would. If you would. Zzz, she says it. I would really rather not. A hatter doesn't matter around the nobles. Um, a hatter doesn't matter around the nobles. Who just like the flatter. I'm no good with nobles. After all, I'm just a hatter. For a second, her voice dipped. Her expression became somber. Hatter is, be is better off all alone. I barely heard the hatter's low words. She sneered again. And it's also still tea time. How can we go off to a ball when we've yet to finish afternoon tea? She steered, tea, she steered her tea, watching as I slumped into my seat and played with, her, with the salt. Then the Hatter gave me a lonely look. But I appreciate you. My heart skipped a beat. Why? Alice, 
just why did you find that slight smile somewhat charming? Clink. The sound of my teaspoon hitting against the rim of my cup broke me out of my thoughts. I looked down. Putting the cup to my mouth, I took a sip and found that I had put salt into my tea. Terrible. Oh god. She smiled. I'll accompany you, Alice. When is this ball? Anytime. The Hatter sneered. It's not very nice of you to say it. Say, it's not tea time. Uh, it's not tea time here, then. Not very good of you to be biased against tea time, don't you know? We finished off our tea and sandwiches. After a few more sips, I sneakily dumped the salted tea behind my armchair. The Hatter put the Dormouse and March hat hair away. After lingering at the tea table for a few moments longer, we've got up to leave. She waved goodbye to the puppets, hesitant as if scared of leaving this place. Then, we used the shoddy map, map on the back of the invitation card to find our way to the Duchess's place. Um, hold on. I'm actually going to save... And I am going to go back here. Nope. That was almost really bad. Okay. So this is the part where basically we need to pick who is going to be the chess piece. So the white queen. Do you trust me? She made a sad smile. I do. Choosing to do this means you put your safety into my hands. White Queen, are you certain that you trust me? Then she gave me a confident smile. Yes, I trust you, Alice. Her eyes met mine, filling me with discomfort, as although she trusted me, I did not trust me. Given the responsibility for another person, I knew not if I could fulfill her expectations. I directed her to be the king to be protected. The white piece, already on the board, handed over a fake white crown and a sword to the white queen, taking his leave so that she could walk into position. I started with the first move. Clang clashed. My white pieces fell, but so did the duchess's black pieces. For each of hers, I took down. For each of hers I took down, she captured one of mine. Setting us evenly on our score. Each time I looked at the game, I assert I ascertain that the White Queen was out of arm's way. If she were to be taken down, the game would end. If she were to be taken down, I would have failed her trust. Alice, you were soft hearted today. I placed my hand to my chin. Pondering what my next move should be. Perhaps to... Giving her hints would be cheating. Your Majesty, the White Queen. At this moment, you are playing a piece on the board. And therefore may not speak. That's a shame. You are a very amusing person, Alice. Still, I feel sorry for letting... Her enter your hands. The Duchess saw something that I did not see. I will take that as a compliment, Duchess. Our game continued till neither of us had many pieces left on the board. Surveying the results of my formulaic strategies, I found the light, the light of victory. I nodded towards the White Queen, who had seen the same thing. Checkmate, Duchess. My White Queen cut down the Black King. The Duchess clapped her hands. The White Queen was smiling. Congratulations. This is my loss. Even facing my challenge fair and square, you have ultimately opened the- oh wait. Oh, and this is the same. Oh, in the end it was... Um... um... 
So this might just turn out the same. Where is the... Mm, uncut Alice's tongue. No, this is the same. Uh, load. This again. Where is the tongue? I'm pretty sure that this is all the same. This is probably the same ending, meaning that the choice doesn't matter. Okay, never mind. Um, alright, let me load. I don't need this anymore in that case. Yes. Go back here, then. Loading will lose... Yes, yes, yes. After a walk, we arrived at the manor. It resembled a large white castle towering against the day sky with pointed roofing. The hatter shook her legs as if uh, it just... As if just that bit of walking had tired her out. Then again, the bags under her eyes conveyed that she hadn't slept well for a while. A guard stopped us at the entrance. Halt, please show your invitation card. I handed the guard the card. Can I, can I, can I rephrase this thing? Okay, I handed the card to the guard. He looked it over, glancing at me and the hatter before returning to me. Before returning it to me. The guard gestured and led us inward a few steps through the entranceway. To enter, guests must provide an arm. The arm will be returned to you whenever you wish to leave the party. An arm? A limb? The guard nodded. Please provide an arm. Uncharacteristically, the Hatter said nothing the entire time to... To the guard. She warily uh, looked at his shift sword and shuffled behind me. You may not enter without providing an arm. Okay, let me save here. Yes, you want. I want to override the save. Let me offer my own arm. This guard was getting annoying. This guard was getting annoying, repetitive. Please provide an arm. Would this arm suffice? I extended my own arm to the guard, goading him to take it. If an arm the entrance required, then an arm I would provide. The guard nodded, leading us to the side and having me keep the arm outstretched above a table. He retrieved a clean, shining blade. The blade glittered with the sun like the moon, slashed. The clean cut, my arm came straight off. It fell to the table with a small bounce. A sharp pain hit me in the next moment. I stumbled back into into the hatter, gritting my teeth as blood rushed out of my rushed out of the wood wound rushed out of the wound and dripped red red red. I could still sense my arm. A phantom pain attached to the bone. I clutched at the wound, although my still attached hand never touched the flesh itself. It soon became covered in blood as it shook near the stump. A doctor arrived with some sort of medicine that she applied to the wound. A ghostly chill covered ghostly chills covered the hurt till it turned to but an aching. Once the bleeding ceased, the bandage in my injury warning me not to remove the bandage before I reobtained my arm. Shaking her head about mad nobles, she left. Alice, could you reattach such a limb? You weren't a lizard, but a mere human. A little lightheaded, I shook off the question. Alice. The guard retrieved my arm, placing it into a sealed box before handing it over to another servant 
who took it away to a safe place. You may enter, esteemed guests. The guard began to lead us in. Alice, why are you like this? What are you talking about, Hatter? Let me see... Uh, what that looks like with... Oh, I can't... I didn't save. No. Um, let me just really quickly see what it looks like with the White Queen. Um, and I do want to save. Put it here. Offer my own arm. Look towards the White Queen. Alice, why not chop off the White Bird's arm? You had already taken one Royal's arm. So another... So another's arm was not much more. I shook my head to dispel the thoughts. Would this arm suffice? I extended my own arm to let the guard... Uh, to the guards, ignoring that the White Queen tugged on my cloak while shaking her head to tell me to rethink. The guard nodded, leading us to the side and having to keep the arm outstretched above the table, he retrieved a clean shining blade. The blade glittered with the sun like the moon. Slash. With a clean cut, my arm came straight off. It fell to the table with a small bounce. A sharp pain hit me the next moment. I stumbled back into the White Queen, gritting my teeth as blood rushed out of the wound and dripped red, red, red. She reached out a cold hand to touch my shoulder. I squeezed my eyes shut in expectation of a jolt of pain to run down, to, to run down that now severed arm. However, the pain never arrived. A numbness filled my flesh. A numbness filled my flesh. The red seemed too slow. White Queen. A doctor arrived with some sort of medicine uh, that she applied to the wound. Once the bleeding ceased, the bandage, the ba she bandaged my injury, warning me not to remove the bandage before I reobtained my arm. She made a, respect a respectful bow towards the to towards the white queen. Oh my god, my fucking tongue doesn't work. Pause on that. Alice, could you reattach such a limb? You weren't a lizard, but a mere human. A little lightheaded, I shook off. A little lightheaded, I shook off the question. The guard retrieved my arm, placing it into a sealed box before handing it off to another servant who took her away to a safe place. Please enter, esteemed guests. The guard began to lead us in. Alice, this was not necessary. What was on your mind before you offered your arm? Nothing in particular. Okay. So if I now skip everything. Hmm. Oh, I won't be much good at dancing without an arm. The White Queen frowned. I extended my my stump arm out of out from under my cloak, waving it before her as a reminder. Perhaps I had been too hasty earlier in chopping it off. She gave me a sheepish look. Sheepish look. Ah. Another time? She smiled sadly. Yes, another time. As we idled about, a single gentleman approached the White Queen, stumbling over his words as he invited her for a dance. She looked towards me for confirmation, but I couldn't exactly stop her, so I made a non-committal gesture. Her choices were her own. She took his hand, and they went for a dance. Eye-catching. She was really eye-catching. I couldn't. I couldn't look away. Uh, I couldn't look away from her as she would somehow disappear. She was pretty incomprehensible. She was pretty incomprehensibly so in my heart. While I watched, she met my gaze from far away and mouthed words I could not decipher. How unpleasant, watching her in the hands of another. Even if just for one dance. The music stopped along with the dancing. It was at this time that the Duchess made her appearance- Oh wait, okay. This one I can skip. Hmm. 
Now I'm just going to... S oh, the Duchess gestured over the servant with the prize and handed the leg to the White Queen. I hope you enjoy the rest of the ball. And your majesty, the White Queen, do come visit uh, whenever you would like to talk with me again. The White Queen opened the box for me. Inside lied my arm, and a small jar of the same medicine from before. My arm still looked fresh. Her expression was troubled. I unraveled my bandage to find an unchanged wound. Popping the arm back onto the stump, I felt a strange knitting sensation at the connection point. I applied some medicine to the arm. With a squitching sound, my arm was reattached. The only remnant of its severance was a thin pink line that slowly faded into my skin. The White Queen passed the Red Queen's severed leg to me. I will leave you with the limb. Do you want to meet with the Red Queen again? Uh, I can skip this, okay. And I think from now on I... Mm. Let me see really quick, so... Kyle's is telling him no. Pretty sure most of this is, yeah, the same. Where's the tongue? Is this all the same? It's all the same, isn't it? Mm, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is all the same. Okay. Um, but I do want to save the um, load over this. And just to see some extra dialogue, I'm curious. Alice, let me. The White Queen looked worried. The White Queen directed me to step onto the board as the king piece. While I was given a fake white crown and a sword, I was to stay out of danger. Her gaze was deathly serious. She started with the first move. She appeared worried. With each command she gave to the human chess pieces, she came closer and closer to a speedy victory against the Duchess. Uh, black pieces fell one by one. Then the Duchess spoke. Did you want to keep her in a cage like you were? The White Queen stumbled, direct, directing her knight to a position that she did not intend for him to go, allowing him to be cut down by the Duchess's pawn. The Duchess was a destruction. Distraction. White Queen. No, no, a piece on the board cannot speak. We are the players and you are but a game piece. Sending the Duchess a dirty look, I shut my mouth. Oops. The shackles that our dearest majesty bound you with have still not been removed despite all that you have done. Why is that? My matters do not need to be spoken of. The White Queen made a series of bad moves as the Duchess talked. This is unhealthy, your majesty, the White Queen. Before long, the losses on both sides of the board evened out. Taking advantage of the White Queen's state of disarray, the Duchess began her assault. One by one, our remaining white pieces fell. Blood spilled on the floor. Staining white armor red, the red, red, red made the White Queen shiver and avert her eyes with pursed lips. The Black Queen came before me, and both the White Queen and I saw no way out. This is our loss. Checkmate. I raised my sword to block as the Black Queen raised her own, expecting nothing more than a mock show to, of swordplay followed by my surrender. However, her blade came rushing down at me with a sharp clang. The sword in my one-handed grasp went flying. Her sword cut into my flesh as if I were made of butter, ripping out a swath of meat and blood onto the floor. Choking in pain, I toppled to the ground and tried to stop the bleeding. Red, red, red spurt all over my single hand that shakily pressed against the wound. 
too much large. The Black Queen kicked my head like a ball with an ugly snap, forcing me down even further. Before stomping down onto the freshly cut wound. I tried to drag myself away with my bloodied single arm. She skewed me to the ground with her sword and stepped down onto my arm with her armored black foot. Pressing down on that elbow till we all heard a loud crack. A contorted voice escaped my mouth. Cold tears welled up in my eyes. I thought you would have liked this. No, not Alice. I heard a thump as the White Queen fell to her knees, her expression blurred in my hazy vision. Poor dear. The Black Queen stomped down on me. Again. Forcing my insides out from the hole in my body with a squelch. Things that were never meant to come out dribbled to the ground. I tried to call out to the White Queen, but only chunks of squishy material came up my throat in a wheezing red noise. You can't let go after all. You can't let go after all you did. Your White Majesty, even if your domain is... T even if your domain is time, are you aware that your own heart's time seems to have stopped? Everything turned to darkness. Tick. Must we try again? Talk. Dead end. Death 5. Script scene 73. Yeah. I'll take it. Load. Um... Wait, no. Off the Red Queen's arm. I crossed my arms and tapped my feet as the guard repeatedly repeated his blocking swords a handful of times more. While the thought of offering my own limbs came up, I decided against it. As such, we needed to find another arm to give. While I'm loath to suggest this, we do have to, a spare arm back at the tea table. Her Majesty sure wouldn't mind, don't you think? Yes, indeed. She had no time to speak with otherwise. With that, we made a trip back to Hatter's to the Hatter's place. The Hatter hopped over to the dog cage um, we had set by the Red Queen. Popping it open, she pulled out a severed arm and quickly slammed the door shut. The limb flailed in the Hatter's hands. Until she was unceremoniously tossed, until she unceremoniously tossed it to me. This was the this was the Red Queen's arm. Yes, this arm. Doned in a torn, stained regal dress, regal red sleeve with black ruffles. The Hatter sneered. I never quite thought that I would accompany Her Majesty to a ball. It gives me the shivers. To me, it felt so obvious that this was the Red Queen's arm. I wonder if someone will recognize the arm. We could certainly be in a good deal of trouble. And I would prefer not to have the trouble of getting the arm back if, somebody, if someone tries to take it away. They won't with Wonderland. They won't want it to recognize it anyhow. I've been here for a while, but still, this logic fascinates me. Wonderland. We took a tea break, according to the Hatter. It was still tea time, after all. The Hatter gave me a lonely look. Shall we go to the ball, Midlady? Although I'm afraid I've got no pumpkin carriage, nor glass slippers for you. She winked and grinned. You're charming enough to- You're charming enough as it is. Lead the way, Alice. Arm in hand, we return to the Duchess's manor. The guard greeted us with the same phrases, asking for an arm as the entrance fee, to which we responded by handing over the arm that we had retrieved. He glanced at both of us, nothing that neither of us were missing in them. 
the guard handed it off to a servant a servant who put it into a sealed box and took it away for safekeeping nonetheless you may enter esteemed guests we arrived at the duchess's ballroom the floor was wide open and remarkably polished the golden chandeliers hung above the light reflecting against the floor a few chairs sat between the large rounded windows and windows a painting sat on the farthest wall although the the hostess was nowhere to be found. Service milled around the floor with refreshments for the guests. A quartet performed in the front. Food sat at the tables to the side of, of the room. All around were faceless people dressed up like clowns. Faceless people... Uh, they were uninteresting people. They sent a few glances away as we came without much fanfare. Already I didn't like them. Perhaps it was their beady pig-like eye, pig -like eyes. Uh, for all they were faceless, for all that they were faceless, I saw only clowns and swine. I approached a group thinking to gain some information. Hello. Hello to you as well. The guests seemed wary upon seeing me, but showed a displeased reaction upon laying eyes on the Hatter, who had reluctantly followed me along. And the peasant? Which one was it? Ah, the one with the vermin. Where are your little raggedy friends? The rat? And the hare? The Red Queen's little pet was happy to see them gone. The rabbit's always been like that. Rather than the rutting, she likes the cutting. Ugh. An animal in such a position, I really do not approve. Her Majesty likes it. Well, she's gone now. You shouldn't say that. Speak of the devil. Speak of the devil and she will come. The devil indeed. It's a shame that the White Queen's always been a fool. A pretty bird, but as a ruler? The Red Queen liked her well enough, and certainly from the rumors, she's done something quite pleasant. For us, you mean. Don't jinx it. The group stage whispered amongst themselves as they appointed to the Hatter like they were looking at a spectacle. The Hatter at the time was simply staring off into space. Is that a lunatic glaring at us? This is the problem with peasants. It's staring at us. My, how uncomfortable. I can't believe the thing rolls around with the animals. Toot toot. The animals are, are all gone. That's the least that Her Majesty has done for us in her pretty red reign of pretty red rain. Now let's get away from the filth. The stench of vermin is unbearable. I must ask the Duchess about who can be let into her ballroom. A servant passed by with a tray full of champagne. One of the guests removed two flutes from the tray and offered me one with a slur in her words. Have some alcohol. Did you have some business with us? No. I shook my head and turned away. Drink should be shared only in pleasant company. Let's have our let's have our leave from these people, Hatter. Chitter chatter chitter chatter. I noticed the other guests making snide comments on the Hatter and giving her a side eye while stepping back from the from me of all people. 
saying those things to my person. Someone who was mine, my hatter, they deserve punishment. Capital or otherwise. That was right, Alice. What a shame that I had no such power. The hatter looked rather upset. We moved to the sides where the food was... Seeing as few people lingered by refreshments for long. The two of us picked up some cakes and snacks. A smile finally came to her face while we ate, albeit a sad one. As I tasted it, I couldn't help but feel the Hatter made better food. A tingly sensation spread through my body as I ate. Hatter, uh, mmm, ah. Uh. <laughs> what is this? My voice changed pitches as I talked. At one moment, I sounded squeaky as a mouse, and the next, as low as an elephant. The Hatter grinned. <laughs> ah, me too. Playing with the odd refreshments, we found ourselves speaking like animals. Meow. Woof. Meow meow. Woof woof woof. I wondered what she said. She looked so pleased as if she had made the world's greatest joke that I had just gone unheard. Next we tried the pudding. Discomfort filled my heart as if something dirty was coming out with each pulse. Vich squeeze of the ventricle pushing blood through the aorta. Uh, aor the Hatter looked a bit upset. She began to frown. I hate this. She frowned even deeper. I hate you. I don't know how I deal with a bed. A, a bed lamet dog like you. What the fuck does that mean? The Hatter sneered. I really, really, really hate you. It's red. The red. Red, red's a fault. Red's fault. I'll kill. They're dead, dead, dead. I'm so alone. So I'm alone. The Hatter blocked her words and stuffed the cookie into her mouth. She looked rather flustered. Woof. What needs to be done, has to be done, but once it's done, we should certainly purge. It's been such a long time, I've got to punish that little bird. And you, your head will make a good decoration. There's not a worthy cell inside. You're a lunatic and a fool. Putting a hand over my mouth and clenching my jaw, I shut up as well. I shut up as well, tilt the distortion in my heart disappeared. The Hatter frowned for a moment. I didn't mean to say any of that. The pudding must have twisted our words. The Hatter smiled. I, I as well. Had it, Alice. What? As we experienced the strange food, the other guests continued to mingle and dance. This was a ball, so... Ball things they did. The music stopped along with the chatter. It was at this time that fuck. It was at this time the Duchess made her appearance. She was a future featureless woman who hid her face. Instinct told me she was ugly, yet I couldn't see anything. Not disfigurement nor beauty. She existed as the Duchess, but could not be seen. She was only perceived. Tonight, we have a special gift to be given to a single guest. She gestured, and the servant behind her came up with an item hidden under a red claw. A hushed whispering ran through the ballroom as everyone guessed uh, what could be hidden underneath that would make the Duchess consider it special. We are holding a chess tournament, the usual game that ends when the king has fallen. Even here, where the king has long gone. Of course, the winner will receive the prize. The servant removed the cloth. All around. All around, the guests let out a collective gasp. What do you ask? Wait, what you may ask? Why? 
it could only be our dearest majesty's leg. There was a severed leg at the Red Queen's left leg. From the looks of the limb, it could fit perfectly onto the torso. Uh, torso stump sitting at the Hatter's place. Like the previous leg, it too was dressed in a black tie and adorned a red shoe and had a red ribbon. May the best strategist win. The Duchess clapped. The servant began to move out, setting up tables and chess sets in a matter of minutes. With a matchup, uh, with a matchup list created, the tournament started. As I made my moves with Hatter, I thought back to all the chess I had played at, for the tutors. They would be relieved that at least I hadn't forgotten anything and everything. Losing each time had been a painful ordeal, so I too was glad that I remembered. The Hatter had a brilliant strategic mind. I watched as she flung her queen into a crowd of pawns only, to, only for it to be eaten alive. She had a twisted smile on her face as she did so. Most of the time, we made our way to the final, where we met with the last opponent. Not at a table, but in a cleared out space in the ballroom with a large chessboard overlaid. The Hatter was grinning. The last opponent was the Duchess. Around her lined up uh, around her lined up stood one and a third dozen soldiers dressed up in black and black like chess pieces. What is this? Why human chess? Chess is an imitation of bloody war. In this land without war, we must take steps to make life more interesting. This is what our dearest majesty proclaimed. One of you two have to take the role of a piece, and otherwise I will provide other pieces for you to play with. I exchanged glances with the Hatter. Even now I couldn't understand what uh, went on in those eyes, but I had already decided. Maybe I didn't want to see her potentially get hurt, as no one here cared for the life of a Hatter. Odd. Oddest Otter. What a thought to have. I rather liked her. I will take the role of a piece. Oh, hold on, this is different. Um, I'll write this because I don't need to. I don't need the white queen's thing anymore. Um, she's good with the queen, so let's do queen. I chose to take the queen's piece role. For the queen had the greatest power on the board. I donned a fake white crown and was given a sword. The Hatter narrowed her eyes with the same smile. Our white pieces shuffled in and took their positions on the board. Soon enough, the chessboard was set. Was set. A human-sized version of the strategy game unfolded. The Hatter started with the first move. Clan clash. One by one, the pieces on the board fell almost like dominoes. The Hatter was frowning. Perhaps night to a... Uh, no, no, a piece on the board cannot speak. We are the players, and you are but a game piece. Finally, the queen came into play. I played with the sword in my hand. The hilt rolled com comfortably in my palm, pleasant yet strange, as if I didn't use the sword much. I didn't, but was still perfectly fine with committing acts of violence with one. Now swordsmanship was one thing that the tutors hadn't bothered teaching. After all, it wasn't fitting for a lady. They really shouldn't have... They really should have as it turned out that I was quite good at cutting things down after some short exhibition blows. The Hatter directed me across the board. I attacked as told. Warm, sticky red sprayed all over me. What do you call yourself these days again? Alice? I see. We moved around the board in a perfectly in a perfect match, letting our other pieces back me up, and cornered the Duchess's black king in no time. The Hatter grinned devilishly. Checkmate? Checkmate. I wonder if I had killed a king before. The Duchess clapped her hands in congratulations. The servants cleared the floor, 
wiping it down. They made it once more sparkly clean, as if red and not just been spilled in a human uh Faxim, fa fa facsimile of a game. One came along with a wet towel for me to wipe away anything that had gotten on me during the match. Congratulations, you are a true pair of master strategists. With this, the competition has concluded, and you two are the winners. Would you like to take your prize now? The Hatter shaped her lips into an O. Yes. The Hatter bobbed her head up and down rapidly. The Duchess gestured a servant over. Our dearest Majesty's leg. Uh, our dear Maj Majesty's leg, do take care of it. Um, well, lest she comes back and has you punished for disrespecting the crown. She took the leg from the servants and handed it to me. I hope you enjoy the rest of the ball. The Duchess left again, her servant following after her. She seemed to have enjoyed the chess tournament. Just as quickly as she left, the chess setups were cleared away. The guests returned to eating, drinking and dancing. Let's leave. She made a lonely smile. She had no intention to stay. Neither had I, having accomplished the unexpected boon of finding a piece of the Red Queen. We maneuvered through the manor, eventually finding ourselves in a long hallway, just as regular as the ballroom. A red carpet rolled out along its length. We found a servant to leave, and we were redirected outward. He retrieved the sealed box with our entrance, entrance fee and handed it over. We exited through the building and came to a garden. We had taken a wrong turn. It was an elegant garden, with plenty of flowers and triangular hedges. In the center was a fountain. Looking around, we spotted an exit at the far end of the garden, and the, had, uh, and the Hatter made a move to leave. I called out to stop her, extending a hand. We didn't have a chance to dance. When you give me the honor of one dance, Hatter? I won't. Ah. Maybe just one, maybe just one with you, Alice. She made an awkward smile. I can't dance. I'm dexter. I'm I'm dex. I'm dexterous with my hands, but not so much with my feet. Hatter doesn't fit well with these things. Isn't that a, is it is isn't that a problem? She hesitant, hesitantly stretched out her hand. Fingers hovering over mine. She looked somber. Don't worry. Let me lead. I took her hand and we danced, humming in place of an instrumental quartet. I led her in steady steps, ignoring the way she stumbled over my feet. Left, right, left, right. Perhaps this was the most enjoyable dance I'd, ha I'd had yet. I twirled the hatter around. She was so light. Alice. Hmm? She still had that lonely, awkward, somber expression on her face. Alice. Hatter? You might not be so bad after all. She made an expression like she wanted to cry. I rather like you, Alice. Only Alice. I rather liked her too. I gave her another twirl, and she let go. I reached out my fingers, but she moved her hand away. The Hatter ho hopped back with a skip and, and spin. Thus, she stood by her lonesome. Close your eyes, Alice. I did as she said. I felt her roughly stuff the leg into my arms. I heard a faint tapping noise reminiscent of footsteps moving away from me. And then there was nothing. I waited and waited and waited. Alice, how long did you want to wait for her? I waited a long time, clutching the leg in my hands. When I opened my eyes, the Hatter was nowhere to be seen. Did she leave me behind? Although I walked around the garden... She was nowhere to be found. I decided to leave as well. Taking one last pass through the garden, I made I made my way through the exit. I was back on the forest path. A sudden vertigo struck me. I must have had a long day. I reasoned as I held 
a hand up to my forehead while trying to steady myself. My brain spun like a sloshed up pit of mud. The, discom the discomfort in my heart returned. I leaned back against the tree to take a break, looking upward, eyelids flickering. I wonder if the sky had always looked so far away. The sun was beginning to set, orange hues beginning to enter the picture. My free hand, propped against the bark, slid downward unconsciously. I closed my eyes for a moment. Darkness. Okay, this is all thing I, I already... In first step... But, oh! Let me save this. This is one that I was going to... White Queen. Looking around, I found that I was at the White Queen's garden. Hmm? A raspy sound flowed out of my... Flowed out my throat like gravel. Swallowing, I let out a grubble from the discomfort. I rolled to my side in discomfort before... Turning about again. Feeling both a heat burning the back of my neck and a chill running through my whole body. Alice... You still caught cold like- Alice, you still caught cold like this. You were already so big. Drink some water, Alice. The White Queen appeared by my side. Uh, with a cup of warm water. Lifting the cup to my mouth, she slowly tilted it for me to drink. Clumsy as she was, much of the water spilled past my lips. When she retrieved the ball of an un-, un unidentifiable dark liquid that smelled not quite like wine, yet not quite like anything else either. I had some medicine prepared for you. It should help you get better. I opened my mouth like a baby bird as she moved a spoonful of medicine towards me. As it entered my mouth, I recoiled in disgust, sputtering at the taste. The metal of the spoon Knocked against my throat, throwing me into a coughing fit and spilling the spoonful. Ah, so you're right. The White Queen quickly moved the spoon away, taking a wet towel from a fairy light. From a fairy light, she wiped away the spilled medicine. This is just medicine. It's bleh, bitter. Must I drink it all? The medicine is good for you, Alice. In this world, there are many painful, bitter things that are good for you. So it would be best if you take it. I could not disagree. But the way her voice dipped made my heart ache. I wanted to disagree. Disregarding the taste that made me want to hurl, I took the bowl from... Uh, I took the bowl from her and gulped the medicine all down. I resisted gas gagging as I swallowed it. Bitter. This medicine was medicine was too much bitter. I have not had enough sleep. My eyes watered from disgust. Good, Alice. She petted my head. Then she popped a piece of candy into my mouth. A sweet milky flavor melted in my mouth, masking the bitter but not completely riding my tongue of, of its misfortune. Sweet. The candy was sweet. I like sweet. After I finished the candy, the White Queen gave me some more warm water and had me continue laying down to rest. White Queen, you're a little clumsy, but I appreciate you taking care of me. I haven't had anyone. She held my hand and squeezed reassuringly that she was here. Thank you. I let out a yawn, feeling a haze float into my mind. Perhaps the medicine had begun to take effect. No, I... Alice, you're different from her. She never, ever showed me this side. Not even at the very end. Not even then. She murmured to herself, thinking that I would not hear. Alice, perhaps she was looking at you now, although she was always looking far away. Perhaps at this moment she was looking at you, even just a little. My eyelids grew so heavy that I couldn't keep my eyes open any longer. Good night, Alice.
She laid a kiss on my forehead. Too tired to say anything in response, I fell into the realm of dreams. After a few days of rest under the uh, White Queen's care, I recovered to full health. I never wanted to taste medicine again. She gave me a sheepish smile. When you assemble the Red Queen, will you come visit again? Maybe if I have the chance before I go. The White Queen appeared disappointed. Bidding goodbye to the White Queen, I stopped by the Hatter's place to drop off a limb. Then I returned to the path. The Red Queen was nearly assembled, missing only her head and fourth limb. Onward I continued with my search so that she could send me home. I was on the forest path. I thought back to the Cheshire's cat taunting provocations. Okay, and from here I can... Uh... To, uh, not a cliff. Alright, this one I didn't read. I tumbled through the bushes, rolling in the direction the sign said was not a cliff. As I made good distance from the cat, I felt a ground disappear underneath me. Whoosh. It was all air below me. In a desperate flail, I grabbed onto a rock on the cliffside with one hand. I should have expected this from Wonderland. My injured shoulder throbbed as I tried to use that arm's hand for a second uh, for a second point on the cliff. I found that I couldn't pull my weight with that side. My uninjured side barely clung on. The rock dug into my flesh and my fingers creaked. A trickle of blood started down my palm. The rock as well shuddered as a hairline fracture showed itself. I tried to find a foothold with my legs, but even the slightest swing could throw me downward to my demise. With the angle of the cliff, I had nowhere to try. I winced. Still here? The Cheshire Cat looked down on me. Pacing back and forth, she pretended to contemplate what to do, uh, what to do next while her shoulders Shook with mirth. I squeezed my eyes shut to try and block out my dizziness. Why are you doing this? I had a bit of a revelation that Wonderland was mad. That's all. You and I, we're all mad. We both seem to have forgotten something very important. Even now, I can't seem to remember what it is. It's just about... It's just about a madness, Alice. I see. Sweat... Probably more blood than sweat made my grip on the rock slippery. Amusement at seeing me struggle showed on the cat's face as her grin grew uh, and her tail of black flame roared. I don't suppose you'd not, I don't suppose you'd help me up? Depends on what you mean. She extended her right arm and grabbed my wrist with a firm pull. She tore my hand off my rock and helped me up by the wrist. I saw the daytime sky. I dangled in midair, feeling her lift me up upwards and let go. Air whooshed past my ears. Long live the queen. <gasps> Is that a fucking Lion King reference? <laughs> Cause like fucking Scar pushes thingy off the cliff and says long live the king. Oh god. I was falling. Crack. Dead end. Death 3. Okay. Load. Pretty quick, right? Let's go back to this. Let me do... Wait, now I... The game had proceeded smoothly. The Hatter did not use me much. Uh, I sometimes darting wildly back and forth between my knot arm and the board. Blood splattered ac across the ballroom. Chessboard, uh, across the ballroom chessboard as some pieces hit their opponents harder than others. The servants had to move them 
uh, off the floor. Click clack. The sound of chess. Today it was clang clash. The hatter frowned. Queen to F F6. At that sixth position stood the Duchess's black queen piece. The hulking female knight with a cartoonish black crown eyed me as the hatter spoke. I moved across the board, readying my sword to knock her down. My one-handed grip on the sword felt weak. The loss, even if temporarily, of an arm threw my bal threw off my of an arm threw off my balance. The blood loss left the lingering light-headedness. I attack only for my sword to be thrown out of my hand by the Black Queen's piece, Harry. The Hatter frowned again. To make the match a show, the pieces had pretended to act out of fight each time one was to be taken down. What game is this? Uh, who is the Red Queen? It's uh, the currently playing thing I f that I forgot to change last stream. Yep, that's the that's the game of the game. the The name of the game. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. All right, <laughs> that's the game. It's free too. So the Black Queen took out uh, took that mistake as my loss in the confrontation, saying that the move must have belonged to her. She lifted her sword and cut me right open with a great slash. Oh. The Hatter's frown deepened. This is unfortunate. The Black Queen stabbed me again in the stomach. With a scratch of the blade, uh, blade pierced in and excited out from the, and exited out from my back before being pulled out along with things that weren't meant to come out. Go. A gurgling noise escaped my throat. I felt chunks move up my windpipe as I choked into my mouth. This iron, fleshy sensation surely wasn't a good sign. I grabbed at my ab abdomen as the Black Queen stabbed me again. Oh god, my throat. <sighs> yeah, you're not only one getting stabbed here. Black spots filled my vision. I slumped to the ground, unable to get back up. Red, red, red pulled out from un from underneath me into the checkered board. Alice, Alice, you were just gutted like a fish. Is this how our game ends? Yep, that's exactly how our game ends. A four. Um load uh let me try being the king with two hands i chose the king pieces role for the uh i chose the king pieces role for the king for the king was the end of the game well i was given a fake white crown and sword i was not a soldier our white pieces shuffled in and uh took their positions on the board. Soon enough, the uh, chessboard was set. A human sized version of the strategy game unfolded. The Hatter started with the first move. The Hatter had a wide smile. Clan clash. One by one, our white pieces on the board fell almost like dominoes. Perhaps don't deploy the queen. No, no. A piece on the board cannot speak. We are the players, and you are but a game piece. Pieces can came dangerously close to me. The sound of metal filled my ears. <sighs> Hold on. Let me go get a drink. Lock. Ah, wait, how do I open this? Reminder never to get peach icy ever again. Alright. Mm -hmm. 
Warm blood splattered over my face as an overzealous knight beheaded our last bishop. The guts spilled all over my shoes when the Hatter took out the knight who had cornered me. I've never been much for strategy. The Hatter yawned and rubbed her eyes. All our pieces had died, taken off the board, but with a smear on the ground, aside from the pawn, whereas the Duchess had taken far fewer losses. I had a feeling that we were doomed. Alas, what can we do? No speaking. The game continued, and by mad luck, the Hatter made their way to the other side of the board. Promote it, promote it. Let the pawn turn into a queen. That's how it works, isn't it? I watched as the Hatter turned the game around with her remaining X pawns. The Black King was surrounded. The Hatter sneered. Checkmate, Duchess. Then we cut him down. The Duchess clapped her hands in congratulations, and from here on it's the same. Okay. Uh, now I load this. Yes. And with one arm, I think I have to pick the king. The Hatter opened the box for me. Inside lied my arm in a small jar of the same medicine from before. My arm still looked fresh. I unraveled my bandage to find an unchanged wound. Popping the arm back onto the stump, I felt a strange knitting sensation at the connection point. I applied some medicine to the arm. With a squishing sound, my arm was reattached. The only remnant of this of its uh, severance was a thin pink line that slowly faded into my skin. We exited the building and came to a garden. We had taken a wrong turn. Oh wait, yeah, from here on I can skip. Yep, and now I load this. Yep, cool. Uh, Cliff. Ask for it. That arm doesn't belong to you. Give it back, Cheshire Cat. Why should I? I ask politely because I would prefer to let you part with it on your own terms. If I must, if I must, I will take more drastic measures. The cat squirmed onto me, but I forced her down, sitting atop her body. I have no intention of staying in Wonderland. My current, ad current adventures through this uh, world are entirely to find a way back to my own world. As such, Cheshire Cat, if you would hand over the arm, then we should have no further interactions. I will endeavor not to meet, not to meet with you again, unless it has to do with my way home. I can't fight anymore. Attention left her muscles, signaling to me that she had given up. She let out a scornful bark like a laugh as she acquished a, 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 that fine i'll give you the arm so get off she made a weak motion as if to push me off no give the arm first fine bruised black and blue bloody from our brawl the Cheshire Cat twitched her stolen arm, looking at it in looking at it hesitantly as if unwilling to lose it. She took her head. She shook her head. A faint cracking noise from her neck made uh made her let out a whine of pain. She nudged her cape closer to her face and bit into it. Then, with a flickering left arm, bloody twisted and in an odd position under me she turned the arm off of her own body with a slow and bloody rip i heard the oddest sound of flesh uh being rent from flesh through the cape came muffled groans tears glittered in her eyes after what seemed like an eternity the cat chucked the removed arm to the side blood dripped 
out of the stump from which the limb was removed. The limb, too, made a crimson mess on the grass. Gah, is that enough for you, Alice? I nodded. Now get off! I stood up from the cat, feeling a wave of dizziness hit Feeling a wave of dizziness hit me along with a throbbing headache. She rolled over in pain and started pushing herself up, stumbling and falling a number of times onto the grass with an ugly red splat. Finally, limping to her feet, the Cheshire Cat vanished. Now there was no more Cheshire Cat. And from here it doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure it's just leads to the same thing. Let's You know what? Hold on, let me see real quick if there's anything that I wasn't this first one. I I didn't oh my fucking god. I forgot to, uh let's just return to this title screen. Okay. How about start the game? Skip all of this. Skip literally everything. Uh listen to the hatter, otherwise otherwise we die. Uh And find the White Queen. Wait, actually... Oh yeah, no, it's the same. Alright, let's do the violent route of... So, kill the bird. Grow. Um... Surely I could find one of them. Uh, save here. Hold on. White Queen. Thinking to the eternal tea time of the Hatter, I decided that seeking out the White Queen would be more productive. I dropped the limb off at the Hatter's place, thinking that bringing a piece of a dismembered person's body up to the White Queen again wouldn't be quite appropriate. I walked to the White Queen's, to the White Queen's garden. This was a pretty palace, uh, and she had a pretty person as before. She was watching the distance. She, she was watching the distance, looking at I did not know what. I wonder if my gaze towards her was like the gaze towards her object. Alice, you weren't the one she wanted. Hello. The White Queen smiled. Yes, but I was the one in front of her right now. Good evening, Alice. It's almost time for dinner. Would you like to stay for a meal? Is it that time already? Her question made me realize the time once more. I would love to. Before long, a beautiful array of foods found its way onto the table carried over by what seemed like magic, but was in fact little fairy lights. First came the appetizer. I put a forkful in my mouth and tasted nothing. Bland. I haven't felt particularly hungry since I came to this world. I felt a little thirst, little hunger, little urge to expel waste. All inconvenient facets of a mortal life. Perhaps this really was a dream. Her smile became somber. I know. This world must appear like a like a place of dreams. I picked at the food, my fork clinging against the plate as I moved items back and forth. She looked like a doll, perfectly uh, practiced table manners, in different expressions. Nothing uh, told me what she felt, only that she would complete this task of eating. The main course arrived soon enough. This was also bland. Silence fell upon the dinner table, certainly speak too much. During a meal was frowned upon by s Speaking too much during a meal was frowned upon by some, but this was much too polite. 
What sort of upbringing did she have? Let me drink again. My throat does not do well with talking a lot. <sighs> a queen was a queen, but I knew not which country she ruled nor what country she had. The white queen was a mystery. My fork and knife linked listlessly against the plate. Eventually, dinner came to a close with, a des with dessert. As the little cakes were delivered to the table by the same servants, I perked up at the sign of sweets. At the sight of sweets. I took a bite. The cake tasted too light. As I looked down at the cake in disappointment, I heard a, cho a choking cough. The White Queen looked troubled. W water The cake must have gotten switched. How so? She smiled shyly. A sweeter one for Alice and a lighter one for me was the plan. But with the cakes decorated the same, someone must have mixed them up. That was surprisingly thoughtful of her, although her plans backfired. I felt a tinge of guilt of wondering if she had tried to feed me something strange. I could still eat it. Oh, and I don't mean to tell you to eat something I've, take I've taken a bite of. She turned sheepish. Well, no, I'll have them replaced. She called the fairies over again. And they left with the cakes. Uh, hello, Luet. How you doing? Drop the follow. Good luck getting to 3k. Thank you. I appreciate it. Alright, anyway. Did you call the fairies over again? Um, I believe. Ah, uh, let's hope so. Mm, how are you doing today? Um, she called the fairies over again. They left with the cakes. Uh, when they returned, they delivered new desserts: a vanilla ice cream soft of thing, oh, a vanilla ice cream sort of thing, to the table. I picked up a spoon and watched as the utensil utensils sank into the white sweet. When I moved to take a scoop, I placed a spoonful in my mouth. I'm good. Is this a visual novel or a dating sim? It's a visual novel. It's not quite. It, it, it's like... Half, it's, it's kind of a dating sim, but also with a lot of murder. <laughs> with a lot of death. But no, it's a visual novel. Uh, my mouth. a chili sweet and creamy melted on my, uh, uh, a chili sweet and creamy melted on my tongue. I'd... Delicious. The white queen smiled. I'm glad. I'm unused to strong flavors, although I liked them as a child. I. Hold on. Why am I getting caught on? What the fuck? Hold on, I I just I just gotta ask, right? I get a I get phone calls like once a year, all right? Like I never get phone calls. Why? Since I started this stream like a week ago, almost two weeks ago, since I started this stream, I've been getting phone calls like every week. Why? Not every week, like every few days. So why the hell? Why the hell? Do I never get phone calls, except for now? Why? I just saw that I missed a phone call from who knows who. Like, I- I'm- I, I don't- <laughs> It's like they know when you're streaming. The worst part is I never even told someone I'm streaming, so now I just feel like I'm being stalked. <laughs> 
have this gut feeling that you're gonna reach 3k in about a week or a month <laughs> a week or a month oh i wish no it's probably gonna reach 3k in like another like i i, I think at least three months and that's being generous on my end <laughs> that is being generous to myself <laughs> I am unused to strong flavors, although I liked them as a child, I can no longer recall the feelings I had back then. Unless they can hear me outside, which... God, I hope not. Well, no, they probably can, because these walls are paper thin. Oh no. Oh god. I had a time not too long ago where I was not allowed to eat many things or do many things at all. I feel apologetic to the chef. It's just that I've become accustomed, so even though she's gone, she looked some she looked somewhere far away, but not but soon refocused onto me. Oh my god. But soon refocused onto me. Her ice cream began to melt on her on her spoon, and she unconsciously stared it like a cup of tea. She spoke with a sad smile. She spoke with her sad, sad smile. There's two sads for some reason. To live, one must eat and drink. That is what it means to be human. Human? A more genuine smile came to her face. I don't enjoy eating, but I rather... But I rather do like tea. Should I be considered halfway there? Although, it's also something I picked up from her. The queen turned shy. You must feel bored listening to me talk about this, Alice. No, not at all. I want to know more about you. The shyness was lifted from her expression. If I had to choose if I liked or disliked the white queen, I would have to say I like her. Deep within my heart, I held an, inexplic an inexplicable emotion towards her that I could not identify. That I had no reason to feel. After the desserts were done with, we talked a little more, mostly about useless little things. The White Queen smiled fondly. It's late now. Would you like to stay for the night? I'd appreciate it. I have no place to be or go anyhow. After a while more, we departed from our position in the garden. She brought me to a, a guest room, walking before me under the starry night sky. Good night, Alice. Will you head to bed as well? In a while, if I can. A little voice told me that she couldn't sleep very well. To live, one must also sleep, White Queen. Good night. Upon hitting the bed, I felt a haze of fatigue overcome my mind. My eyelids grew heavy and I f fell into a deep slumber. Surely I was dreaming within a dream. I dreamed of blood. The next day, and the day after, I continued my search for the Red Queen's parts. Once again, I was walking down the forest path. And now we can skip. Alright. Um. Uh, arm. Setting aside... Her puppet friends. What? Why was just there? Why was there just like a, a, a dialogue that just said arm? And now we can skip most of this. Uh. I already wait. I, I already did these, so I can skip these. Um, bring the. I assume had her. For reasons that I'm honestly not quite sure. Offer an arm. Uh, king. White queen. Wait, actually, I'm pretty sure I brought the White Queen to the ball. It's fine. Uh, oh, yes, I will. Her words remind me 
The hold on, hold on. wait, what did the thing say? Will you come visit again? Yes, I will. Oh, that's different. Her words remind me that once I left Wonderland, no longer could I come find her at this garden. We would be separated by worlds and never meet again. Surely. Huh. Uh, Cliff. Tear it off. Wait, I thought the... Um... Uh... Where is the tongue? Oh! This is different. Um, you who are the same entity as the Red Queen. I can't let you go. Don't you understand? She glared at me. I see. For the sake of my revenge, you have to die, Alice. Oh. I land in the Wonderland not quite right. One where the hourglass of time had reversed. Looking upward, I found the sky distorted and staring with darkness that amplified my phantom headache that throbbed despite losing its cause. I placed a hand to my head, feeling a smooth skin where the hammer had struck. I was in the forest. Like the first time, what should have been the first time, the first being I met was the White Rabbit, like Wonderland. Today she seemed different, crueler. Un... Unrestrained black danced in the back of her eyes. There was a wide smile on her face. She looked awestruck, whatever the fuck that means. Your Majesty. The rabbit greeted me as if I were the red as if I were the red queen. No, perhaps I was Alice. Perhaps you were. Not bothering to acknowledge her, I left her I let her continue speaking. Saying what she had to say to the red queen in that obs ob obse obsequious tone of voice. I don't know like I think I I've stopped and looked at like like 90% of these words not knowing like, what they mean. Did you wish to visit Her Majesty the White Queen today? Yes. I gestured for her to lead the way. Following only a pace after the... Uh, following only a pace after the rabbit, I walked down an unfamiliar... familiar path. She had that same... strange, awestruck expression. Wonderland was quiet. Much quieter than... I was accustomed to. Even the grass wilting away from my presence, not to speak of the animals. The rabbit grinned devilishly. A report on Her Majesty the White Queen's affairs. As punishment for her previous, uh, trans tra uh, for her previous transgressions, we have been regulating her sleep to one hour intervals as ordered. She seemed pleased with herself. Then, the rabbit appeared frustrated. She has been much quieter as of late. I hope that she will learn the errors of her ways for disrespecting your majesty. Additionally, as per your orders, we have put her on a dietary restriction to regulate her weight. She sneered. We found that some chefs had been sneaking her extra food. The chefs responsible have been sent to do hard labor. Is that so? Darvid talked about the usual things. Walking... Walking, we arrived at a tall tree and a large birdcage, a location that I recognized from when I had obtained the Red Queen's right leg, once upon a time. The rabbit appeared hesitant. Your, majest your majesty's mood has been strange today, could it be? Are you questioning me, rabbit? She glanced away, frightened. My sincerest apologies, your majesty. Leave. Bowing Profusely, 
the rabbit backed away and scampered off. I approached the birdcage, finding a pretty white bird locked within. No, I found the white queen locked within the, that birdcage much too cold. Alice, how would you catch her if you let her go free? She looked skinny, desperate, as if she had lost all hope, just as a flower would wither once picked. A bird too would if locked away from its sky. The White Queen was a human, not a bird. She was a person, not an animal. I knew, I knew, I knew that Alice also knew that. I grasped the metal bar of the cage. White Queen. I have nothing to say to you, Red Queen. Her eyes betrayed an expression. Her eyes betrayed an expression that could not be called hate. A complicated expression. A strange expression, one all too familiar. You won't even bother to treat me softly today after everything you had done to me. Rather than the Red Queen, I am Alice. I doubted myself, remembering the Hatter's expression for a moment. You said you could see the future, White Queen. Uh -huh. I suppose. That must have been a joke, as I expected if you... If you've yet to know who I am. We met in another Wonderland. I may have fallen in love. And maybe my affections were one-sided. In a terribly beautiful garden, I was lost. Chasing after a rabbit in confusion after falling down a rabbit hole in, into another world. I told the White Queen about my adventures in Wonderland. I told her about uh, a strange hatter with mismatched eyes, a cat whose dark tail flickered like flames, and the whimsy of living limbs. I told her about the brilliant night sky and every moment we spent together. Uh, too few, yet still overwhelmingly precious. Then, I came here and met the white rabbit who led me to you. How fantastical that would be, hmm? I felt the same way speaking about the quest that I, that dull Alice, had found myself em embarking on upon falling through an endless void. Only a miracle could have brought me here to meet her and all the others in Wonderland. But tell me, who do you share her f who shall- but tell me, you who share her face, but not her name, why should I believe you? Why should I think that you're not the- you're not but the Red Queen, mad again with some scheme? You are. She is the one who knows me best in this world. We were born together, fated to die together, as if death could reach us at all. Bound by a marriage from our con- uh, bound by a marriage from our conception, did you not say? She said, the Red Queen said. So it should be that you finally lost it. Her pale eyes looked into my body, onto my body. The Red Queen's body as if viewing someone unfamiliar. Or am I the one who has gone mad? You claim to be from the future? Then should I be from the past? The Red Queen is dead in my time. Do you understand what those words mean? Only a pinch of blasphemy. Only a pinch? But these memories, these happenings that must have happened in the future, they're quite important to me. Meeting you was important to me. Important. You also like to say sweet words in the past. Should I say that she also liked to say sweet words in the past? What? I understand now. The Red Queen will no longer love me. So she gives me a replacement till she tires of playing this act. Tell me, what type of tea do you prefer? I blinked in surprise at the sudden change of conversation topics. Black tea. Do you still like white tea now? The White Queen looked at me, at Alice, for only a second. No. A strange tone 
A voice escaped through her lips. As if she came to a realization, she sounded soft and tired. Tell me again about the future. We'll meet again. Oh wait, we'll meet again. I'll free you from this cage. You'll be free. Beautifully and... My voice trickled off into silence. I had no happy ending to tell her of us. None of Alice and the White Queen. What mattered? What mattered was to the White Queen. Wait, what mattered to the White Queen was the Red Queen. She'll be long gone. Why? No, don't answer. She... I believe you. Something beyond logic tells me that I should believe you. Can you make the meal of the future happy? I wonder. After all, my white queen had always been looking far away. No, you wanted to leave after all. You gave me a wonderful story, but tell me a better one next time, please. Remembering the key I obtained in the previous Wonderland, I checked my pockets and pulled out that very key. Take this. Holding it, holding it in a closed fist, I passed the key to the White Queen through the cage bars. She took the key with trembling hands, gripping it tightly as if the metal would disappear. Knowing that having the key was a risk, she hid the key away from in her dress. Perhaps she would use it to escape from the Red Queen. What? Your Majesty, urgent news. There has been an incident in court with the cards. The rabbit's sudden reappearance forced our conversation to a halt. She had a stressed expression. The Red Queen will kill them all. Don't go. The White Queen gestured to me, telling me to lean in closer to her. She moved up to the bars of the cage. As close to me as she could come. Show me that I can believe in you. And I'll find you. Until later, Alice. Then, she gave me a peck on the cheek. And, falling, 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 I was falling once more. I fell down. Down and down through a sparkling, shining darkness. Too bright to be dark, too dark to be bright. I recognize this darkness now. I wanted to be chasing after someone, after something. Oh. Well, this is uh, not what I expected to see. Falling. I fell until I landed and saw the night sky above me. Oh. Well, this I expected even less. Before me laid out... Before me... Laid out was a scene between the Red Queen and the White Queen. I was like a spirit, invisible to her, to all who were present. The Red Queen was on the ground, for the White Queen. A sword in the White Queen's hand. The blade glittered in the moonlight, betraying its sharpened edge. Behind the White Queen stood a group of uh, denizens of Wonderland. They were in a clearing... In the middle of a dark forest. The Red Queen wore regal red clothing with black and gold accents. Her long blonde hair tied with a red ribbon. That high class look did not match her pathetic position on the grass. There was nothing in the White Queen's expression as she glared down at the Red Queen. Off of their heads for the crime of treason. The Red Queen's shoulders shook in once in surprise that nothing happened. Not a single head went flying with mysterious force. Huh? They're my citizens now, Red Queen. You may not touch them. Your right only extends to those grab subjugated, not mine. You were once sole ruler of this wonderland, but now you have lost. 
I united this dirty, broken world and tried to make everything right. Protect the people, uphold the law, bring order to Wonderland and find its peace. In which way was I wrong? Red must spill for peace, but it seems some people prefer freedom over all else. We were born just as space and time were, created at the genesis of this world. We were the only two uh, existences of this distorted wonderland. Therefore, given such power, we were to be rulers of this wonderland with divine right. You were the one who gave it away first because you were weak. So I took all of, all of the responsibility onto myself because I loved you. Were you not happy within my cage? Protected from the outside world? We are the only two of our kind in this world. We did not care for this place. Then I... Then I let you live a beautiful life within a cage. Let you stay beautiful white. I loved you dearly, White Queen. But you were the same as everyone else, traitor. I'm almost sad. No, heartbroken. <laughs> but what choice do I have now? White Queen, you'll cut me down now, won't you? Or will you continue to be a coward? Show me your conviction to betray me. There can only be one victor. If we are to be pitied against each other. I couldn't see the Red Queen's expression. I loved you. I betrayed you? You were the one who betrayed me first. White Queen raised, a, raised her sword and cut. A limb. A sharp pain shut up my arm, even though I was not the one who was cut. There was a rough tear and plenty of blood at the stump where the limb once was. The blood soaking into the Red Queen's dress. Blood, too, soaked the grass beneath her, dyeing the green red like her, or like me. Well, no, actually I'm the opposite, but still. I'm red dyed green, if anything. Who betrayed who first? You who are in charge of time? A second limb. I squirmed as I tried to grab a wound that did not exist with, uh, with an arm that my brain scream was no longer attached. It hurt, but no red came out of me. Should know better than me. A third limb. A final limb. A blood, uh, blood splattered over the White Queen's dress, staining her red, red, red as the Red Queen's bloody shook. Except that doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's, the, the Queen was, the White Queen was very, like it, it seems like she's still, the, her dress still is, whatever. They were just lazy. In agony, I gasped. My vision shook. Tilting as I lost equilibrium and filling and filling with tears. I collapsed to the ground and uh, writhed even writhed even though my limbs were still intact. I didn't even know what to clutch at. What to clutch with. <laughs> You're also a sadist, aren't you? I'm just angry. Oh there we go. Now it's appropriate. Finally, off of her head. Looks more like her entire torso was cut off. Oh no, 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 never mind. I was looking at it wrong. Cause like that's where her head was, and that—that's her torso still. Once, twice, thrice, the White Queen hacked at the Red Queen's neck, as if taking out her frustration on the neck already severed. Uh, my consciousness snapped. My vision, my vision blacked out. The sound of cheering brought me back to this wonderland's reality. The once quiet crowd began to celebrate 
at the dismembered Red Queen. We're free. The tyrant is dead. Your Majesty, the White Queen. Will you be the new ruler of Wonderland? No. Her voice was quiet, fragile. I would appreciate it if you would all keep news of this murder quiet. She did not turn around, not wanting to show the difficult expression that found its way onto her face. Ignoring the joyous clamoring of her people, the White Queen looked down at the Red Queen's corpse. So, the White Queen was the one who dismembered the Red Queen. I choked out a pained laugh at the revelation, grabbing my neck to a certain that I had my head. I was dying. I was dying. I was dying. Yet I wasn't dying. I was still intact. The one who had been dismembered was the Red Queen. However, we were nearly one and the same. Alice? The White Queen's whisper broke me out of her stupor, her gaze landing directly on me to the point that our eyes met, and she would not look away. She walked forward two steps, both towards the Red Queen's corpse and towards me. Alice. Reaching out a hand, she tugged at my ephemeral form. Then I was falling. Half of these words, I'm just guessing how they're pronounced. Like, I, I just don't know, so I just guess. Falling, falling, falling. I was falling again. The raging phantom pain... That sent me nearly uh, catatonic. Whatever that means, faded with a chilly sensation, reminiscent of the White Queen. In this deep, deep rabbit hole where time was but an illusion, I fell and healed. I was Alice. I was the Red Queen. Uh, we were one and the same, but divergent. The voice within my heart quieted, though she no longer spoke. I still held that one certainty I was Alice. Alice was me. Even now, that wasn't wrong. But I was also the lonesome Red Queen. A what could have been for her. She who had been killed at the end. What madness. We were both our own madness. But I wanted not to be my own tragedy. I fell forward into my relative present and hit the ground softly. Laying back flat on the ground, I grasped at the grass below me and found that the blades were soft, gentle even. Above me, the sky was devoid of stars. No, it was still daytime, so I should have instead said that the sky was blue, terribly blue. I forced myself up to my feet. Surveying a wonderland that I learned to know. This was no longer the Red Queen's wonderland, yet it was not the White Queen's either. Thinking about the White Queen, I wanted to talk with her. No, Alice. You've got a matter to finish first. My mind drifted to a pair of mismatched eyes. Right. I saw out the Hatter. Coming to the Hatter's place had always been... At tea time, regardless of morning, noon, or night. Looking left, right, up, down, I could not find the hat or anywhere in sight. The table of tea things stood untouched. Uh, on the ground was a bloodied hammer. When I went around to my armchair, it still held the usual odd smell. The Red Queen's corpse was nowhere to be seen. But that mattered not. The only thing truly missing was the hatter. I understood. In my heart, I understood that there was no more Hatter in Wonderland, for the ha Hatter had completed her revenge, her one and only final task. Checking the table, I saw that familiar pair of puppets, the March Hare and the Dormouse. I picked them up just for a moment, looking at their carefully stitched parts that desperately tried to hide that they were that they were cloth then i put them down gently i'm sorry hatter 
I left the Hatter's place, knowing that I would no longer find find her here in Wonderland. Lonely. I felt lonely. Uh, where did I put? Oh, there it is. I wandered around and in inadvertent inadvertently walked my way to the White Queen's garden. I saw the White Queen, who appeared the same as usual. She had that somber smile on her face. In a chair across from her sat the Red Queen's corpse. The Red Queen did not fit this pure garden. But she and the White Queen must have had a conversation here. Alice, how long has it been since we last met? Much too long. She looked a bit sheepish for a moment. I'm sure you must have questions. Allow me to explain why I instructed you to seek out the Red Queen when the Red Queen was already dead. We, the Queens of Wonderland, were created with a power within us. <clears throat> I held power over Wonderland's time. She held power over the Wonderland's essence, its base and boundaries. Uh, even a remnant of that power can send you back, can send you back home. With her corpse gathered, that power can be used. Wait, why do I? I know. Oh no, no, I think it's the same. Same theme. I felt like the power take root. I felt like the power take takes root in my soul. Hehe, <laughs> so you do. It's time for you to depart from this imperfect wonderland, Alice. Wait. The White Queen's brows raised. I like you. I love you. I want to spend more time with you, White Queen. You're always looking far away towards the Red Queen. So I wish you would look at me. The White Queen appeared troubled. Hmm. She carved herself into my heart. In irreparably. A long, long time ago she was. Sadness filled her features. Even though she caged me away. Even though I was the one who killed her. How odd. I still cannot put into words what I feel towards her. The Red Queen began to disappear. Dissolving into tiny lights, her corpse faded away as if her role in this world was no longer needed. The White Queen watched with somber with somber eyes. Somber eyes. I. What did that say? With with somber eyes. Okay. I saw the Red Queen mouth a few words, but I knew what they were. I knew that they were not for me. I'm sorry, that was inappropriate for me to say. Perhaps I had no longer been rejected. The White Queen smiled sadly. No. At first I saw you and thought of the Red Queen. I thought that you could be her. Probably don't remember. The White Queen glanced down shyly. But that was why I dragged you through time. Time and time again. Pulling you uh, from a time... Where by a miracle you fell down the rabbit hole into another wonderland. That was my obsession. Wait, so is that why we've been through a time loop? She frowned. With her, and smiled weakly. But eventually, I learned that you were different. You were Alice. Perhaps parts of your existence are similar. I could call you her of another world, or her you from another world world but you are alone here alice and i feel in love with you kind soft alice who can be a little strange alice who chases after her galls alice who somehow fell in love with someone like me yes i think it's a miracle that we met here in this wonderland maybe i can begin to heal the white queen gave me a joyous smile love you alice not in the way that i 
Not in the way that I don't know what to feel about the Red Queen, but from the depths of my heart I love you. Oh, nice. The White Queen pressed a kiss on her li lips. My heart raced. Hadn't thought that she would reciprocate my feelings. Tears welled up in my eyes, dripping down my cheeks in disbelief. Kiss me again. We kissed again clumsily. The White Queen regained... Uh, wait, the White Queen grinned awkwardly as we did so. White Queen, I love you. I wish that this world were more perfect so that we could be together. Despite what goes on in our hearts, it's still time for us to depart. You have to leave, Alice. Go back home to your own world. Come with me. Here again came that summer smile. That was so familiar to her. I can't, Alice. But this world will, f will fall apart now that the Red Queen is truly dead. And I have drained my powers as well in my selfishness. This imperfect wonderland was a miracle. I'm glad I was able to meet you. I wanted to stay here by her side. White Queen. Is this where you get the option? Surely. She put her hand up over my shoulder. Tears spilled from her eyes, falling down her cheeks, her lips in a smile all the while. Goodbye. And pushed. Okay, no, we don't get an option. So wait, how do we get the other ending? Because I only got two. Then I was falling. I tried to go back up, but the Red Queen's power wouldn't respond. As the gate to return to my own world opened, the power evaporated. Falling, 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 I was falling. The White Queen. I wanted to go back to the White Queen. Alice, who had never quite wanted anything so much, wanted to take her hand again, to see her again, to steal a happy ending together with her. Yet, no matter what I did, I continued to fall, 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 through this darkness too bright. Falling, I left Wonderland and could no longer return. If this were the case, I would have rather forgotten I would have rather forgotten something very important but I knew that I would remember everything that happened in Wonderland I fell until I could no longer I could fall no more hitting the ground I opened my eyes to reality see my family's house in the distance the sky was blue still terribly blue I started crying my shoulders shook hearing as my sisters rushed over to ask what I, what was wrong. I wished and wished to see her again. Surely. We would meet again in a reality more wonderful than a dream. One day, while on the walk with the cats, I stumbled into a girl. A girl with white hair. Alice? Wow, they just left it ambiguous. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Now let me see real quick, right? Um... So is this the White Queen ending? Uh, I think so, right? Yep. White Queen ending. Uh, so I only have one one ending left, right? Ninety-eight percent of the script. So now I just need to see the last ending, right? And that will be basically the whole game. I mix the shred uh, okay. Okay, so listen to the adder go uh, uh okay, so the order you do things actually matters. And so go up, up, down, down, left, right, adder, kill the bird. So I basically so I basically almost did... Oh, okay, okay. Okay. So, start anew, 
fact, you know what? Very quick. I forgot. Um. Uh. Okay. All right. Uh, really quick. Gonna take a break, like a very short one, because I want to finish this game, setting up the BRB. Uh, very quickly, I'll be back. And yeah, I'm back. And let me remove the BRB before I forget. All right. Okay. So. Okay, so, listen to the Hatter. Go up, up, down, down, left, right. Uh, I literally don't have a choice. Uh, kill the bird. Grow. Actually, I don't have a choice because otherwise I die. Uh, search for Cheshire. Uh, Cliff. Tear it off. Matter. White Queen. Off of the Red Queen's arm. Um, I'm curious if I, at the very least, this probably still results in a, in just a dead end and kills me. Yes. Okay. All right. Load. Where is the tongue? Yep, I sat through all of this. I love that artwork. That's like my that's my favorite like illustration in this whole visual novel, I think. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Um I have to leave. This place is a mine, but thank for the tea again, Hatter. And you too, March uh March and Dormouse. I'm really sorry. The Hatter smiled. It was nice meeting you, Alice. I already knew from the future, but I was so happy to see you, Hatter. Mm. Wait, hold on. Alright. Uh... Hold on. I already knew you from the future, but it was... But I was happy to see you, Hatter. It's a shame that my Hatter didn't feel the same way. Honest. What did you feel for Hatter? Something precious. Okay, I, I can skip all this. I am the Red Queen. I am the Red Queen. Her frown became resigned. The person who hurt you so much. It's me. In the end, it's me. Whether I've taken a different role here than before or not. I am the Red Queen. Just as I am Alice. We can only be one and the same. I held my hands behind my back, thinking about all the things I had killed, all the things I had hurt. A part of me rel relished in the violence. I'm sorry. I... I should have gone when you killed me. I should have atoned and never bothered you again. 
but I wanted to see you one last time. More than I expected. I had fun for you. The Hatter glanced elsewhere. Brows furrowed. The Hatter walked towards me. She grabbed my cloak, pulling me downward closer to her. Her grip tightened uh, and then loosened as if she didn't know how firmly to hold on to me. Still, she cried uh, as she sneered. That expression tells me that you'll really leave me alone after coming back and telling me such things. I really hate you, Alice. I just really like... She, she has like... Eye bags like... I know that... Her eye bags were pointed out, but like we, we never really saw them. I don't think. I know. Could I steal one last kiss? My lips, my lips brushed past hers. She pulled me forward by the cloak and initiated another kiss, biting down on my lip till she drew blood. A taste that should have been bitter iron touched. That should have been bitter iron touched my tongue with sweetness. I love you. She pushed me down to the ground. I really hate you. You know, right? I hate you, Alice. So get mad. Keep bothering me. Keep doing what you always do and stay with me for tea. Her tears drip down onto my cheeks. I know, but I love you. Alice. I love you, Hatter, so I can't say. It was because Wonderland was a terrible bloody mess that we met. Perhaps in an ideal world, we never would have crossed paths. Didn't know which way we would have gone. Perhaps each of us would be left with a gap in our hearts. Perhaps each of us would find something else to fill to fill us up. But it was in this imperfect world that we met. This imperfect place was no fairy tale. Goodbye, Hatter. It was time for Alice to leave. A light surrounded me and I felt my body begin to crumble away, breaking apart to disappear from Wonderland. Perhaps I was already dead. If so, I had to thank whichever deity out there gave me the chance to say my goodbyes to the Hatter. With my remaining power, I let the current Wonderland crumble. The Red Queen's existence was not needed here. Let there be a wonderland much more wonderful than this. Much more peaceful and happy. One where she could still smile. Or maybe I did know some German after all. Leb... Whoa, I, I... I have no idea what that says. Um, or how to pronounce it. In a land more wonderful than this, we would not meet again. There we go. And that should be the last ending. So, we're basically done with this game. Can I skip? Oh, I can. I've seen 99% of the script. What's the last 1%? Did I miss, like, a single... 